Hello, everyone, and welcome to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series. We're here at the Monaco Festival. Yours truly, Ali Najat, alongside Maria Ho to kick things off today. Obviously, a tight turn for you as you wound down day one of this $200,000 Invitational. Day two coverage, what we have in store here today from Sporting Monte Carlo. Now, yesterday, we saw 58 hopefuls who registered for the event, $200,000 apiece in this single reentry, but not all 58 made their way into day two, whether by virtue of declining the rebuy or exhausting that rebuy, which makes it a very expensive proposition. So then, 14 players did re-enter during day one, and it was Ferdinand Putra who was the 14th of the re-entries coming into day two here today. We have our total number of entries as registration is done, Maria, a staggering $14.6 million prize pool. Tell us how it breaks down. Yeah, well, 13 spots will pay, and the min cash is 300000 and first place is $3.87 million, and top five will all make over a million. Yeah, seven-figure scores in multiplicity up there at the top. Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, as we focus in on how day one shook out, the chip leader came from the invitee side, but several pros also worked their way into big stacks unexpectedly. Yeah, towards the end of the night, actually, I was seeing a lot of big hands play out at a pros table. What, you know, Henry and I dubbed the table of death. It mm. had Kuhn on it. It had Brian Kim, Stephen Chidwick, Nick Petrangelo. And sometimes you just get into unavoidable situations. But again, those pros were kind of trying to stay out of each other's way. But sometimes you just can't help it. Not 100% of those pros, though, were on board with that plan. Some perhaps actually executing a more aggressive style in the interest of exploiting what they might have perceived to be some conservative lines taken by fellow pros in the field. Now, Kuhn, Mosbach, Danny Tang, Chris Brewer, and Juan Pardo all in the top 10, the aforementioned pros who did a little bit better than we might have expected. And we did have one pairing, both of whom made it into the top 10. Who was that? Yeah, looks like Shalukin and Mosbach both made it into the top 10. And Mosbach, I believe it's his first time playing in the Invitational. So a really good start for him. Yeah, no doubt about it. Former professional footballer over in Austria. Now, only one pro was eliminated in day one. That, of course, was Brian Kim. But seven invitees met their demise on day one not coming back for day two. So we will start things with 50 players. Now let's look at day two because there are some specifics associated with how play will transpire throughout the course of today. Right, for the first two levels of the day, the, the all the pairs will be split up, of course, but it's also going to be a 50-50 ratio of pros to VIPs mm -hmm. at each table. And then after we're done with the first two levels, it will be a complete redraw of the field, but again, pairs will have to remain separate. Yeah, Grafton, a former Invitational winner, he is in 24th. Ramin Hajiev, also a former Invitational winner, he is in 35th. Previous winners of this format who may understand a thing or two about how best to navigate each phase of this particular uh, event. So, table five, we've got the Elton Sang, Jason Kuhn, Andrew Pantling triumvirate, first, second, and third in chips. And then what do we have on table three? Yeah, it looks like we have Nikki P, Danny Tang, Ramin. They are all together. And so, again, all of these a players with big stacks probably going to play some big pots. Yeah, things will get interesting, obviously, as we blend. One thing that's worthy of note, though, is while we do our best to assure that 50-50 split, Maria, given the number of invitees that actually busted on day one versus pros, we have some imbalance we have to navigate. Yeah, and I think that's also a part of the game that people sometimes, maybe it's underrated or people don't talk about it as much, but your table draw is really important. And the type of table draw that you get is also going to have a direct impact on how well you could potentially do in the tournament. So, of course, you know, now that the, there's more pros in the field, you're kind of hoping as a VIP that maybe you're not at the table that does have a couple more pros than the others. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, we do encourage all of you, if you haven't done so already, to head online and download the Triton Poker Plus app. It's exactly what Maria, myself, Randy, and Henry are all using to navigate our way through the commentary booth, and it is a wealth of information, hand-by-hand -hand stats tracking, and it's also where you guys will be able to take a look at the two feature tables that we're going to have coming your way. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to show it to you on the screen here at the moment, but as you look out at the blue table, Maria, you have the likes of Elton 
and Jason Kuhn and Pantling with those larger stacks. And then a very short stack of Tim Busso, the first timer, just 145K coming in, 18 bigs. Do you anticipate that those sub 20 big blinds in by T types of stacks are going to look to kind of figure out if they're going to find some depth or, you know, be out the door? Yeah, with about 20 big blinds, you know, you certainly have fold equity, so it's great to pick your spots well where you can per perhaps shove over and open. And of course, with the bigger stacks in play, it could be opening quite wide. So, you know, sometimes you can look at it as an advantage, you know, good chance to chip up. Uh, Mikita Batsiakuski, four-time Triton title winner, also at that table, along with Phil Ivey, a fan favorite. Clearly, that table chosen for a reason in terms of bringing it to you as a feature. Ben Heath rounding things out there. Turning our attention then to the semi-feature table, let's call it. We have Danny Tang, mayor of that town with over 100 bigs, 824,000. And then Ike Haxton. Sub 200K, 23 big blinds for him. But Haxton, such an accomplished tournament player, no reason to count him out. Haxton has had an incredible 18, 20 months uh, in terms of the results that he's put up and just continuing to add to that ever impressive resume. So regardless of whatever stack he has, I'm sure he'll make the most of it. If we're going to talk about impressive performances, though, when we reflect upon day one, we must mention the first timer ever to a Triton, who was brought down here by Seth Gottlieb, invited him all the way from Southern California, Orange County, Laguna Niguel to be exact. Murray Williams, who has a mindset which really is just unflapped by whatever happens out there, sat on the chip lead with over 700,000 at one point in time. Not sure how much of an opportunity you had to observe him while you two were in the booth, but clearly you kept track. He comes into today third at Danny Tang's table with 568,000. Very impressive. Very much so, and listen, he has that element of surprise, right? None of these players are too familiar with him or how he plays, and so perhaps he's finding ways to take advantage of the fact that he is a relative unknown to these parts, and of course, you know, we'll have to see how he's able to navigate day two, which of course things are going to be a little bit different now that he is going to be mixed in. When you talk about the mixing in, when you talk about things being a little bit different, just what specific sorts of things should we be looking out for as the pros are no longer segregated in their entirety and we're in this midway point of, of the mixing portion of the program? Well, I think yesterday, of course, if you were at a VIP table, players are going to be playing a lot more pots pre-flop. Their hand selection might be a little bit looser, mm -hmm. you know. But now if you're seated at a table with some pros and you have a really strong pro to your direct left, you're going to need to tighten up your opening range. You're going to be a little bit more selective about the hands you want to get involved with because you don't want to be put in tougher spots post-flop because that's where a pro's edge is going to be most realized. Well, take it for me from the other standpoint then. If you're a pro now obviously you're relieved not to be at something for example like the table of death which we saw yesterday uh, you know some spots let's call them that aren't going to be quite as difficult to navigate but important not to suddenly find yourself getting overly aggressive against one of these invitees under the presumption that you're going to be able to run them over and suddenly take a big blow to your stack and maybe not even make it to day three I feel like for the pros, it's not really about trying to run them over. It's really about being able to realize when is the right opportunity to play a big pot. Or, you know, some of these VIPs are going to up the variance, I think. And so the pros need to be ready, but also need to realize, as you said, not to push the action, but also they might have to get involved in a spot and play a, a big pot when maybe they didn't have to do that yesterday. Now, I know you've coached poker throughout the course of your career on more than one occasion. And a lot of times when you have somebody who's very new to the game and you're looking to give them just some rudimentary basics, fundamentals, right? The fewer decisions that they have to make, the better off they are. So would that not lend, if I brought an invitee, anyone out of the field and parked them in front of you here today, to you maybe suggesting forcing the action preflop is the way to go? I think there's certainly some benefit, of course, you know, to doing that if you are a VIP. Um, but again, I just harp on the fact that post-flop play is where that skill edge is going to come in the most for the pros. So you don't want to be put in spots where you're not really sure where you're at. So if that means upping the variance, great. But if that means also just being more selective about the hands you decide to start playing, that's also going to be beneficial. All right. So then, with all of that said, we are just about set to send you down into the arena where day two coverage of the $200,000 Invitational here at Sporting Monte Carlo, the Curtain Raiser. First event on a 12-event docket from here in Monaco will be concluding tomorrow. But, of course, plenty of runway between now and that conclusion. And 
There is your first official look at the two featured tables, which we walked through earlier, brought to you by Poker Stake. We'll begin with the blinds at four and 8,000 and an 8K ante. Elton Sang, the mayor of the blue town, Danny Tang in turn, mayor over on the red table. Talked about the short stacks as well. Hajiev, former Invitational winner, 29 bigs, so obviously looking to have a better day here today. If you had to pick one of these two tables to be parked at, which would you choose, Maria, and why? Oh, gosh, that's a really good question. They both, you know, feel like there's its pros and cons, but uh, I'm going to probably have to go with uh, the red table. Red I, table? Yeah. It's a blue pill, red pill sort of yeah. <laughs> situation, isn't it? So you're taking the red pill. All right. Five do suited for Elton. Did end up finding the muck is Pantling, who was tremendously aggressive during our observations of his play yesterday. Seven, eight off suit. Picking up where he left off. Makes it 20,000 to go. Busso defends and flops the gut shot straight draw along with second pair versus just bottom pair for Andrew. Discipline check there from the pre-flop aggressor, given the texture and the lack of position. Yeah, very quick check with basically a bluff catcher. And Busso also feeling like there's no need to bloat the pot with second pair. And that gut shot straight draw from the flop checks back. Interesting bet here from Pantling, you know, three over cards to his pair now. And so you wonder if this is really designed more as a bluff than protection. And it works. Pantling picking up right where he left off yesterday for sure. Busso showing some conservative approaches there. In you and I both played against tremendously aggressive opponents, mostly in the cash game streets in terms of shared experiences throughout the years. And a fold like that, a lot of times I feel like, is tethered not simply to the board run out, but that perception that this is a guy who can bomb away at me with a higher frequency that someone, than someone else. And now that I'm staring at two over cards, unimproved on the river, will I be able to get to showdown? So why bother making this call on the turn if I won't? Right, and I don't mind that adjustment against aggressive players, but at some point, of course, you're going to have to look them up. You're going to have to take a stand. And, you know, in a blind versus blind situation where ranges are quite wide, that might have been a good opportunity for him to show some resilience. But we shall see as the day progresses. Ivy with a couple of nines here makes it 16 to go. A min raise open and Ben Heath from the hijack deciding on... How to navigate, given the under-the-gun position from Phil. Undeterred, he three bets to 40,000. And is this not a bit of risky business as we see Pantling now on the button with Ace-10 suited to, to come after an under-the-gun open with a hand like King-Queen, which is so intrusive? I feel like... Heath is able to do this because he does, you know, block some of the big hands and the big pairs. But, you know, he's not going to love it if Ivy responds with continued aggression. Especially now that Pantling's getting involved with the flat on the button. Ivy able to close the action. Will flat in turn. One hundred and forty thousand in the middle and an ace high flop, putting Pantling in front. Two over cards staring the nines in the face. Hence the check from Ivy. Heath now with the Broadway gutty. And you wonder what Heath is going to make of the fact that Pantling cold called the three bet, and is in position in this hand. You know certainly some discomfort I think for Heath because not only is Pantling unpredictable, but you know him coming along shows that 
he probably will sometimes hit this board, have some of these suited aces. <laughs> Pantling taking the high variance approach between the flat pre and then the raise of the three better, who could very well have a big ace in tow. Hauling that one in, looking fearless. Now then, outer table action here, where it appears that Webster Lim has his chips fully forward with an ace-10 up against an ace-queen. And early showers for Chinway Lim, Maria. Lim actually made quite an impressive check shove on a bluff yesterday and ended up getting called and it really crippled his stack but you have to give it give it some credit for going for it and the man sending him packing none other than triton co-founder the boss paul pua good friends but obviously in poker goes down the way it must go down now a look at the most decorated triton award winner ever jason kuhn nine time title winner Elton Sang has gone full South Park, by the way. I mean, it's actually quite nice out today. <laughs> <laughs> He's just looking like the winter weather has taken root. Folded around to Pantling, who opens the cutoff. Ace Jack raising to 20,000, and Buso going to shove with two fives. And I don't really mind the shove against Pantling's. Late position open. Pantling has been opening so wide between what we saw yesterday and, you know, even today, just very active. Right at the start, Busso had fold equity, but just happened to run up against the part of Pantling's range that's going to call, but still a flip, so not in terrible shape here. Whoa. <laughs> well, two pair of the hard way. <laughs> Insta leaves Pantling drawing dead. What do you got there? Well-timed moment for the Frenchman, Triton first-timer, just 23 years of age. 149. That double. Going to give Busso a good bit of breathing room. Almost back to his 300K starting stack. Quite a bite out of Pantling, by the way, Maria, who obviously when he's deep stacked can afford to maybe place some pots that are higher variance in nature. Still sitting very pretty, one of two. Over seven figure stacks coming into that exchange. Now only Elton Sang has those honors. 1.2 million plus in front of him, yet to see him involved. Pantling, undaunted, ace deuce off suit. You got to give it up to Pantling, just right back in there. And now, normally, king deuce off suit wouldn't be a defend against an early position open, but you know he thought about it just for a second, perhaps you know playing your opponent. A little bit, just understanding that Pantling, of course, is opening wider than most. Pantling strikes me as the kind of guy that would be really <laughs> troublesome to play against in a cash game, Maria. <sighs> He's got that vibe, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in a cash game situation, I would not want Pantling to my left a thousand bigs deep. <laughs> my God, sounds like nightmare fuel.
Still early stages here of day two in this $200,000 Triton Invitational. Happy to have you with us, whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, Triton Poker Plus app. Do us a favor and click like, click subscribe. Help us to continue to deliver you the finest in streaming poker entertainment free of charge. Ben Heath, not going to make things free with pocket aces. Small blind, likely disappointed not to see any action from the field in front of him. But does go to work. That big stack of Elton saying directly to his left. Heath with about 15 bigs to start this hand. I wonder how Sang wants to respond. Okay. King five. Huh? Just gonna make yeah. the call. Like, Feels like. I gotta raise it with like five seconds. How many seconds? Three flop? 20. Huh? 20? <laughs> huh? It felt really fast. It didn't feel like 20. Players do receive 20 seconds for pre flop actions prior to being forced to use a time bank. And the King 5 mercifully disconnected from this 9 8 tray board, though the King of Spades does work. Heath looking to extract max value. Feels like for saying, you know, definitely going, going to whiff this board sometimes because the defending range can be quite wide BVB. And so in that situation, perhaps he's hoping saying could be doing the betting for him, but saying checks back. Four on the turn, not changing matters whatsoever. Elton does have the range advantage and that big stack. So showing a little bit of restraint with that king of spades, perhaps. Checking back against Ben Heath. But similarly recognizing that for Ben to be making these sorts of commitments toward pots, given how short he is, he should have something. Sizable bet on the turn from Heath. Not the not the action Heath was hoping for yeah. with aces, but you know you gotta take it where you can get it. Not the outcome Heath was looking for in terms of a lack of further investment from Elton, but a W is a W and very important, obviously. Now we flip it back over to another one of our outer tables. Looks like Juan Pardo's got himself involved. Opener was Haralobos Volgaris up to 16,000. Then Alex Ponikov's on the button. You see him in the white to the left of your screen. He three bet to 48,000. That was 3x. And here, Pardo with a relatively small four bet up to 80K. Now, actually, stand corrected, the app reflecting that action, but in fact, it was a jam pre, and they're on their backs where the Queen Jack of Pardo is going to. Down the pocket kings of Ponikov. Sick beat there, and the covering stack belongs to the Spaniard Pardo. Not much you can do if you're Alex Ponikov's pocket kings leading to his early demise. Pardo doing better on his second bullet. That is a long and lonely walk there. Minimum of $200,000 lighter in the pocket is the Latvian. Now, Carl Schreppe-Gatien and Michael Adamo working their way 
into a confrontation. Ace-Queen suited against Ace-7 suited. And a two-spade board. A threat to the Ace-Queen in a very real way. Adamo could have hit a seven prior to the arrival of the Queen. Now needs a spade and does not find it here on the river. As a wrap of the table, emblematic of the fact that he was the shorter of the two stacks in that confrontation. And he, just behind Ponikovs, a casualty. Early day two. Now then, back to one in progress between Badziakuski and Pantling. Preflop action. Bads made it 16 to go. Pantling defended the big. On the Jack 4 deuce flop, Bads fired 30,000 in position. Pantling tore one off with bottom pair. And here. He is check wow. raising Badziakuski after the ace rolls off with nothing more than a deuce. And Bads instantly regretting perhaps the decision to hunt value for 40K. But what's so confusing here is that the ace actually favors the under the gun plus one opener. But Pantling just unafraid and it's going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Canada's Andrew Pantling. If you haven't already worked it out for yourself, <clears throat> this is going to be a seat and a source of much excitement. Flipping back over to another feature, finding yet another pot in progress. This one between Haxton and Danny Tang. Haxton, the preflop aggressor, min raising, Tang a flatter from the button. The king queen six board giving Haxton second pair on the flop. It went check, check. And now on the turn, added comfort for Haxton in the form of queens and tens, yet he is checking over to Danny once more, Maria Tang, with that gut shot Broadway draw and perhaps some perceived disinterest on the part of Haxton, gets after it. How do you feel about this bet? <sighs> you can understand why Tang, of course, when check two is going to try to take the pot right now. But if he gets called in this spot, of course, does have some equity to make the best hand on the river. How do we characterize Ike's second check on the turn despite improving to queens and tens? Yeah, I think often, well, in Danny's mind, he might put Haxon on a bluff catcher, but we see Haxon obviously has a much, ooh. ooh. Haxon has a much stronger hand than that, but it was kind of a situation where if Haxon went for the check raise on the turn, but was faced with resistance or more aggression, that queen 10 certainly shrivels up a little bit with the presence of a lot of the straights. And now on the river, just a four card straight on the board. Yeah, thorough so, shriveling so. for the queen 10 here as Tang <gasps> gets there. Tang just deciding on the sizing that is going to get paid. Immediately, Ike just feels like if he wasn't already beat on the turn, certainly this is a tough spot for somebody to bluff on the river. You know, Haxton, of course, can have some ace X's here as well. You know, perhaps a hand like ace queen that would have played in this fashion, both on the flop and the turn. So it doesn't feel like a spot that's going to be bluffed very often. And yet Haxton is mulling this one over. Remember, Danny flatted from the button pre, checked back on the flop, fired the turn, and is now firing the river. And Haxton saying, I don't know. But we do, Ike. You made the right decision. 
Can we get maybe one more table? Fortunate pickup there for Danny Tang. Four-time Triton title winner intended is Danny. Well, I got weirdly curious. <laughs> picked up a title at our last stop in London and nearly picked up a second, falling in second place in the 25K short deck. Back over to our other feature. Fold it around to the overall chip leader, Elton Sang. Just to finish the thought, by the way, Tang mentioned him falling in that 25K short deck. The man that he fell to was Phil Ivey, who did quite well for himself in London. Picked up two titles at that festival. Now then, saying with the raise to 16,000, gets a flat from the cutoff ace 10 of Pantling and Badziakuski. Left to deliberate. Go set mining. Oh. <laughs> hello, ladies. Yeah, and hello, a prime squeeze spot in the eyes of Ivy's opponents. When he raises here, might not get credit for having a hand as strong as Queens when you see all the dead money out there. But just goes for the shove as well, which honestly, in my mind, looks a little bit weaker than if he went for the three bet non all in sizing. So this actually might get looked up tend to agree with you, Maria, and obviously Elton is the man with the best kit, or most likely kit, let's call it, in conjunction with the big stack that can afford to click call. Ivy started the hand with 28 big blinds, and maybe Singh's wondering, is this just a flip here? Does Ivy have ace-king? Or does he even have some hands, you know, weaker than that, perhaps, just because of all the dead money? You know, would a hand like, you know, ace-jack also be shoving and those types of hands where Sang feels comfortable that he's going to be flipping, even though, you know, he's still taking a big flip. But there might not be a better chance to get chips off of Phil Ivey. Cool. Looks like he does make the call. You surprised by that? Uh, mm. No, <laughs> I think saying because he has a big stack felt like he can afford to potentially be wrong, but he thought that Hong most Kong of the times he was going to be looking at two overs. It's a nice hand, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was calling him if you were. Huh? Well, I was gonna number eight him. in Asian yeah. culture is yeah. good luck, but there is not a third one available <laughs> on this flop. <laughs> Ten nine deuce, the queen's cozy for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. there is some vulnerability as the gut shot straight draw added to the snowmen that Sang needs to hit to end Ivy's run. Oh, oh, oh my. my. Sorry, Phil. Here, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Phil brandishing a big smile there, but yeah, obviously a nice gut place. punch. It's a nice end. Is that a good call? Pocket eights. Yes. Making a set? I really don't know. I mean, it's like a uh, sure. river. 100%, really? Yeah, for me. Well, it's flip up, man. <laughs> By my book. You know, and the know. chip leader. Yeah. I had ace 10. I was going to call. I'm trying to ask the pros. I would have made a bigger mistake. <laughs> Adding to his stack. <laughs> that was savage. <laughs> yeah, it's in a spot where I think Sang didn't expect Ivy to be as strong as he you. was. I but, felt like I wanted you to know, pull, when like, you... Perhaps make a really call that know. you're regretting after you see the cards turn face up, but you river a you set. Pull, huh, Jason? You probably don't feel that bad about it. Gross spot. Well, huh? it really is a gross spot. Obviously, like nines are obviously super <laughs> easy. And Elton nah. has been on the receiving I mean, end of such things throughout the course of his Benny. career as well, yeah, but this time, don't get out. It was set over set, and I turned quads, but I also had straight flush draw. 
<laughs> the one, like a pretty good one for you is when you bubble the Marty from the 100K in Bahamas. That was, that was a nasty one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. I was there. I cashed because of that. That was nice. Well, you had some really shitty offsuit hand into... 10-2 or 10-3 off into... 10-3 into, into Ace King, right? Into Ace King, yeah. <laughs> I said something goofy too when I got called. I was just like, "Yeah, I'm in pretty good shape here," and then just like immediately hit three. It's been a, it's been a good year for Isaac. No. Eighteen. Eighteen. Dang. That was a dope. Uh, Open. You were very Williams. Those sixes versus tempted, and then you. That, that, that was a nasty. Was we weren't all in yet. But that was a nasty. Ace King one. just <laughs> flats, and we saw Murray flat the big aces on multiple era. occasions that was yesterday. A fun it was awesome. It feels like he I hope it wasn't so awesome probably is just playing similar to a style that turn. was working for him yesterday, but yeah. also maybe respecting ah, an under the gun opening range just out of Tang. Thing. Like everything else, it's bad. And, and actually, Alex Livingston was really a great commentator, I thought. Oh. He, I usually, uh, like, I'm not saying, I just mean like his delivery, like, I sometimes. Just want to watch it on mute, but like, I, from a broadcasting perspective. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. he did a good job. Nikolai Vaska yeah, yeah, yeah. joined the party yeah. as Tang flops spotting Coach set. Coach always says one of the things that like is important is just like just narrate the action. Yeah, you help you know? people follow the action. Don't let there be dead air. Like that's why whatever. But well, like also like Nick saying like he doesn't try to like insert himself or like what he thinks about that spot too much or whatever. Just kind of like say what's happening. It's like it doesn't need to be instructional. Content. It's like when you're watching have an opinion on every play. It's like some of the best golf announcers are like Tiger Woods He's got 90 yards here. What's he gonna do? When I commented during the Cypress that Lamin won. I you, had, did, you did I'm that. torn I between get, narrating the invited. action so as like, these guys yeah, are suggesting you know. is a good idea for us to do. Uh -huh. Or listening to or them Or listening to their pointers. Notes. Exactly. You think it was your as Tang. Got you this time? No, I wanted to. No, Six I mean, full of sevens on the turn. I wanted to. Slow played it. I'm just saying, I wanted on the flop, like Murray took the bait. Try to keep it like, hey. Yeah, well like done I'm doing so. As he checks back on the turn and the board texture gets worse. For the ace king, or better, as the case may be. There's a chance he could just lose the minimum here, taking the check back line and not falling for Tang's checks. He's driving. Yeah. Wow. Ali is wow. Yeah. And so is. He's unbelievable with some of the stuff. Some of the stuff he like just said, comes out and just rolls out of his mouth. Like when you watch like someone like Ali or Tuckman do like an ad read, you're like, oh, they'll do a pro. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what I mean. And then like I want like I, I had he to... introduced you as one of the brothers Greenwood yesterday, and I was like, that was perfect. I also <laughs> wanted to think of like um, oh, like how good whatever like Al Michaels or like whomever must be. Who's that? Like I'm just saying like the top like whatever like. Like football or baseball or whatever, like those there was just guys. one, must one just of the like... biggest guys was on uh, Spin Chicklets recently. Kenny, uh, he does like every. He's like one of the only guys that does every sport. Uh, Kenny Alvarez. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was on. He. Did, I listened to a podcast with him recently. You you a big Chicklets guy? Yeah, I was. I've. I've, I've <laughs> somehow I've listened to literally every single episode. I, there's not one. Like if I have a flight. There's not one I can go find that I didn't listen to. Although you probably, I actually like him and Strick. I was gonna say they might. I feel a bit guilty, but some self-indulgence as Nikki P and Sam Greenwood giving us a glimpse into what they really think about our work here inside the booth. Because I often wonder, do the guys bother to listen to the commentary? Do they put it on mute? Do they fast forward past it? And good to know that we're having a positive impact on the guys out there as we do our best to celebrate them. It almost feels wrong though, like we're eavesdropping right now, like we yeah. shouldn't be listening in on this combo. Where are you from? Nothing wrong with Haxton's button open with King-7, but Tang wang wagging his finger with the Jack-10 suited. 
you see the benefits of big stacks here yeah, in day two. I played for yeah. Columbus. Tori Mitchell. I don't know if I've told you this sword <coughs> going back. <coughs> the back of Borley for U of And they played Lakehead, which is like an environmental education school in Thunder Bay. That's like... like it, but it, Thunder, it, whenever I hear Thunder Bay, I just think of uh, <coughs> young blood. Nick, you need to have uh, break a five for, uh, for more. What's that? Ah. And. Nicky P, King Jack, checks out of the conversation briefly to open to 17,000, and Ramin Hajiev has the right recipe for a three bet. Ace and a king to the direct left. 28 big blinds in his stack. Looks like he's just going to go ahead and put all of it in. 222. Is 227 greedy? I think he just felt like a three bet not all in sizing against an under the gun open might look really strong nope. and in this situation I think nope. there's a just a certain part of Petrangelo's like opening range from under the gun that's going to be like, an automatic you know, call to against or, like, that stack like, size anyways sort of, like, you know not don't want like kind of like a season tie like go there and so there are a lot of older kids who played in the old so they have like a really good jack. team and then it's Thunder Bay and there's nothing to do there and they play so they get like thousands of people through the game. That's why I was laughing because I know it's just like a hot, it's just like a crazy hockey factory place. And they get, uh, it's like a, you know, it's like a, it's like maybe like if you to fly there with like just two hours like straight north of Toronto or like a ten hour drive or something. So they go and they play two games over the weekend, and. Race. In the second game, Haji have heating up. Haxton thought about it with King Nine suited, but decides to pass. A couple of the places up there, the D three programs, like in upstate New York, right, right near the border, like. It's like a pro event in the town. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Like there's like a, I, I got murdered one time and all I, all I remember is just like, got smoked, like concussion or whatever. And there's just like a marching band, like just banging on the drums, <laughs> playing the trumpet, everyone's fucking screaming. I can't even get off the ice. SUNY Geneseo. Oh yeah. That was the one that KO'd my career. That's not far from me. Absolutely smoked. I had probably, the puck was probably off my stick for like 45 seconds and <laughs> some 26-year-old freshman just <laughs> ran me over. Nikki P reflecting on his Division I <laughs> ice hockey <laughs> days, it would appear. I remember reading that in his bio oh, no, once upon a time. Yeah, Quite I don't the think athlete. I was making the show, I think. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> traded his hockey stick in for golf clubs these days. He and the likes of... Seth Davies, always looking for a local course whenever we're at one of our Triton festivals. Listen, it's more enjoyable because you can also drink beer on the golf course. It's a lot harder to do that in ice hockey. And we know Nikki P loves a good beer. Emphasis on good beer. Bit of a refined palate when it comes to the barley and hops. The Trangelo. Choosing to limp the ace jack and flopping top pair here up against second pair. This is the kind of stuff we have in mind when we under rep these ace jacks. And from Hajiev's vantage point, Maria, this sort of stab looks like just a, a desperate attempt to take what feels like board texture that shouldn't see the big blinds check back range interested in continuing and buy a pot. So then he calls and a delightful turn for Petrangelo insofar as he's got the trip aces. Perceived delight for Hajiev as now all of a sudden the queen nine looks a bit better even. Right, so it's gonna be tough to 
get away from this hand on the turn. You know, perhaps some rivers Hajiev might be able to fold, but right now definitely going to be calling this bet. Thirty-five thousand. Hajiev does make the call. Now plays the king kicker on board as clubs come in, and this is a bit pesky, given that Ramin unblocks. Yeah, this is the type of river card where I think quite often Hajiev might feel like this is the point where he's beat, whereas again, the flop turn fairly safe for his hand. But facing a third barrel, but of this sizing, you know, not big, not small, around half pot. Is that enticing? For queen nine. 55,000 to be exact. I, I do feel like when your opponent triples in this spot, though, especially when the clubs come in, it's very rarely going to be a bluff. So Hygiev does acknowledge that this is going to be a lot of value. Do you listen to the Nice lay down. Uh, no, no. By the Azerbaijani National, as the blinds go up to 5,000, 10,000. There's one like weekly one I listen to, and then like. Uh, which, which one? It's called Puck Soup. Is it more for like actually what's going on in the league and not like interviews or? No, yeah, it's more just like what's going on in the league. Yeah. Type stuff. And then like. I just have like the Toronto like radio station like video shows and I like just before bed I'll just like try them on because it's just like it's just gibberish, you know? They're just like you know like oh, Matthews, Lois, although there was a period where uh, the Jays were struggling and it would just listen to like the Jays talk like for like five minutes before bed and it needed to stop because it was just people calling and yelling and screaming. Like, like effort sucks. We need to fire up when I like wake up. Twenty. Have you been any Williams? games this year? Which games? Yeah. Uh, I mean, been raising no, the like, blind I'm, level with the ace five in the know, cutoff. I, I went to Quebec for online, and then Texas to visit Paige's family, and then back home for literally one day, and then Cypress, and then heal. Uh, well, you just watch every game, right? right I record them and then can like watch them in like 45 minutes when I wake up. Depends Jack 8. Doesn't hit the 7 high board. Got shot straight draw. <coughs> More Williams. Doesn't feel like this is the type of board where you should be attacking too often. But Williams does, you know, have that gut shot so you wonder what he thinks about the fact that this is going to hit the big blinds range quite often. I guess he's not really going to have a chance to decide as Greenwood is going to lead. And quick fold from Williams, which feels a little surprising to me that even with Ace of Spades as well, he doesn't choose to float. Yeah, I think the Ace of Spades in particular was what makes it most surprising because you can immediately hit the four. Ace rates to be good as well against a hand that would lead into us. There's just so much downtime in between and then five and Spades could show up. But nevertheless, conservative approach there for Murray Williams. Nice. We take a moment to remind you that we've got an exclusive Triton merch giveaway coming your way. If you're streaming right now and you're in the chat, just type exclamation point giveaway and find out more. Also, have the opportunity to scan that QR code and get yourself entered to win 
four three triton yeah, fourth swag. line just every time he's on the I saw like, some people rocking every time a triton zone, scarf yesterday. Is that new? Zone, that, it looked new to me. Guys, and Garagnani was one of the men. Why did you cover something? Donning that so scarf in orb now. And outside fan. of the fourth line, they've been fine, but the fourth line's just been getting caved in. Yeah, but they kind of need somebody to beat the shit out of people, right? Like, they kind of need him. Sam checking out of the combo temporarily as we interrupt cool. this episode of Hockey Talk for a King 5 small blind. That's what I had when I shoved into you last time. Wow. And Haxton I think waking up with a six. Hand. Defending. Lucky. He's going to try to spin. <laughs> Total no you mean the cards or the guys? Just no respect <laughs> for money. 246k pot and a five on board. Huh? Turn three of spades. How's that? Three straight. Two three three of straight. Oh, okay. A lot of stuff going on here. No. For Haxton. Yeah, three of spades. Four. That doesn't help. And the nine doesn't add any sweat to this one. It's an ace or a six alone that wow. will rescue Ooh. Ike, and there is I was thinking the pink. ace of diamonds. Nice. Justice, perhaps. The year of Ike. Yep. The year of the mask. You just tricked me with the safe turn, you know? Never a doubt for Ike. I mean, not to take anything away from the results that he's really put up the last two years. Lately, I, I just... Like, even after lately? the turn came out, I was lately? just like, I don't think I'm just going to keep playing for a while. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't really think I was going to leave. See? He even knows it. Leave into what, though? Because you play so much, yeah. so all of a sudden you don't play. <laughs> but I know the feeling. I mean, if I, I had known it, that's why I won 50k in Barcelona. I went to Amsterdam and won the high roller, won the 100k heel. And at some point, I was like, I was feeling guilty. Yeah, yeah. No, I, so I just been, I now I'm like never that again. Game was going to eliminate never you. feel guilty again. I'm right? never going to feel yeah, guilty yeah, again for yeah. winning. <laughs> I, was I was not more, thinking any big thoughts about. Yeah, it. I was going to spend my time for the next few no, years. No, I was. I, yeah, that's why I was. <laughs> I was you have kids? I was manifesting. Trangelo now. Mm, that was my fault. Mm. Pocket yeah. fours. That's greedy. Ramin, ace, queen suited right behind him. 22 bigs. Certainly could just shove over this hijack open. <laughs> Haxton fresh mm. off his double up. 20? Just... Having could be have slightly covered. Two seventeen. No, those are fours. It's two fifteen. One eighty. One ninety. Two hundred. Jam as we saw him do with Ace King earlier. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. It's uh, it's two fifteen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah We're good. Yeah. Certainly, from this position, tens is seconds. looking like a good hand. Okay. Okay. Is it close or is it clear cut? I think it's clear cut against these so positions, I. but you know, you're only mildly afraid of Petrangelo behind you, but he did open from the hijack. Relieved to see Nikki P yep. out of the way and relieved not to be up against an over pair to the tens, but a lot to fade here. He's Ike is the covering stack ever be so slightly. Oh, really? Yeah, I cover. Yeah, I have 246. So we play for 480 in Hajiev's future. 579, ace and queen free. Ramin needs to pull the same rabbit out of the hat that Ike did here on this river by hitting one of his overcards to the tens. Yeah, it is no yep. magic. Year of Ike. <laughs> it never Just ends. like that. Ike is up to 51 bigs. 
And on the other side of that same coin, Ramin Hajiev is left it's gotta be annoying to collect a round of fist bumps like and limited memories. No, it, it's, like, it's not. It's <laughs> from a day hilarious. change here in the 200K Being invitation. the guy who everybody is sick of winning is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I feel guilty like, like if I just like have a set in a huge pot. Flipping it back over to one in progress. Kuhn tussling with Pantling. Jason flopped the pair of tens for the best hand after flatting from the small blind against the Pantling open to 22,000. He check called 34K on the flop and we just saw that 55K check call on the turn as Pantling value betting the king for 152 on the river. And this is where Pantling's reputation can certainly benefit him. When you're up against the player that's so aggressive, that's willing to fire. Are you really going to give them credit for top pair here? Do they deserve credit? And you see Pantling does get paid off because his reputation certainly precedes him. These players also have quite a bit of experience with him. Pantling's been playing for a long time. And when you have that kind of reputation and that type of table image and you make hands, you will most likely get paid. No doubt about it. And it was Jason Bucks that he was noshing on on this occasion as we flip it over to one where Grafton and Mosbach find themselves embroiled. Squiddy, the all-in player from the button with the King Jap Jack up against the pocket eights. And an eight on the flop always made it an uphill climb for Squiddy, who will not be picking up his second invitational title, but will be picking up his jumper and to walk out the door. So the field continues to thin out and with the loss of Grafton, we check in on the leaderboard here. One and a half million in front of Elton Sang. Still the current overall chip leader. Pantling in second. Far more active stack. Jason Kuhn slipping down to 800,000 after paying Andrew off in that pot, just before we flipped over to Grafton's elimination. So we're gonna step aside for a bit of a rebalancing effort. Don't go anywhere. In three minutes, we'll be back with continuing coverage of the 200K Triton Invitation. Keep it close. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of best Poker. poker song, the biggest event. poker no site. your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu. 
the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. And welcome back to continuing coverage of the $200,000 Triton Invitational from Sporting Monte Carlo in the Principality of Monaco. Ali Najad and Maria Ho on the back end of a rebalancing effort upon the departure of one Sam Grafton as 39 runners remain of the 50 that embarked here on day two. Still first frame coverage oh, in this yeah. and then he's upset, partially he integrated. Number. He forgot about it. Phase of the format. He gets a call from the Philadelphia Police Department. He lives in California, so all the way across the country. They say, we found your watch. Oh. Apparently somebody got shot, a drug dealer got it or somehow. Holy shit. They say, we're going to send it back to you. Can you prove the serial number? He gives the proof. They send it back to him, the same watch. But now it's completely covered in diamonds. Oh my God. That is so funny. <laughs> it like, but it was so many diamonds. I'm right everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. How lucky is that? Oh, crazy. That's hilarious. <laughs> Story time oh, with Pamela so there. The he, he, he got, he got it uh, like the band tightened, so that was like too tight. Uh, too many diamonds. At least he had some diamonds. Yeah, that's, that's, really, that's really yeah. funny. Pamling just looks like a guy with good stories. He was playing poker. Oh, yeah. He plays for fun. I remember every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Elton, kid looking like a guy who's got a dominant yeah. king no, in the big blind. Chooses to defend the, he in, uh, against the coon min raise open with king 10. Uh, yes, on the, on the dot. That's amazing. Yeah. Able to sell those and both diamonds. players hit the king, of course, yeah. Sang with the benefit <laughs> of two pair, courtesy of that jack, like who, who wants that? Yeah. Yeah. has trouble on the horizon <laughs> potentially for Kuhn. Yeah, a lot of the times Kuhn is just hoping that he's going to capture some value from inferior king X's and jack X's, plus all of that flush and straight possibility too, but not going to necessarily be putting Sang on top two. But how does Sang want to proceed? Does he want to go ahead and fast play, or does he want to try to reel Jason in? But with the presence of, again, all of those draws, does feel like the fast play is a better option here. Check raising 40 up to 140. And of course, Jason with top pair. Too much hand to go anywhere, but obviously not the stack that he wants to tussle with, Maria. Yeah, but does have the benefit of playing in position and, you know, doesn't block a lot of those draws. Has no diamonds. Blocks, you know, queen 10. 
10 9. And that's a sopping wet turn card, the 10 of diamonds. Jason making the inferior kings up, but obviously coordination and the flush texture to boot. Yeah, essentially almost every draw from the flop gets there with that turn card. So even a lot of the semi bluffs that Sang has now gets there. So for Kuhn, not necessarily feeling too excited about turning two pair, but Sang also not feeling too excited about mm -hmm. his two pair. But once you have a check in front of you, you do feel somewhat tempted to maybe charge any of these draws that might have been picked up or deny equity? That's only if you think that Sang is checking here all of the time as, you know, having some type of hand that is ending up as a bluff catcher with that particular turn card. You know, does Sang ever have traps here in terms of could he be check raising the flop on a draw, getting there on the turn, and then trying to go for another check raise? But, you know, as you mentioned, just how wet that board is. Well, Makes Jason Kuhn inclined to go small here. He bets 80,000. He could think to himself, ace, queen, I would have heard from pre-flop out of the big. If he doesn't expect queen, nine, or eight, nine to take a check raise line on the flop, as Elton did, then he's left with am I up against diamonds, which of course he unblocks, but he would be drawing live against that sort of kit with two pair. And how about this for a disaster river for both players? The queen of diamonds putting a four liner and a four flush out there. Yeah, this is an action killer run out for saying, you know, could have gotten a lot more chips in the middle if the turn and river bricked off. And now just wondering, did he get done in by the run out? Will one of these guys feel like they need to turn their hand into a bluff? Because that's not the sort of board texture that suggests we can hunt value with kings up. Yeah, well, you see saying going ahead and checking it over, which, you know, when you have somebody as good as Jason Kuhn in position, you're not really going to be leading this river as a bluff. You're really just hoping to get a free showdown. But if Kuhn's the one that decides that he wants to perhaps try to get Sang to fold out some straights or some weak flushes, this is going to put Sang in a very tough spot if Kuhn decides to go for it. My hand's too good to bluff, so I'm going to check and hope you have King 7. Check. King 10. So you heard Jason walk us exactly through his thought process. My hand's too good to turn into a bluff. Checking back, hoping it was king seven, but instead it was king jack. But really zeroing right in on Elton's hand composition as being kings up. Now we flip it back over to outer table action where Chris Brewer has got himself involved in one. On the button, open to 22,000. Devoris flatted ad, as did Haralobos, both from the blinds. 10-10-8 board. Devoris let out for 18,000. Brewer made the call on the flop. Jack on the turn. And Devoris's 52K pot, the 52K bet, rather, was called by Brewer. And we're just at that stage in the hand now, I believe. So the aforementioned bet of 52,000 comes in. The lack Chris of will be making this call. Go on, Maria. The lack of lighting at these outer tables makes Divorce look like a very ominous <laughs> opponent sure. right now. It's villain vibes out there. So another 104,000 sliding into the middle here. And a five of spades on the end. No flushes available. Well, 
Will DeVore has come with the third barrel, having broken with the flow of play from the small blind. And it does feel like from the small blind, you can certainly have quite a few 10 X's here. Can have a lot of trips. Very innocuous river looks like Devoris gets looked up. And Brewer shows Jack eight for Jacks and tens while Devoris had King high heart draw on the flop, turned it into a bluff on the river and got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. As we flip back over to the feature where we find one in progress in turn here. It was a limp from Badziakuski. Pre-flop, Elton limped as well from the small. Three players taking the jack nine five flop, which was checked around. Pantling's nines, the best hand. Turn also around the checks, and now here we are at the river. Saying just with a cheap little stab as a bluff here into two opponents, feeling like perhaps they were not that interested, but Pantling very quickly calling. It's not a man that you're going to want to bluff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modest confrontation there between the two big stacks. Yeah, it's definitely Devoris, by the way, Maria, worthy of note, down to just 1K as that barrel on the river was for almost all of his chips. A slight oversight on our part in that exchange with Brewer at one of the outer tables. you just have like 10, 9, that's straight. Yeah, looking at the remaining chip stacks in play, it does feel like it's quite a few yeah. sub-20 yeah, yeah. big blind stacks <laughs> now, getting crazy. a little more shallow. But you're kind of running out of, like, diamond combo thing. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you Adamo? Adamo. Oh. <laughs> got, to, got to bluff somehow. <laughs> Adams, <laughs> there, raise uh, open with the king queen. Me there, I would have retired. Oh. <laughs> Adamo might call, I believe, you call me. <laughs> Crazy. Nine, ace, everything fucking makes everything. No, it's pretty happy with the check. <laughs> <laughs> That's the honest one. <laughs> really had hopes of king seven. That would have been sweet. Jack and you see maybe. just <laughs> how wide Pantling is willing to call from the small blind. Choosing 4-3 offsuit here. Heads up and out of position and flopping bottom pair on an ace high board, which is in front of King Queen. And when you have these high V pips and these wide ranges, you're so tough to nail down. <laughs> Nevertheless, Adams, C betting on this dry texture, repping the ace. And for Adams, I think He's got to be a little bit weary of the fact that even though he knows Pantling is pretty loose pre, a lot of times a call from the small blind does indicate some type of strength in the sense of most players' range will be weighted towards some of these, you know, ace-10, ace-jack plus, some of the suited aces, of course, some of the small to middling pairs. Oh, and, and look at this. <laughs> he obviously doesn't expect Pantling to have... Shown up with a three on the flop, but backdoor hearts getting there in the form of a king. It is Pantling betting. Adams, second pair, queen kicker, facing the barrel of 35,000. And some of Pantling's range ha will have some of the ace X's. So even though Timothy does river a pair of kings, how good do you feel about it when Pantling's betting into you? And what you don't want to do against an opponent like Pantling again is to just pay him off very often because you feel like he might be over bluffing. 
Here, though, Adams does make the call. And everybody given an opportunity to see just how wide those small blind flats can be from Pantling as the 3-4 ends up on its back. So one Canadian takes from the other. Adam's the beneficiary on this occasion. Quick pause for the dealer push there. Hello. Maybe I brought a ball. Cards back in the air. And flipping it back over to Kyat Lee at an outer table. Involved with Dan Smith here. Preflop action, Lee the opener to 20K. Smith a flat caller from the big, defending. Queen seven tray flop. Smith check raising Kyat 17K C bet up to 47,000. Lee making the call. Here we are on the turn where the three has paired. Smith bet 50K, Kyat called. And it looks like the river card is out there now, the eight. And Smith putting Kyat all in. Kyat making the call with King Queen. Queen's up, and Smith shows him sevens full, which puts him on his feet. And that'll do it for Lee. And more carnage could be on the horizon as no sooner does Kiat Lee get showered than Dan Devoris' last 1K finds itself headed for the middle. And it looks like it definitely did not work out. Unable to make out precisely what that exchange was, but I'm told Nacho Barbero was the man to finish off Devoris. The bulk of the damage obviously coming in self-inflicted fashion against Good Brewer yeah. not yeah, long ago. It's never been opened, so it's nice and fancy. You can wear it. Perfectly polished. It's in the box and everything. <laughs> yeah, a bit really of cool. a flurry of bust-outs there. And again, still a few immediate short stacks oh. in the mix. Handling really doing a good good job of mixing it up. Now just calling first in from the cutoff with Ace Deuce suited. You know, we saw him open Ace Deuce off from early position. We've seen him usually come in with a raise, but this time a limp. Busso limping in right behind him. Yeah, I really don't want to harp on it too much, but it's so important to note that this committed sort of strategy or approach that Pantling has is very, very tough to navigate against. And here he is in a three-way pot where Adams flops an open ender. He comes up short, It's not, does Busso. It's not very often as a pro where you just give up on trying to range your opponent, but Pantling <laughs> might be one of those players that um, you're not really gonna ever be able to put on a hand. Round of checks. Hello. Looked like Jason might have been trying to sneak in a cat nap there. Adams in the big blind. Figures he's got some range advantage on this now two-tone texture. Comes out swinging with the open ender and makes quick work of the field. So another pickup for Timmy. Adams with 13.2 million plus in career Triton earnings across a relatively modest 12 caches. Two titles, did pick one up in that 125K main. 
at our last stop in London. Also made the final table of the 200K Invitational. Or sorry, the 200K 8 Max. The 250K Luxempe Invitational. He did not cash. Boy, as I reflect on it, London was a pricey stop. <sighs> we had a 200K, a 250K, and a 125K in quick succession. That'll add up on the ledger. Yeah, and, you know, even here, coming in and just kicking things off immediately with the 200K buy-in, you know, it might end up feeling pretty bad for a couple of the players that, you know, perhaps were in for one entry plus a re-entry to go into the series down 400K right from jump. A jam from Badziakuski's Jacks over the top of this ace nine open from Elton and Adams wakes up with two sevens in the small. 11 plus bigs on ask. Yeah, and Adams trying to figure out, you know, perhaps saying, gonna be a little bit wider opening off of the big stack, which does allow Badziakuski, of course, to shove a little bit wider as well. So it doesn't necessarily need a hand as strong as Jax to be shoving. So how well are sevens performing against Bads's shoving range against things open? All of that taken into consideration and ultimately leading to a fold from Adams as it gets back over to Elton. Hmm. Well, if sevens are no good, then one would imagine ace nine isn't either Maria or a different proposition with 20K already invested in a much deeper stack. Slightly different proposition, but I still think that he can find the fold here. Another ugly one. Yeah, it's <laughs> ends up making the call, but very yeah. self-aware about it as he says another <laughs> ugly yeah. one. And obviously the spot is ugly as well. Just 28% equity for saying. Baz is going to be loving this one. Do we call? Is that the four more? Yeah, I thought about it. 32? Yeah. How much total? At one point, Bad Yakuski was tied for most career Triton titles with Jason Kuhn. The Belarusian, 17.8 million in career. Triton earnings, 21 caches, four titles. Jason breaking away all the way up to nine titles. And this flop breaking the heart of the two jacks. An ace on the board, putting Sang in front. Not the paint that Bads needs to see on the turn. Is a jack available to keep his hopes alive here in the 200K Invitational? The answer is no. I am sensing a pattern for saying, though, every time he calls when he's behind and is unsure of his decision, he ends up getting there anyways. So what does it matter? Trying to learn. And so is calling. It's good to be running good, though. Well, he knows he's running good, and conversely, Bads running quite poorly as he makes his way off the main feature table. What were you thinking with? Huh? What were you thinking with? Seven. Oh. You caught fold, obviously. I had threes on the flop set. Oh. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. So many hands. <laughs> <laughs> Raised into three pocket pairs. I know. Raised into three pocket pairs. Yeah. Okay. He's 10 now for Tim Busso. Update I've been mentioning. That he's a youngster in the field, 23 years of age. In fact, he's reverse time. He's 21, no. not 23. Barely old wow. enough to enter a casino back in the U.S. As he min raises the ace 10 and awaits Adam's decision on the button with king queen.
Interesting hand for Jason. The King-7 suited sometimes can be pretty nice to be able to see a flop with. Feel like the Queen Jack could also be in there if you're Paul. Perhaps is he considering a squeeze or is he just taking his time to call because I don't think a fold would be in order with that type of hand from the big blind. Yeah, not at that price, of course. Able to close the action. Who comes along? A rare four-way affair. And the 10 high board is Busos. Top pair, top kicker. Kuhn does have the gut shot and backdoor spades. Two overs in the gutter for Boss. He checks as well. Busso following through for one third pot. And it's somewhat unlikely that Busso would fire into three opponents, you know, without having connected with this board or having a pretty good hand. But Kuhn, not only with that gut shot, but has backdoor flush possibilities as well. Does feel like it's enough for him to call and see the turn. What's Paul thinking about? Able to close the action for 30K, two overs and a gutter? I thought for sure the direct price was there, implied odds as well, but he feels differently. Yeah, I, probably a little bit surprising that he didn't elect to see the turn card, especially when he's drawing to the nuts. And as you said, price was right. Turn card did hit him, by the way. Would have had the lead, courtesy of this jack. Instead, heads up between Kuhn and Busso as Jason... Checking it over, and you see Tim. Staring on intently before knuckling, and it would have been trip jacks for boss. And Kuhn calling from the small blind preflop could certainly have some of the sets, you know, sixes and eights probably would have just flatted there. Pre, and also when we look at the possibility of some of those pair and straight draw combinations that Kuhn could have. Kuhn certainly in a situation where he could have value. And because he shows up on the river with King High, it looks like he is going to find what's a natural bluff here, trying to represent those types of hands that I said. I guess it's not smoke, it's like foggy. Yeah, we were trying to figure this out before, whether it was like a smoke machine for the light. 45. Oh. Just like dust. 45. <laughs> you went for third pot, I think but, uh, this is just going to be a pretty easy yeah. call for Busso to make. Snapped it, by the way. Oh. <laughs> You've made trips. <laughs> <laughs> Jason gave it a go for 45, but unsuccessfully. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my can get paid off. <laughs> I would have made a straight nine game. <laughs> nine change. Yeah, you want to change? Blue for red. I have said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, he had a so a small hiccup <laughs> for Kuhn as we flip it back to outer table action here. Pre-flop, the open in this one came from Jean-Noël Torel, who is not present post-flop. It was three bet from the button by KCG, then a four bet from Brewer, as 32,000 became 75,000, became 160,000. JNT laid it down. Carl Chapegatian made the call. Queen 10 6 flop, as you saw there. Brewer, C betting 100K, getting called. Now the 10 pairing on the turn. And it looks as though Brewer checked it. Over to KCG, I believe. There it is. And a quick wow. jam. 
Brewer makes the call, shows the ace queen, and in turn, KCG shows an ace queen of his own. So these guys are destined for a chop. And are we like we drawing after this or something? Yeah. 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 Interesting. They just just one redraw, right? <laughs> they just do the like because at the moment it's still split in terms of like each table is fifty fifty. Oh okay. <laughs> and now they just do like random. Sounds like they redraw. Oh, oh and now it's random. Now it's just like a normal tournament. What do we draw? Oh, okay. Yeah, random no, opponent. You can't, play, you, can't, you can't play with oh. your partner. Like. No more. Oh. Oh, okay. You can't play with your. Partner. You can't play with your partner, but it could be like seven VIPs and seven pros. Oh. On. Sick. It's just like completely random. Is anybody's partner still in? <laughs> My partner just busted. My partner's still. Wait, were you with Ivy? Yeah, I I the not believe. Uso <laughs> up front with at least the ace oh, in raising. We're partnering crime. Bob, right? <laughs> yeah. Bob? yeah. He's still in there. Yeah, he's still in there. Bob. You hear them talking about how after this level they are going to do a complete redraw of the field. And everybody will be combined randomly except pairs will be separated. Oh, yeah. Elton defends from the big with the suited one gapper and a five in the window gives him bottom pair. Ace of hearts, very relevant though. On this texture, unclear what Busso's side card is. Yeah, and Sang doesn't really have a clear pathway to a cheap showdown with bottom pair. especially with no real redraw possible for that hand. You know, if you take one off here, there's just going to be so many turn cards where you're going to have to check folds. Elton, check raising, perhaps Looking for an answer here and now with regards to where this 3-5 stands. Not looking to see any more streets. Against the under the gun plus one opener and the C-bet. Not surprised to see Busso call here. Again, as you mentioned, the Ace of Hearts really relevant, but also there's not going to be a lot of hands that Busso's willing to C-bet there that he can't call a raise with. Andrew, where are you from originally? Toronto. Oh, Toronto? Yeah. How are you? Uh, West Jack Virginia. comes off on the East turn East, yeah. after Busso. Plunked in the 30K Toronto, Toronto? added by Elton, who's Burlington. now Burlington. inflated this one to 145 and a great shot know, there of Tim. Oh, uh, where? Intensely. I don't know. Maple Grove? No, Maple Grove. I mean, staring I downwards. No, yeah, I grew up <coughs> Perhaps a bit relieved to yeah, see yeah, a check yeah. from Elton. We'll see how he reacts. Not that much. Yeah, I figured, yeah. My parents actually moved out to, I don't know if you know, Port Saluzzi. It's like St. Catharines area. Yeah. My parents moved out Buso there. Buso trying like five years, so to get to showdown, it seems, with that check back. Now, this is perhaps a really so good card like for really Buso on down. the river. You're getting crazy with the real estate. You might have an opportunity in the next six months. Yeah. Okay. They're just tanking. Yeah. And okay. as I mentioned, just most of the it's deck. Never going to be a good run out yeah, for Sang's hand. Ace King, Ace Queen could be a part of this kit for Busso, it would seem. Maybe he has the flush from time to time. Using a time bank. Is it posturing kind of or is it genuine? Yeah, I mean, even if he floated with some of the weaker aces, certainly this run out is one that he's going to very often bet. 
even as a bluff, but certainly a lot of value he could have as well with that mystery card. But a very, very relevant ace of hearts here. It would be a heck of a hero call to make for saying with bottom pair because there's just not a lot of hands. I think that float the flop that he's beating. Surely for 133,000, the fives are done with it, aren't they? You would think so, but saying is taking some time. Before finding the muck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But somehow he has the face of someone who thinks he might have gotten bluffed there. I don't know. We know that he was up against the Ace of Hearts. Five. If you had to bet on it, would you say fives were good? No. That would five for but would but we'll never know, though. Yeah, it's true. We could always ask Tim. I don't know. I'm not on. sure he would tell us the truth. Right. He's probably got some bluffs in him. Now then, we find KCG's chips in motion once more, as they tend to be squaring off with fellow Frenchman Jean-Noël Torel. These are... Stacks that like to find their way into the middle, perhaps more liberally than others. JNT was the preflop raiser to 22. KCG three bet to 75. JNT came along. 9-3 deuce board on the flop. It was a JNT bet into KCG for 50,000, which got called on the turn. When the six rolled off, it was 75,000, which was bet and called. And here we are on the river where JNT shuts it down after a queen rolls off and KCG barrels 100,000. I don't know if you got a glimpse of it, but when JNT looked at his hand, it appeared he had pocket fives, which would have been second pair effective on the flop. And he does make the call and gets shown another ace queen by KCG, who's ridden that hand for some glory of late. Now we flip it back over to the feature where Ben Heath has gotten the rest of his chips forward. Ace queen themes continuing. Coon ace jack dominated the opener to 22. And now Elton with the decision out of the small. How much are you playing, Jason? 499. And against these positions, ace-queen is going to be quite strong. You know, Kuhn, of course, can be opening the hijack a bit wider. You know, doesn't need a hand as strong as ace-jack. And he, his shove over and open, though, doesn't have a lot of fold equity because of how short his stack oh. is. So Heath will probably be a little bit stronger because of that fact, but either way, Ace Queen performing really well here. Gonna make the call, which that lets Kuhn off the hook, dominated by both players. What do you have, Jason? Oh. This is what you have. Flashes the ace jack to the boys as he steps aside. And you see the vast majority of the time, this will simply be a chop pot between Heath and Sang. Barring spades or hearts, and now Elton, the only man that can scoop. How good is he running? Oh, we're about to find out as a three of spades hits the turn. Oh, no. Not like this. The thought in Ben Heath's mind Ooh. and the four hearts scaly. is safe. I was sad you didn't get the call. Now I feel so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I was sad you didn't get the call. Yeah, definitely. Life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have a hand yet to call. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just like call? You know, doing crazy jam yeah, crazy, crazy stuff? No. Call? Actually, yeah. Slipping back over to an outer table once more where it looks like Patrick Antonius has his chips jammed into the middle from the small blind. Fedor Hulse, a customer, as we see pocket threes going up against jack eight, the flop. 
9-3 deuce, middle set for Patrick. And how about quads on the turn? It was always going to be rough on Jack-8. All right, great dealer, great dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Holes playfully suggesting the dealer responsible for that outcome there as Patrick like won't be packing his bags for home just yet. Although he would have packed light as he calls Monaco home. Although I saw it on his Instagram from his Instagram story that he has a room here. So, you know, maybe feeling like he might be playing some late nights. So even as close as his home is. I mean, listen, a lot of people who live in Vegas also do the same thing during the World Series or when, you know, larger tournaments are in town. Don't want to have to be bothered with driving back and forth or walking back and forth for that matter to the pad. As we pick up action here, Jack 9-5, Tim Adams, the preflop raiser with the ace-10, made it 20 to go and picked up both blinds. Two straight draws in those blinds, both of which have checked. Adams closes the action with a check of his own as the board goes two-tone and the nine pairs. And you can count on Pantling to come out firing. When players show disinterest in the pot, Pantling with that straight draw equity, but Buso with the flush draw. And again, just some of that conservative play that we saw from early on from Busso, you know, folding a flush draw here against an opponent who has shown a lot of a propensity to basically stab and bet as bluffs. 45K, getting the job done for Andrew as the theme of people typically looking to avoid confrontations with that particular stack continues. Yeah. And poker's all about, you know, finding out how to exploit your opponents. And so if Panling is getting the sense that mm. there's certain players at the table that are a little more easy to bluff, mm. then he's going to start over bluffing in spots. And, you know, it's up to you to start adjusting to that. And then you're going to have to start calling more often. Eight nine suited now for Heath. 20, Off of his low water mark, suited and connected. Still scrapping Maria, finding a min raise open off of that stack depth. Just 14 bigs. And Elton, a six suited again with these decisions. And I think typically most players would find a way to get involved with the ace jack. You know, perhaps three betting in this spot from the small blind. But you know, it's hard to predict what Busso is gonna do with the way that he has approached a lot of hands thus far, just being a little more passive, playing a little more defensively. New one. I do like his table presence, though. You know, he's kind of picked this vibe when he's in a spot, when he's making a decision, not giving off much, and does lay it down here. Yeah, Buso certainly playing on the tight side. Adams, conversely, out of the big blind, able to play on the looser side, defending with King-3 offsuit. Comes up empty on an A7-4 board. Same story for Heath, although he's got the benefit of the betting lead and position here. Will he put it to work? Yeah, it does feel like with this type of texture, it's going to be a pretty easy seabed against a big blind defend. 
Okay, the four bars. Thirty nine. four way, right? Twelve K, the figure. Into fifty five. You see the brows furrowed on Adams, but nevertheless, you will fold much to the relief of Ben Heath, who is scrapping and hanging in there. Just 36 players remaining at present. I don't know if I would take it or not. Began the day with 50 players. The first casualty was that of Stephen Chidwick, Mahar Noida, Imad Derwish, the Triton first-timer, Lun Lun, Webster Lim, Ponikovs, the Adominator, Ivy, Garniani, Hajiev, Grafton, Kiatli, like Daniel Dvoris, and Makita Batsiakuski, those who met their end thus far here today. Shortest mm -hmm. stack in the room at 10 big blinds is that of Tony G. And Tony is just again. north of him. <laughs> Richard Young, <laughs> and then Ben Heath in turn. Oh, yeah, Elton with the King Jack the offsuit opens, and another one for Busso, although this decision considerably easier to navigate than the Ace Jack, a hand to go. I'm just going to make the call, electing not to three bet this particular holding. I'm staying quite live here with the King Jack. More conservative approaches from Busso, although I'm not sure that's a flop that's going to lend to more conservative posturing from the Frenchman top pair and the nut flush draw. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Yeah, and saying, I think perhaps picking up on the fact that Busso is quite tight with his starting hand selection, so just checking it over to him instead of taking that C bet line that most players would as the pre-flop aggressor on the ace high board. <laughs> and Busso with the slow play, with the check back, and it just keeps getting better. Top two now, as it isn't certainly the product of being conservative, but rather, as you mentioned, Maria, trapping that lends to Busso's choice on the flop. Elton does pick up the Broadway draw, worthy of note. Not worthy of a bet, however, as his check does draw at last a bet from Busso. Just 20 into 65. Saying might be considering seeing one more with that gut shot. But the problem when you are seen as a pretty tight player is that you're not really going to get paid off too often. Referring to Busso? About Busso yeah. not getting paid off very often, yeah. but saying now, taking an aggressive line with that gut shot, maybe feeling like the check back on the flop from Busso was weak and perhaps doesn't have a hand strong enough to call this raise, but at this point, getting the call, I think a lot of the time Singh might be looking to give up unless he improves. Which he does not, although Four to a wheel do show up. Five doesn't rate to be a part of the equation for Elton's open. But he may in turn feel that Busso would not have flatted with a five in his range. And if that's the case, pressure could be applied. I don't know whether or not it would work, though. <sighs> Saying is going to size up Busso's stack. So with more than pop back, might sing, be looking to go big if he were to bluff. You know, Elton's been remarkably slow paced today in terms of his decisions and approach. Ultimately does settle on a check, however, and we'll see whether or not Busso is going to flinch 
upon the arrival of that deuce or if he's going to go for value. And I think this will be very telling with respect to whether or not he is skewing too egregiously on the side of conservative play. Yeah, I think it's one thing to be tighter pre-flop, but I think post you don't want to be missing out on value. And if you're going to play this hand as a trap, sometimes you got to find... <laughs> you got to find the opportunity to go for value, even though in this case, of course, we see he wouldn't have gotten paid. But, you know, even he feels not great about nice it. Nice mm -hmm. Obviously, there's nice something nice to be said for erring on the side of yeah. caution, but indeed he is erring in a spot like that. And I think you would agree. Lessons to be learned as Puso will have an opportunity to think things over there far from being gratuitously critical are the two of us, as he has certainly impressed thus far, working his way into the final 36 here with 13 places ultimately paid in the 200K Invitational. Blinds will be going up to 6 and 12,000 when we come back. Overall chip leader, Elton Sang, 1.7 million in front of him. Heath, 171. The shorty at that feature table as we bring you back here to the desk. Ali Nishad and Maria Ho, glad to have you with us. And uh, an enjoyable first frame of play, I would say. Uh, a lot of carnage, though, <laughs> as it seemed like the short stacks just couldn't spin it up. Yeah, you know, we went to the outer table action quite a bit, saw a lot of bust outs from those tables. And again, some of these players just not shying away from getting involved. You know, we see Sang, Pantling continuing to be in a lot of pots. Yeah, Pantling obviously is somebody to keep an eye on, but a new name has emerged up toward the top of the leaderboard, one that we really haven't kept an eye on so far in today's coverage. And if we can take the Triton Poker Plus app, we'll find the name of Mario Mosbach, 1.2 million. Not sure how much of an opportunity you've had to see him play, but what impresses me the most about watching him out there on the felt is he's tapped into that former athlete competitive spirit to work his way into some successes on the felt. Yeah, I've actually had the opportunity to play with Mario before, um, and him and Fedor are very close friends. No doubt that Fedor has certainly helped Mario with his game throughout the years. You know, come up pretty quickly through the ranks, now playing the highest stakes, but has the right table presence, has good composure, and I feel like he's set up to make a deep run here. Yeah, you've got some friends in the German contingent, and I know obviously those are friendships that can be mined for some strategic advantages, no question about it. So then, it's going to be about a 20 five minute break as the full redraw is upon us when we come back we're going to have a consolidated field here in the 200k invitational so keep it close but in about 25 minutes come back and see us again more coverage of day two from sporting monte carlo after this <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Action traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No <laughs> way. Jump, jump, jump. 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 Jump, Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up to $250.
Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Pantling taking the high variance approach between the flat pre and then the raise of the three better, who could very well have a big ace, but obviously in poker, goes down the way it must go down. Now a look at the most decorated Triton Award winner ever, Jason Kuhn, nine time title winner. Elton Sang has gone full South Park, by the way. I mean, it's actually quite nice out today. <laughs> and he's just looking like the winter weather has taken root. Folded around to Pantling, who opens the cutoff. Ace Jack raising to 20,000, and Buso going to shove with two fives. And I don't really mind the shove against Pantling's. Late position open. Pantling has been opening so wide between what we saw yesterday and, you know, even today, just very active. Right at the start, Busso had fold equity, but just happened to run up against the part of Pantling's range that's going to call, but still a flip, so not in terrible shape here. Whoa. <laughs> well, two pair of the hard way. <laughs> Insta leaves Pantling drawing dead. What do you got there? Well-timed moment for the Frenchman, Triton first-timer, just 23 years of age. 149. 149. Between Badzi Akuski and Pantling. Pre-flop action, Bads made it 16 to go. Pantling defended the big. On the Jack 4 deuce flop, Bads fired 30,000 in position. Pantling tore one off with bottom pair, and here he is check-raising wow. Bad Ziakuski after the ace rolls off with nothing more than a deuce, and Bad's instantly regretting perhaps the decision to hunt value for 40K. But what's so confusing here is that the ace actually favors the under-the-gun plus one opener, but Pantling just unafraid, and it's going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Canada's Andrew Pantling. If you haven't already worked it out for yourself, mm -hmm. Haxton, the preflop aggressor, min raising, tang a flatter from the button. The king-queen six board giving Haxton second pair on the flop. It went check, check, and now on the turn, added comfort for Haxton in the form of queens and tens, yet he is checking over to Danny once more, Maria Tang, with that gut shot Broadway draw and perhaps some perceived disinterest on the part of Haxton, gets after it. How do you feel about this bet? <sighs> you can understand why Tang, of course, when check two is going to try to take the pot right now, but if he gets called in this spot, of course, does have some equity to make the best hand on the river. How do we characterize Ike's second check on the turn despite improving to queens and tens? Yeah, I think often, well, in Danny's mind, he might put Haxton on a bluff catcher, but we see Haxton obviously has a much, ooh. ooh. Haxton has a much stronger hand than that, but it was kind of 
a situation where if Haxton went for the check raise on the turn, but was faced with resistance or more aggression, that queen 10 certainly shrivels up a little bit with the presence of a lot of the straights. And now on the river, just a four card straight on the board. Yeah, thorough <laughs> shriveling for the queen 10 here as Tang gets there. just deciding on the sizing that is going to get paid. And immediately, Ike just feels like if he wasn't already beat on the turn, certainly this is a tough spot for somebody to bluff on the river. You know, Haxton, of course, can have some ace X's here as well. You know, perhaps a hand like ace queen that would have played in this fashion, both on the flop and the turn. So doesn't feel like a spot that's going to be bluffed very often. And yet Haxton is mulling this one over. Remember, Danny flatted from the button pre, checked back on the flop, fired the turn, and is now firing the river. And Haxton saying, I don't know. But we do, Ike, and you made the right decision. Fold it around to the overall chip leader, Elton Sang. Raise Just to finish the thought, by the way, Tang mentioned him falling in that 25K short deck. The man that he fell to was Phil Ivey. Did quite well for himself in London. Picked up two titles at that festival. Now then, saying with the raise to 16,000, gets a flat from the cutoff ace 10 of Pantling and Badziakuski left to deliberate. Goes set mining. Oh. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Yeah, and hello, a prime squeeze spot in the eyes of Ivy's opponents when he raises here. Might not get credit for having a hand as strong as Queens when you see all the dead money out there, but just goes for the shove as well, which honestly, in my mind, looks a little bit weaker than if he went for the three bet non all in sizing. So this actually might get looked up. Tend to agree with you, Maria. And obviously, Elton is the man with the best kit or most likely kit, let's call it, in conjunction with the big stack that can afford to click call. Ivy started the hand with 28 big blinds. And maybe Sang's wondering, is this just a flip here? Does Ivy have ace king? Or does he even have some hands, you know, weaker than that, perhaps? Just because of all the dead money, you know, would a hand like, you know, ace jack also be shoving and those types of hands where saying feels comfortable that he's going to be flipping even though you know he's still taking a big flip but there might not be a better chance to get chips off of phil ivy call. looks like he does make the call you surprised by that uh, mm. no <laughs> i think saying because he has a big stack, felt like he can afford to potentially be wrong, but he thought that Hong most Kong of the times he was going to be looking at two overs. It's a nice hand, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was calling him if you were. Huh? Well, number eight in Asian yeah. culture is good know. luck, but there is not a third one available <laughs> on this flop. 10-9 <laughs> deuce, the queen's cozy for the time being. Mm -hmm. 
sweat. <laughs> and oh. there is some vulnerability as the gut shot straight draw added to the snowmen that Sang needs to hit to end Ivy's run. Oh, oh, oh my. my. Sorry, Phil. Here, Phil. <laughs> Phil brandishing a big smile there, but yeah, obviously. Some really shitty offsuit hand into. 10 2 or 10 3 10 off into. into 10 3 into Ace King, right? Into Ace King, yeah. <laughs> I said something goofy, too, when I got called. I was just like, yeah, I'm in pretty good shape here. And then just like immediately <laughs> 3. It's been, a, it's been a good year for Isaac. No. 18. Tank. That was a dope. Uh, Open. You were Murray Williams. Sixes versus Kempton, and then you. That, that, that was, was an ass. We weren't all in yet. That was. <laughs> that ass ace King just <laughs> flats, and we saw Murray flat the big aces on multiple tournament. occasions yesterday. It was awesome. It feels like he. I hope it wasn't so awesome. Probably is just playing similar to a style that was working for him yellow. yesterday, but yeah. also maybe respecting ah, an under the gun opening range out of Tang. Like everything else, it's bad. And, and actually, Alex Livingston was really a great commentator, I thought. Oh. He, I usually, uh, like, I'm not saying, I just mean, like, his delivery. Like, I sometimes, you know, just want to watch it on mute. But like, I, from a broadcasting perspective. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he did a good job. Nikolai Vaskaboynikau yeah, joined the party yeah. as Tang flops spotting set. Coleman always says one of the things that, like, is important is just, like, just narrate the action. Yeah. To help yeah. people follow the action, don't let there be dead air. Like that's why whatever. We, when but I, like also like Nick saying like he doesn't try to like himself or like what he thinks about 36. that spot too much or whatever. Just kind of like say what's happening. It's like it doesn't need to be instructional. Content. It's like when you're watching have an opinion on every play. It's like some of the best golf announcers are like Tiger Woods. He's got 90 yards here. What's he gonna do? When I commented during the Cypress, the Lamine one, you I had, did, you did I'm that. torn between I get, narrating I the right action right. as these guys right. are suggesting you know, is a good idea for us to do. <laughs> instead of sulking, I will or listening to, or them listening and to their pointers. Notes. Exactly. You think it was your as Tang. That got you this time? No, I wanted. No, I mean, full of sevens on the turn. Here. I wanted to. Slow played it. I'm just saying, I wanted on the flop, like Murray took the bait. I did keep it like, hey. Yeah, well like done I'm doing so, out, you know, as he checks know, back whatever. on the also, turn and the board texture gets worse but for the ace king, or better, as the case may be. There's a chance he could just lose the minimum here, taking the check back line and not falling for Tang's checks. He's driving Yeah, exactly. Wow. Wow. And so is he's, he's and unbelievable. So is Davies always looking for a local course whenever we're at one of our Triton festivals. Listen, it's more enjoyable because you can also drink beer on the golf course. It's a lot harder to do that in ice hockey. And we know Nikki P loves a good beer. Emphasis on good beer. Bit of a refined palate when it comes to the barley and hops. The Trangelo. Choosing to limp the ace jack and flopping top pair here up against second pair. This is the kind of stuff we have in mind when we under rep these ace jacks. And from Hajiev's vantage point, Maria, this sort of stab looks like just a, a desperate attempt to take what feels like board texture that shouldn't see the big blinds check back range interested in continuing and buy a pot. So then, he calls, and a delightful turn for Petrangelo insofar as he's got the trip aces. Perceived delight for Hajiev, as now all of a sudden the queen nine looks a bit better even. Right, so it's going to be tough to get away from this hand on the turn. You know, perhaps some rivers Hajiev might be able to fold, but right now definitely going to be calling this bet. Thirty-five thousand. Oh. 
Georgiev does make the call. Now plays the king kicker on board as clubs come in, and this is a bit pesky given that Ramin unblocks. Yeah, this is the type of river card where I think quite often Georgiev might feel like this is the point where he's beat, whereas again, the flop turn fairly safe for his hand. But facing a third barrel, but of this sizing, you know, not big, not small, around half pot. Is that enticing for queen nine? Fifty-five thousand to be exact. I, t I do feel like when your opponent triples in this spot, though, especially when the clubs come in, it's very rarely going to be a bluff. So Hygiev does acknowledge that this is going to be Probably a donning that so scarf and all of now. And outside hand. of the fourth line, they've been fine, but the fourth line's just been getting caved in. Yeah, but they kind of need somebody to beat the shit out of people, right? Like, they kind of need him. Sam checking out of the combo temporarily as we interrupt cool. this episode of Hockey Talk for a King 5 small blind. That's what I had when I shoved into you last time. Wow. And Haxton I think waking up with a hands. 6. This is what Defending. Lucky. He's going to try to spin. <laughs> Total no you mean the cards or the guys? Just no respect <laughs> for money. 246k <laughs> pot and a five on board. Huh? Turn three of spades. How's that? Three straight. You have three of straight. Oh, okay. A lot of good stuff going on here. No. For Haxton. Yeah, three of spades. Four. That doesn't help. And the nine doesn't add any sweat to this one. It's an ace or a six alone that wow. will rescue Ooh. Ike, and there is I was thinking the paint. ace of diamonds. Nice. Justice, perhaps. The year of Ike. Yep. The year of the mask. You just tricked me with the safe turn, you know? Never a doubt for Ike. I mean, not to take anything away from the results that he's really put up. I never feel guilty again. I'm never going to feel guilty yeah, again for yeah. winning. <laughs> I was, I was not thinking any big thoughts about yeah, how I was, I'm going to spend my time for the next few no, years. No, I was, I, yeah, that's why I was thinking. <laughs> I was, you have kids? I was manifesting. Trangelo now. That was my fault. Mm, Pocket yeah. fours. That's greedy. And Ramin, ace, queen suited right behind him. 22 bigs certainly could just shove over this hijack open. <laughs> Haxton fresh Ooh. off his double up. 20? Just having Kaji have slightly covered. 217? No, those are fours. It's 250. One eighty, one ninety, two hundred. Indeed, jam as we saw him do with Ace two King five. earlier. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Sorry. It's two fifteen, uh, right? 215. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Yeah. Certainly, from this position, tens is seconds. looking like a good hand. Okay. Okay. Is it close or is it clear cut? Oh. I think it's clear cut against these so positions, I. but. You know, you're only mildly afraid of Petrangelo behind you, but he did open from the hijack. Relieved to see Nikki P yep. out of the way and relieved not to be up against an over pair to the tens, but a lot to fade here. He's Ike is the covering stack ever be so no slightly. Oh, really? Yeah, I cover. Yeah. I have 246. So we play for 480 and Hajiev's future. Five, seven, nine, ace and queen free. Ramin needs to pull the same rabbit out of the hat that Ike did here on this river. 
by hitting one of his overcards to the tens. Year yes. Nice. No yep. magic. Year of Ike. <laughs> it never Just like that. Ike is up to 51 bigs. And on the other side of that same coin, Ramin Hajiev is left. It's got to be in the police department. He lives in California, so all the way across the country. They say we found your watch. Oh. Apparently somebody got shot, a drug dealer got it or somehow. Holy shit. They say we're going to send it back to you. Can you prove the serial number? He gives the proof. They send it back to him with the same watch, but now it's completely covered in diamonds. Oh my God, that is so funny. <laughs> it was like, but it was so many diamonds. I'm way everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. How lucky is that? Oh, crazy. That's hilarious. <laughs> Story time oh, with really? Pamling there. The the you got, he got it uh, like the band tightened, so that was like too tight. Uh, too many diamonds. At least he got some diamonds. Yeah, that's, that's, really, really, that's really yeah. funny. Pamling just looks he's like a guy with good stories. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he for fun. I remember every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elton, kid looking like a guy who's got a dominant yeah. king no, in the big blind. Chooses to defend against the coon min raise open with king 10. Yes, on the, on the dot. That's amazing. Yeah. They able to sell those and both and players hit the king. Of course, yeah. Sang yeah. with the benefit much, like, of two pair, yeah, courtesy of that jack. Like, who, who wants that? Yeah. As yeah. trouble on the horizon, <laughs> potentially, for Kuhn. Yeah, a lot of the times Kuhn is just hoping that he's going to capture some value from inferior king X's and jack X's, plus all of that flush and straight possibility too, but not... And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 200,000 Invitational from here at Sporting Monte Carlo, part of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Season 3, 2023, second stop on the calendar, and already we are seeing some real casualties here on day two of this Invitational as we began with 50, and we are down to just 36. One of the stories, as we kind of revisit the top of the order here today during the show, was that of the invitees not performing quite as well as we would have expected in terms of occupying the top slots. And as I look down at the Triton Poker Plus app right now, Maria, I do see that it is fairly pro-heavy as you look down from 1st through 10th. Well, they were already at a disadvantage because we started the day with more pros, perhaps. So, you know, certainly some of them playing some of these big pots, accumulating big stacks, but... Andrew Pantling still staying up there, though, with his aggressive play and mm -hmm. somebody that all the pros will have to watch out for. Yeah, Elton saying up at the top, obviously, from the uh, invitee side of the uh, bracket, Pantling over in fifth. KCG, that's a guy to keep an eye on, also representing the invitees there. And then the rest of that top ten is all pro heavy. Now then, let's take a look at the two feature tables that we have on our hands. At the blue table, we find Dan Smith and company. Dan, one of the big stacks in the field. What stands out here? Well, I have to say that you always have to <laughs> be a little bit weary of the fact that you have Ike Haxon at your table. You know, he was super short in, I think, the first level and got pretty much back-to-back -back doubles to get to this point with a healthy stack. Okay, and at the red table, quickly, as we... Flip back to the app. Yeah, well, I have to say that, you know, a player like Orpin is always going to be dangerous. Somebody who is on the invitee side, but someone who doesn't play like he hasn't been here before. Yeah, no question about it. As we give you the first look at the chip counts at these two new feature tables, where Juan Pardo of Spain, 1.1 million, the only seven-figure stack on the semi-feature. Mario Mosbach, who we touched on, headed to the break. The boss stack over at the blue table just in front of Dan Smith. And you generally don't want to see four seven-figure stacks at your table when you've managed to work your way into one of those chip-leading stacks, Maria. It doesn't give you all of the benefits of big stack play in the way that it would if you didn't have company up at the top. 
When a, a total redraw occurs, obviously a bit of the luck comes in in terms of what table you get drawn to, what seat you're at. And so for sure on the chip distribution side, it's a little bit unlucky to have so many big stacks here. Yeah, obviously everybody taking a look at the app and just trying to see whether or not they've got table envy at this point as it is open season, the invitees and the pros have merged at this point. At the top of the day, we did our best in order to ensure 50-50 distribution at the tables, given the number of invitees and pros that remained. And so obviously some tables are going to be deemed a little bit more attractive than others. Patrick Antonius, one of the shortest stacks in the room right now. In fact, only Tony G is shorter. Small blind with this jack nine. <coughs> and he jams it. It is a calling hand. No, really? Oh, I got the yeah. jack, jack nine. <coughs> <laughs> Greenwood suited one gapper. Enough to give Patrick oh, a spin. And the stomp bubble of the tonic game. <laughs> Future of the fin too. hanging in the balance in a 264k pot, and he finds oh. a nine, but unfortunately Greenwood finds a ten. So, so what Patrick, what is, what is a good card? Yeah, just nine. Nine. the jack or a nine, nine for the time <laughs> being, but Queen's a good call. Actually. Maybe there's a sweat card in his future. Yeah, we want an ace and a king. I was saying, okay. yeah. six, not sweaty at all. Now it's five outs once for the Monaco resident. And that is a good game. game. A wrap of the rail. That was much easier than winning the All-Angle It didn't take strike. long for us to lose yeah, our first uh, player oh, thank you. here in the second <laughs> frame of play. Too soon. Day two action <laughs> yeah. from the 200K Triton yeah, Invitational. Uh, very good at all and it is deal. Patrick Antonius. Mm -hmm. Out of here. Yeah. King five off in the small blind. I just should have like made it like... We, he had 12 blinds, they just should have made it three and four with your job, you know? Probably. Yeah. <sighs> Pardo. Fifth in chips overall at present. Not going to play from under the gun with Jack Deuce. Chris Brewer, also one of the bigger stacks in the field at present. Eighth overall. Opens to 26,000. Now JNT with a couple of threes. Is going to three bet them from the cutoff all the way up to 85,000 as he takes a high variance approach. JNT always operating on his terms, and that's going to get through. Always nice not to be forced into taking a flop with the pocket threes. Looking at the Triton Poker Plus app, JNT's track record at Triton, not a bad one, Maria. He's got almost three million in career Triton earnings across two caches. The lion's share of it, of course, coming courtesy of a second place finish in London at our last festival, the first of this third season of the Triton Super High Roller Series in the 125K main event, earning 2.8 million plus. Paul. Yeah. 24. Danny played a million? 24. Ike didn't play the mill game. Okay, well, Paul's played that one. Paul's the same. Paul and Richard are the. I mean, Jason. Paul, Richard, and Jason, yeah. Nick? Like, on, on the pro side, that must be Has many Nick people. ever missed one? I don't think so. Stevie probably didn't want to miss Yeah, yeah. Greenwood. Opening with King-5 suited from the button, and Juan Pardo with the Queen-9 offsuit will defend his big. 
Always a little dicey when we go up against these big stacks. And on this occasion, a double gutter for Pardo on the 10-8-6 board. Yeah, Greenwood probably not loving this flop. Not only, you know, the middling cards can easily connect with the big blind range, but also no backdoor flush possibilities for Greenwood either. Seabet. Out of Sam, 27K. Yeah, it feels like one of those one and done scenarios where if you get called or if you face any resistance, you're just done with it. Pardo certainly can elect to go one of two ways with this hand. Could go for the raise, could go for the call. You know, does have a nice candidate for both, but certainly continuing. Deuce on the turn, not what he had in mind as he checks a second time. And there's going to be a lot of, you know, pair and straight draw combinations, you know, two pairs as well. You know, some of the drawing type hands, of course, contain diamonds, some 9x, some 7x. But a lot of Pardo's range here usually going to play quite well. Greenwood checking back and his king high holding on, but the check back could entice Pardo with really no showdown value to activate here with 120k in the middle. Yeah, especially if Pardo's going to put Greenwood on some ace high, king high type pants to check back that turn. You know, granted, a lot of the draws from the flop did miss in terms of the straight and the flush draws, okay. but. Pardo betting here, trying to shake off the king high, the ace highs. Only going for a third pot, which, you know, definitely leaves a lot of those one pair hands in his value range. You know, an 8x, a 6x could easily go this size for value. And it gets through, so nicely timed there as the King-5 really can do nothing other than release 40K. Enough to get the job done for Pardon. That'll put him up into second in chips as we flip over and find Haxton with an ace-king getting raised by this double gutter on the turn for Mikhailai Vaskaboynikau who was the opener to 25,000. Haxton from the button, three bet to 64. Mikolai made the call. Jack-Jack nine board. It was a check call of 26,000 by Mikolai. And here the check raise, which gets called by Ike. A non-believer with the ace-king, and now he hits an ace on the river. Quite a comforting sight. But the story being told by the Belarusian is, I've got a jack, and we'll... You keep up that story. I haven't seen too much of McLai play, but does kind of feel like a good spot perhaps to find the give up, especially against Ike. <coughs> Well, he's only played two prior events on the Triton Super High Roller Series. That was back in May on the island of Cyprus. He finished ninth in the 75K 8 max for 182,000 and change. Played the 200K Luxon Pay Invitational, but failed to cash in that one. This is his third ever Triton event. And he does wave the white flag with the check over to Haxton. Let's see whether or not Ike removes Jack X from the equation and tries to pursue value. Uh, 
And he does go for value. 300,000, 200,000 rather, the bet. Now went pretty big on the end, but just was up against, just, just was up against a hand that isn't um, able to call. And now we flip it back over where Richard Young taking what looks like is that the rest of his chips in total? Up against Tony G, the short stack, so he had to have been covering here. Open jammed. Tony G made the call, and it was pocket eights against ace five. It appears that Tony got showered there. Meanwhile, KCG being pulled elsewhere. Has Mikolai off of a shorter stack than he had moments the ago. Split, <laughs> <laughs> Given a King Jack I suited. So. <laughs> I thought fake, I thought Jack. I thought fake too. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the so one to make it look Jams it in. Very confused. 16 I, I, I big really blind shove from under the gun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Certainly has to be a pretty strong range, so not going to get it's looked up light. Oh, Haxton with the goods. Pocket queens in the cutoff. Doesn't feel like he needs to ISO here against a 16 big blind shove. He could just Simply call most of the other players. Probably not going to get involved for that many bigs. Wow. And that does hold true as Haxton. Somebody had the king. <laughs> not me. It's the only mm -hmm. customer. Nikolai soliciting some intel. Trying to find out if all the kings are alive and well. As he's going to need to welcome one of them to this board for the time being. To nose in front of the queens. And... Not home on a 9-4 tray board. <laughs> Not available on the turn either, and that brings Mikolai to his feet. Can he hit the three-outer? No, <laughs> as instead a two-ball in the corner pocket for Haxton. Didn't need it, of course. Set of queens, officially, <laughs> bringing Vaiska Boynik, Boynikow's experience here in the 200K Invitational to a close. Audio yeah, man, tracking him down. Yeah. You don't get to keep the mic, sir. Yeah, maybe Nikolai just hasn't played on too many feature tables and wasn't aware that, you know, this is how it's done he here. Shot, though, does he win, Ike? No. Was the King Jack suited a bit too light for 192? I mean, I think it's okay to shove. I think also you can elect to just min raise pre and play post. Wow. Surprised you called that. That's quick. It's a very small raise. Min raise. It just felt like you had the nuts, right? I mean, I don't know. He's very smart. It was an accident. You know? I thought it was an accident. I thought so too. I don't know. It's so funny how people watch the so same hard. thing, and I yeah. was like, yeah. well, definitely you? on purpose. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my read, too, to be honest. <laughs> Ike just falling right. Oh, he wins. <laughs> Ike just got balled by his ace king. <laughs> oh, we all thought it was. Oh. Ace king suited now for Mario Mosbach, one of the big stacks in the room, fourth overall at present, off of 1.2. Only a raise by like one thousand. in for 25. <laughs> it's been slightly bigger. It's, it's got ace 10 there. in a bad 90, way. You need to be 95,000 in order for it to be raised. Cut off versus yeah. button, though. I think Dan certainly yeah. considering coming along. Gave him the credit for three time banks to get the math right. <laughs> I was definitely considering <laughs> that. <laughs> he spent three time banks on his four white chips a raise. <laughs> Derek Haney. Out of the big blind, joining the party here, and Smith out flopping the ace king after flatting pre. And 
when Smith flats from the button, certainly he can have a lot of these, you know, 10x holdings, the jack 10 suited, queen 10 suited, perhaps 10 nine suited. And sometimes we'll have pairs that make sets as well. And also just other pairs where they feel pretty comfortable with this board. So you see Mosbach giving up the betting lead because of that. And facing a 27K barrel, Haney easily out of the way. Now, I got to wonder where an Austrian finds an Arkansas football jersey, <laughs> Maria, but apparently he's a fan of the Razorbacks. Deeply out of place <gasps> attire, I have yeah. to say. You know, Monaco's not the first place I would think of when I feel like I would see a jersey mm -hmm. like that. And the turn, giving the Arkansas man the diamond draw that he sought. Does check nevertheless as Dan shoots him a quick look. Yeah, that backdoor flush possibility was certain, certainly one that he considered when he called that flop. You know, would have been happy, of course, with an ace or a king. But this gives him a little more reason to continue. Dan now putting in that second barrel, trying to capture value, of course, from perhaps a hand like nines or sevens. Of course, these backdoor flush draw also a possibility. You know, hands like Queen Jack suited, very much going to be in there as well. Five Check call of 100K, adding another 200,000 into the middle. And that was a threatening red queen there on the end, but not the diamond that Mario needed. And the way that Mosbach has played this hand, it, yeah, it just feels like he is not going to come out with any kind of funny leads on the river, really. Just hoping to somehow win at showdown, but a bit of a give up once he doesn't connect on the river. Smith mulled over. The prospects of maybe getting a bit greedy with the ace 10 on the end, but takes the safe path with a check back and deflating to be shown the ace 10 as a winner. What's action DJ for Derek Haney? Well, that's not an action hand pocket aces though <laughs> that's coupled with the shirt. As we flip it back over to where we find the last of the action for Tony G, if he cannot improve. Still pre-flop here. He's jammed for 23,000. Busso out of the small blind, three bets to 68,000. And then Seidel out of the big blind. Hasn't let it go yet. He's re-raised it now to 200,000. So, Busso out of the way. That allows Seidel to collect some spoils on the side and Tony G instantly on his feet as he's shown an ace king, which has his ace 10 smothered. Ace did show up on the turn, and the 10 that was needed, unavailable. As Tony G 
Finds the exit. I thought he was showered earlier, but he actually was the covering stack against Richard Young, who doubled through him, ace five against those two eights. Stand corrected. But yet another one bites the dust as we are down to just 33. 13 spots pay, so still quite a bit away from the money. Definitely a few stacks in the field that have some work to do. Pocket fives for Pantling. He doesn't need a hand as good as that to open a pot. And you know his V-pip has a lot to do with why you see three bets coming in with hands like A6 from the button from Derek Haney. But the problem is that this is a sticky customer. And now Pantling just oh my brute force four bet there. What? Blasting through Haney. I mean, does he have x-ray vision or how does he just always know where he's at? It's a good question, Maria. Or, you know, he just has one gear, and so far it's been working out for him. Could be a bit of that as well. Pantling has really looked oh. remarkably solid and comfortable out there. I mean, for a man who doesn't really play a whole lot of tournaments, mm -hmm. it's actually surprising how comfortable he seems. Obviously the benefit of a fourth place stack overall of, of one and a quarter million plus doesn't hurt. Meanwhile, boss Paul Pua awaiting Haxton's response to this button open with Queen Jack. And the King-10 pushes back to 85K. Paul knew what he wanted to do. You know, I'd love to see a side-by-side -side of Mario and Yuri Zivleski because I feel like that's a strong contender for best hair right there. Yuri sort of is the reigning champ when it comes to fashion and hair on the Triton series. Mario, you know, easy on the eyes, I suppose, is the way to describe it. Comfortable enough to make that assessment. <laughs> oh. The Arkansas jersey does yeah, really need to be explored. Like, what's the explanation there, though? Because Yuri would never be caught dead oh, no. in an Arkansas Razorbacks jersey. Yuri would be here with some incredibly well-tailored pants. Maybe a, a polo with a little blazer. Yuri's the kind of guy that looks like he mixes a mean old-fashioned. You know what I mean? Like, if you walk up to him and ask for just a, a nice craft cocktail, he looks like he's got you, you know? Yeah. Like a, an heirloom caipirinha. Right. Seems like something he can get, get down with for you. you know? Yeah, and, and the type with some type of bespoke beard grooming kit <laughs> oh beard yeah. oil yeah no i mean never mind tournament buy-ins he also factors into his annual budget grooming products so it adds up <laughs> meanwhile mosbach taking that one how about that shot through the lights trippy i like that i make that impression that i also could be just here for fun yeah <laughs> Arkansas. That's, that gave it yeah, away? I thought maybe you were a football player. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, he is a football oh. player, just <laughs> European football, not American. Oh. Oh. Producer James <laughs> stepping in to just call it football. It's not wrong. Rest of the world. King six suited now for Smith. Second floor. No, 
Just a limp from the small blind. And Pantling wagging his finger at that. You can understand the desire to limp with a hand that warrants being played as opposed to raising and giving Pantling a chance to pounce on you for a three bet. Absolutely. Against a player as aggressive as Pantling, especially when you're out of position where, you know, you have a hand like Smith's, you want to see a flop. Limping is always a good play there because it ensures that you'll still get to, get to see a flop for fairly cheap. And what a flop it is yeah. as both players are all over it. Top pair for Smith. Second pair on the open ender for Pantling, along with the lead in position, coming together for a 27K C bet. And normally, you're not going to put too many hands in Pantling's range as the preflop aggressor that's going to connect this well with this type of board. But with Pantling, you never know. So You really don't. <laughs> Another 54,000 into the middle, courtesy of the check call from Smith. And the turn, giving him kings up. And this is where Pantling's aggression can get him into trouble, Maria, as he is reaching for chips and blasting. 63,000. Reasonable sizing. But when Smith limps pre-flop, calls the raise, and then limp calls this flop, you do have to give some credit to what it is that he's proceeding with, and the 4-5 could maybe afford to check back. Yeah, but I think maybe Pantling is feeling like that turn card is going to be a perceived good card for him. So maybe trying to fold out some 6-Xs because at the moment his pair of fours doesn't quite beat that. Probably not necessarily going to put Smith on a lot of the king six type two pair hands unless they were suited. You know, some of the weaker king X's, Smith would have probably limp folded against a raise pre. And for Smith, you know, it's about if he wants to put in a raise here or just continue to call. And it looks like he is going to raise pretty substantial 4X here. Indeed. And this is why Pantling might be regretting not checking that turn because does he want to call this much more in order to see the river and try to realize that equity he has with the open ender? But hey, Pantling lives for a big pot. That he does. River card. Doesn't help the 4-5 as Pantling making the call, bringing this thing up to 626,000. And I think Smith very cozy with Kings up on this river. He is actually the covering stack. Yeah, some of the combo draws missed, you know, perhaps the straight draw with the backdoor flush draw. Smith wondering how big he could go here on the river. We get our answer. 415,000, and of course, that's a lot of weight on the back of a pair of fours. It would be almost half of Pantling's remaining stack to call. And he blocks the straight, but he, you know, might not feel that comfortable considering, of course, Smith limp called here. He could have some sets here as well that he would play this way. And a huge pot going Smith's way. Yeah, as ultimately Pantling correctly finds the muck. Welcome change. And taking that river card cost him far more than it would have had he checked back, but 
Live by the sword, die by the sword, Maria. And it's far from death for Andrew Pantling, although it is a fairly deep blow to his stack as Dan Smith ascending now into third overall. 1.3 million plus in front of him. Flipping it back over to where it looks like Nick Petrangelo has placed his hopes on King Queen off suit for his remaining stack. Jamming over the top of an open from Norway's Kent Stahl, who called with Ace-10 and board of Ace-Ace, 3-9 Jack, making it official. Petrangelo drawing dead on the turn and another victim here on day two. Who's your partner? Alex. Shelukin. Alexander. Back over to the feature. Oh, Shelukin. Yeah. Russian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It plays okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Really solid. Paul Pua inquiring as to who Mario Mosbach's partner is. Alexander Shelukin of Russian, who's also looked impressive on the occasions on which we've seen him in action. This guy online. It would appear that Tim Adams has been collared into the eight seat. Well, Good time for us to take an opportunity to remind you that right around the corner is oh so much on offer from GG Poker. So many circling their calendars for a trip over to the Bahamas for a World Series of Poker circuit event. And of course, so much else taking place under the GG umbrella. Satellites running now to make your way over to the Bahamas. Not to mention the Bounty Hunter series and the Flip and Go Millionaire. Head on over to GG Poker for more deets. Checking in on the chip count, Swan Pardo, 130 big blinds deep. Good for third overall. KCG and JNT up toward the upper part of that leaderboard. A big difference. Of course, as the dividing line is behind Chape Gatien with the big drop off to JNT. And if people weren't too familiar with Juan Pardo before the London stop, I think the fold heard around the world or seen around the world has really put Pardo on a lot of people's radar. Well, there's the man that had everything to do with that fold, Maria. Jean-Noël Torel, who's genuinely innocent out of turn Mm -hmm. Declaration of an all-in is what opened the door for Pardo <coughs> to lay down King's pre-flop. Such an incredible spot that was. And it must be said that it was a costly one for Stephen Chidwick, who ended up a customer for JNT. <coughs> And here is Dorel with King Queen off suit. Hijack versus cutoff, courtesy of a flat from Orpin. That is a flop that favors one of these hands far more than the other. Top two for JNT, dust for Orpin. Yeah, you wonder if with the two undercards, Orban is still willing to pursue the backdoor possibilities. Doesn't cost, seem like yeah, it. Yeah, it would have cost 15K for him to pursue that. <laughs> he does let it go as JNT gives him a free peek. I had a bad run.
KCG has a complicated relationship with buttons. <laughs> Maria, at each and every stop, you know, the sex symbol index goes up higher and higher <laughs> on him. Pocket jacks for Orpin. Takes us upstairs to 26,000. Another king queen for Buso suited. And it's into the bin. And I think we've got our verdict, Maria, as you shake your head with respect to just how snug Buso is approaching things. Yeah, and you certainly have to be careful because once your opponents start picking up on that, they will find ways to exploit it. And if you're not mixing it up, then it gets to the territory where you're going to be predictable and you never want to be a predictable poker player. Oh, that is generally a costly approach and costly is one way to describe the future for unimproved tens as Igor Yaroshevsky of Ukraine, three betting to 90,000. And Orpin <coughs> jamming over the top, Igor covered Snap calling, and we're going to play for 726,000. And the straights are dire for Igor. He knows it. As he scoots back away from the table here. In need of help. And that help is unavailable thus far, though the seven and the nine do present some backdoor straight options. Those hopes are dashed, and it is a lone 10 that will rescue Igor from elimination. And it isn't there. Good looks issued by Yaroshevsky. He is quietly done away with. I hurt on behalf of these guys. A $200,000 buy-in, possible 400K investment on the line, and it just ends unceremoniously. You're left with your loot bag and a walk out the door. Yeah, well, luckily, this is just one of many tournaments of the series. So granted, you know, you're already stuck, but you certainly have plenty of opportunities to win it back. Well, Seidel with a lot of opportunities here. And there's one of them on the turn as he and Pantling squaring off. Seidel, a new arrival to this table, making the flush on this turn. Pantling having picked up an open ender without a club in hand, follows through as he was the button opener to 24,000. Seidel flatted, check called 30K on the King Deuce Deuce board with the flush draw. It comes in and now he faces a 62K second barrel from Pantling. Yeah, well, slowing down is just not in Pantling's vocabulary. But good time to give up here on the river. Showing some restraint there. There yeah. is method to his mayhem, Maria. And also, you know, was a lot more comfortable with a bigger stack before that confrontation against Smith. So certainly going to have to rein it in a little bit now. Meanwhile, we've got another one on our hands. Elsewhere, Danny Tang and Ben Heath. Looks like pocket kings for Tang, pocket deuces for Ben Heath, one of which makes an appearance on the turn. So how about that for Ben Heath as he jammed from the button for his last 99,000 over the top of the Danny Tang open and finds a needed duckling for the double. Now then. Back at our feature. A couple of 9Xs. Advantage Mosbach squaring off. Derek the defender flops the gut shot straight draw on the paired two heart King King 10 board. Mm -hmm. 
How long have you lived in Oak Ball? Uh, about five years. Okay. Did you like it? You know that whole teacher situation with the giant 13,000? You know that whole thing? No. Derek's check, drawing a follow through barrel of 13,000 from Mosbach, who opened to 25 pre. Primary school is like right next to that. Oh, I, I've been heard in the story. Yeah, you'd have to do the story, Eric. Okay. What school do they go to? Oh, yeah, yeah sorry about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, there's a controversy. Controversy. How about a Queen of Spades on the turn? The reward for hanging tough for Derek Haney. Oh shit, okay. Osbach, I mean, let's pick yeah. up a Broadway gutter. Not dead. Yeah, but aside from, you know, that flush draw, Haney should have quite a bit of value when he continues on the flop and that turn card comes in. Trip King's obviously not out of the question. You know, if he bets here, as we see Mosbach reaching for chips. He's really trying to target the 10 X's. You know, those types of hands aren't gonna be able to continue very comfortably with this board. Yeah, but Jack Nine will be feeling quite all right about a continue as we see Derek just check calling. Two-tone texture, paired flop, range advantage for Mosbach. Understandable. Cautious approach. Like teacher by profession, so. Yeah, as a Backdoor tax spades arrive. Well, yeah, another. Rosbach um, lacking a spade. Eventually, I'll have to become likely a resident there, but hopefully, I won't be playing as much poker by then. So at this point, you wonder, you know, does Mosbach feel like Haney's continue on the turn signifies enough strength where a river barrel's not going to get it done? Mosbach. Blocking hands like ace jack, obviously ace king, but again, a lot of king x's could defend from the big blind. Do trips raise the turn? Third and final check from Haney. As we await Mosbach. Will he throw in the towel? Well, Mario's going to be glad that he gave up there. Looks like he had thought about it, but decided not to. And suppose that's going to be slightly also disappointing to Haney. Yeah, Early did his too. Yeah, no, they're great. They're great cities to like. But unclear now how he was going to feel about that Jack Nine in the face of, of maybe to grew up in Burlington, a big bet. Then moved to Toronto, and now they're back to Burlington. Oh, yeah. It's hard to get. I mean, just for you know regular people, it's hard to getting back and to Burlington, Oakville, whatever. It's pretty pricey. And crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like one of my best friends got back into Burlington. I was super happy for him because people, a lot of people are priced out, right? Um, nice yeah, if, your, if your income's 100k, you're Canadian. Mm -hmm. It's family income. You, I think you qualify for a 400k mortgage. Yeah. I mean, you can't even get, you can get you know, I mean, someone's like, garage for that. Yeah. Hey, 26 so like, it's gonna be really hard. Yeah. Unless you have family money or you yeah. know, a great job. Yeah, I have a few, I have a, a place in Burlington. He's suited for Haxton. And like apartments. Like rentals for students? Rent, yeah, well, they're just like, um, the ones in Hamilton are by the hospital. Okay. I think King three and off suit from the big blind like might be a little too weak to defend against an under the gun like open. Den right. I think, but uh, that's why when you brought up the real estate stuff, I'm yeah. interested in what you're well, But even then, like uh, you could calculate whatever you're renting it for, mm -hmm. the value of the property. Yeah. Figure out what your rental yield is, and you're better off putting your money into GIC. Right. Yeah. So like I don't know why anyone's buying the rent. You're losing. Yeah. Unless the market goes up, but I mean, you think the market's going to go up more? I mean, I, I don't know. That's why. That's What's why. The GIC. The GIC is the equivalent of um, we call it America, like a government bond. Okay. IRA. IRA. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Not financial <coughs> advice, five, guys. In We're just no listening risk. in. I don't know. I'm listening pretty intently, I mean, Maria. Before you think, Holly, huh? you need financial advice. Relax. Okay. I'm clicking buttons. I mean, I've hired someone to 
do that for me. <laughs> Pocket eights for Smith up front. Deep stack, 27 to skate. Side down with at least a queen. And probably a good side card to go with it. Yeah, with the prices now, I mean, I'm just I'm not sure. I guess uh, I'm not paying enough attention as well. <coughs> Joins the fun with a 5-6. Price is right from the big. Three ways to the 99K pot. King 9-8, bottom set for Smith. And Dan checking it over to Eric, who pretty quickly checks. Yeah, so it must be nice to be home, and you, you like to leave, or do you not? Yeah, yeah. Three on the turn. It's right. Yeah. It's a family tradition. Yeah. Pretty wet Just board nice. for the bottom every, set every to choose yeah. to check Maria, but. Maybe yeah. just ranging Seidel onto something that would be more inclined to fire at that board. Smith trying to trap Haxton in between, potentially, or get a check raise in. Yeah, you think that some of the Broadway straight type possibilities would maybe bet, you know, Queen 10, Queen Jack, you know, and also Seidel could have a hand like King Queen, King Jack suited, King 10 suited, but... Now Smith comes out firing. And Seidel just completely uninterested with the quick fold. Yeah, dry turn makes it an easy proposition. All parties. Smith continuing to work his way up now, nipping on the heels of Elton Sang, as he is just about 40K shy of Elton's chip lead now. over to where it would appear Alexander Shelokin was the caller in between along with Kent Stahl the Haralabos Vulgaris open and then the Ferdinand Putra jam behind so the Vulgaris 26k came from up front Shelokin and Stahl both flatted then Putra jamming from the small blind Garris giving Putra a spin. Ace 10 for Putra, ace king for Volgaris. And the board. 8 7 4 with a king on the turn that would leave Ferdinand drawing dead. Never shy of a smile, though, despite being eliminated as the field continues to whittle away. How did you like Arkansas? I love it. You love it. <laughs> it's really nice. I'm uh, Mendes from Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. I mean, 30 players now. Really nice oh, well, that place. makes sense yeah. now. Very nice. Very nice corner. His girlfriend yeah. is from Arkansas. Uh, Otherwise, no, I would have been like, oh, this man's never been to Arkansas before. Oh, okay. He's just wearing oh. the jersey. Um, you visited Arkansas? Yes. Oh, okay. It's been there like once or twice a year. And yeah, it's cool. Oh, cool. It's actually really nice. It's what part? Definite uh, northwest. Okay. Like feel real bad. Yeah. You know, I would have lost a lot of money I, on a bet it, like, with respect to an over-under <laughs> on number of times Mario yeah, Masbach like had visited great. Arkansas yeah, prior really to the Jersey situation, and maybe even after it. You have about a million there right there. He said he goes a couple of times a right. year northwest part of the state. Not sure how much our international audience knows about the state of Arkansas. Doesn't really have a reputation as being among the finest on offer in the U.S. Yeah, I've but never been either. I think my grandmother I mean, I'm American and I don't know anything about Arkansas. What is there to know? Pocket sevens for Seidel. 
pipped by Haxton, who flats with eights. 138. Not surprising to see Mario squeeze with a hand like King Queen suited and Smith with ace jack offsuit in the big blind. <coughs> Might have been attractive for a flat behind Mario. Maybe even a squeeze candidate. But now looks far more dicey. I mean, both Eric and Ike deep enough where they can certainly call with their pairs. Oh. Well, with Eric calling it, actually blocked Ike from continuing as well. So the sevens usefully dispatching the eights by being first into the pot as a caller. But now on a queen high board, they are behind Mosbach, who flops top pair. That said, Eric, the only party with a flush draw. Mosbach has to give Eric credit for having a pretty strong range here, given the fact that he opened from under the gun plus one and called that three bet from Mario. You know, an even top pair is still vulnerable, of course, with all red cards out there. And Mario doesn't have one in his hand. It's a pretty natural continue for Eric with the seven of hearts. So the pot grows even further to 457,000. Dry turn. And the sevens don't have to be no good here. Mosbach could certainly have ace-x, ace of hearts. Yeah, and it was just an attractive three-bet spot pre in general. So Mario doesn't have to only have value, of course, in this situation. And Mario, now I'm going to check. You know, would be very uncomfortable if Mario bet again on the turn and got raised. So this hand right now plays better as a check call. He agrees. And a pesky river for King Queen. Although as the preflop three better, may feel as though that's his card. But he also has enough showdown, I think, where perhaps bluff catching is a much better option. It's not really a hand where he is looking to turn it into a bluff. And if he bets here, maybe not sure if he could get called by worse very often. And for Seidel, I don't know how much showdown value he feels like his sevens really have, but doesn't feel like he's gonna a he's gonna be able to successfully bluff Mario. <laughs> So it does get knuckled down on the end and a healthy infusion of chips going to Mosbach. Had slipped down Mario, yeah, we explained to, to ninth before overall that before that exchange with Seidel. Her sister, her fiance is from Arkansas. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's so super random. Flipping it over to one in progress. Elsewhere at our features, four spade board here where queens and jacks actually are the best hand against jacks and tens and tens and threes, respectively. Knuckled around on the river. This was no action ending. 144K pot. With that, we'll take the chip count. Juan Pardo taking that one, working his way up to 1.6 million. ACG still behind him. Only other seven figure stack here. JMT, meanwhile, has slipped down to the shortest of stacks there. 
got company in the form of Tim Busso toward the bottom of that leaderboard. Those chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu. So let's get in there with the ace four suited. No. Late position does not open. And if the pros are paying attention to the streams, Maria, as I see you puckering your lips over here, they're definitely going to be logging just how tight Busso is. When he opens pots, I assume that they're going to have to have a very narrow range to want to enter behind him. And if they do find themselves up against him, they're going to feel as though maybe there are opportunities to bluff. You just don't want to put yourself in a position where you're going to get exploited. And I think that, you know, the more info players get on Busso, the more easily they're going to be able to have a counter strategy that's going to target the type of game that he's been playing so far. Five seconds. Greenwood's suited connector as company out of Pardo's small blind. Check. Ooh. Check. Eight, seven, three, two spade board. Brewer came along as well, flopping bottom pair here. Two checks in front of Greenwood. Open-ended with the flush draw. Sixty-two percent equity for Greenwood. Pretty natural spot to put more chips. Don't even really mind getting called. You've got a couple shots to make your hand. You're in position. You're up against what's usually going to be a pretty weak range in the big. Two checks in front of Sam, and his bet does get it down to heads up as only Brewer. Stuck around to take an ace on the turn. Feels like a nice spot for Sam to continue to barrel, doesn't it? Yeah, you're going to have plenty of ace X's. You can easily have ace X of spades in this spot. You definitely want to try to target a lot of the one pair hands <coughs> that Brewer has in this situation. But with that check back on the turn and this particular run out, maybe it's less about representing trips for Greenwood and more about if he can maybe rep a hand like <coughs> nines, tens. Yeah, a pair between the eight and the ace. Not a given though that the check back on the turn doesn't contain an ace with some frequency. Maria, you know, obviously there's some equity denial to be pursued with the two-tone texture, but conversely, you don't want to get check raised off of a fairly weak ace. So with this third and final check <coughs> from Brewer in front of him and no showdown value whatsoever, one could certainly foresee Sam credibly barreling. And, you know, I feel like it's a well known among commentators that very often the check, the bet check bet line doesn't contain a lot of bluffs, <laughs> but this one happens to be one, but maybe just the frequency of this being value might end up getting through, but Brewer gonna think about it. You know, even 8Xs could play this way. Of course, Greenwood opening from the button. Can I say one more, please? <laughs> Brewer going to look him up. Yeah, Chris clicking call correctly as Greenwood asks for an ocean card. Too many outs. 
And a nice call there from Chris. No fail. <laughs> the six was good, the five was good. Should just gone all in on the flop. <laughs> By the way, they almost got me a full 1k out here. They switched this clock to the 50k. What was that? They switched the big screen to the 50k. Okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a 10. Okay. 10, 15, 15. Let's talk about Brewer for a moment, shall we? Given spotlights on him at present, 4.3 million in career Triton earnings, two titles, 16 caches. His last two events, <coughs> final tabled them both, 30K short deck and the 60K short deck in London. Also final tabled the 25K 7 max and the 200K 8 max. So it was a very fruitful festival for Chris, six caches in total. Listen, if anybody was wondering if they were on a bad run. Should they take some time off? I feel like Chris Brewer is the poster child for... 30,000? Yeah, he's 30,000. You know, good things can happen when you step away from the game for a little bit, come back to it. He's had such an incredible run as of late, but had notoriously ran really bad in very high equity spots mm -hmm. for a while. It was painful <laughs> to watch. Yes. Greenwood is right back at it from the cutoff here. His Queen-10 dominated by KCG's King-10. And as though KCG knows it, pushes promptly back on Sam, who <coughs> concedes. Losing back-to-back -back pots now. Quiet bunch here at this feature. Although we are starting to get more toward the business end of this event. Midway through day two here in this $200,000 Triton Invitational, the leadoff event of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Monte Carlo stop, the second here in the season three of our tour. The room, though, is looking pretty full and busy as there is the 50K turbo bounty Three, being played. Yeah, things filling in nicely. Can we get this clock changed back? I can't see that one. Well, I'm, I'm in this seat, so I can only see that one. Yeah. So I, guess I, I guess those are the small ones. I can't see it. JNT and Pardo squaring off here. Big blind defense with 7-5 turns into two pair, which is more than we can say for the ace-10 of Pardo. Boss stack and position, though, and Juan doesn't waste any time. <coughs> Sprinkling 25 out there on the heels of the 35K open. Paired boards never too bad for ace high and pretty standard continue coming from Pardo, but what you're not going to get is the rel just calling here with nines and fives, immediately being aggressive and denying that overcard equity for Juan Pardo. Yeah, JNT <coughs> might have thought would be a bit gun shy given that his stack has thinned out considerably. But not the case. But I want to take a moment to remind those of you who are streaming us live here, whether it be on Twitch, Triton Poker Plus app, on YouTube, to help us continue to deliver the finest in streaming entertainment. YouTube in particular, hit like, hit subscribe. 35, help us get those numbers up. Buso. That's all we ask. V pipping here. <laughs> yeah, pocket <coughs> nines. Good for the under the gun open. I feel like there's some pretty strong hands that would find the muck if anyone's been paying attention. Although Ace-10 out of the big, Maria, may not be one of them. 
Yeah, you can't really start folding ace-10 in the big blind. Even Debuso's under the gun open, but you might not even like it if you flop an ace, though. You might feel very strongly you could have kicker problems against how tight we've seen Buso play. And this spot actually does have two overs, though. 10-4 deuce, top pair for Orpin as he noses in front of Buso on the heels of the big blind defense, checking it over. Buso feeling like this board is not that bad for nines. <coughs> Certainly worth some protection. Orpin gonna find the check raise. But it's small, just 70K against the 30K bet from Buso. Makes it so enticing for him to come along. I kind of like the small sizing from Orban, though, because it suggests he realized that just a raise in and of itself is going to be respected by a wide variety. Even some of the stuff that has Ace-10 may be in a bit of trouble uh, of Buso's kit. And... It's an inexpensive way to kind of gain some insights maybe into where Busso is, although Tim does hang around and turn himself a spade draw. Yeah, well, technically against most players, when you go small on the check race sizing, you're going to get floated quite wide. But against a player like Busso, probably not floating as wide as he should in those spots. It's pretty clear that Busso has a type of hand that might feel vulnerable especially with this turn card, bringing the flush in. But just a third pot sizing from Orpin. Fucking Bryn's laugh. Represents 25% of Buso's remaining stack. Buso not going away. Might feel like if a spade were to fall on the river that the nine of spades in his hand would be good enough. Four on the end. And Orpin doesn't need to worry about a four being in Busso's range. Has progressively brought this pot up to 375k. About 60% or so pot back for Busso. But Orpin perhaps afraid that Busso could have some flushes here, could have some over pairs. Yeah, you kind of get it. I, th I was curious as to whether or not Orpin would maybe come with a block bet just to prevent Busso from activating in position and making this ace 10. Wonder if an overpair wasn't taking a passive line, but Busso does check back. And Morpin will be mildly relieved by that as he hauls it in. What's nice also about playing against a player that you find passive post is that you know that sometimes you'll get showdowns and you won't be put into tough spots there on the river as well. Once checked to. Nah, Flipping it back uh, over where we find Mosbach and Seidel. Locked up. Oh, something good. Up front. <laughs> but you would beat a block. Open from Mosbach to 33,000. Seidel flatted. Haxton came along from the big. Ace nine four two yeah, spade board turns into a three spade board. Straight after Mosbach. Check called 50K I'm not, I'm from Seidel's ace seven. His ace jack comfortably in front. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying, like, both players I mean, check the play turn. The now both like make trip aces on the end where a fourth spade rolls off. Exactly like you. Yeah, the presence of that fourth spade could feel yeah. a little bit uncomfortable. More so for the out of position player. So it 
does go knuckle knuckle on the end here. Note that Mosbach took the check call line on the flop with the ace jack against the Seidel flat. Something to kind of keep an eye on. Obviously respecting Eric with position. And maybe choosing to mix there sometimes between C betting or checking. Yeah, those ace jacks, you end up in murky water so often with that hand. And one way to kind of filter out some of the murk is to take lines such as that. Suited, cut off, opens. Oh. Mosbach defending from the big, queen six suited. Heads up to the king jack 10 board. So an open ender for Mosbach who checks it over. Top pair in the gut shot for Haney. Flings a quarter forward. And it's to be expected that Haney is going to see bet quite often on this board, but given the fact that he opened from late position, certainly doesn't really need to have as strong of a hand. Hi, can I order from you? Can I order peppermint tea? Mosbach. And do you have hit the straight on the turn juice? while Haney improves. But freshly squeezed or no? To a two-way straight no, draw and a flush draw to go with the best hand. This oh. is Derek Haney's first ever Triton event, and that is not the manner in which Haney wanted to improve as he goes from kings and the best hand to kings and nines and a loser. Mosbach with the king high straight. 135 in the middle. Haney tried to exercise some pot control with that check back on the turn. And you wonder what sizing does Mosbach want to go for if he chooses to lead here? It's not very often, you know, with the four liner here that he can expect to check and get Haney to bet unless Haney has it. And really, just a bluff catcher for this price, 35K, maybe just a side call. But wow, a very disciplined fold, just not even choosing to put in 35,000 mm -hmm. in case Mosbach has some random zero equity bluffs there. Any eight, any queen, all that would be needed to down the kings and nines, so... Snug yeah, muck there, and the correct one, it must be said, as we flip back over to Espen Jorstad, who is jamming over the top of a Nacho Barbero open. Barbero open to 32,000, and now Espen's jam. 400K plus. Nacho making the call here, Maria, and it is an ace-queen against... An ace four suited, trouble on the horizon for Jorstad. Both players making the ace, kicker issues. Six or a nine would lead to a chop, courtesy of that king on board, but instead, a swing and a miss on the river. And the defending World Series of Poker main event champion, not defending, yeah, forgive no longer. me, two years ago, <laughs> has been Jorstad. Out of here. Wow, Dan Weinman, that forgettable to you, huh? No, come on. Respect <laughs> on Dan Weinman's name. One of the better champions we've had at the World Series of Poker, should be said. Pantling, meanwhile, party starter, raising to 30,000. Both blinds along for the ride with deuces and jack four. 
the former of whom have turned uh, into bottom point. set on a jack three two sports. Smith problems with top pair and Pantling legit kit with the two tens following through for 50 into 105. And this is going to make it tough, I think, for Dan to call here with top pair because he does have Pantling to act behind him. Mario actually doing him a big favor taking this line. Obviously, a bit of wet texture. And maybe Mosbach doesn't really want company. Hoping to square off against Pantling alone. But, you know, Dan could wonder whether or not Mario isn't just targeting a very active stack in Pantling with the check raise. Not necessarily able to beat the jack four, but in the end, both Smith and Pantling find the fold and the deuces fail to get added value with bottom set, but a win is a win. Now, flipping it back over to where Adrian Mateos and Ben Heath are embroiled pre-flop. Mateos the covering stack with ace-queen. Heath has him pipped with ace-king. And an ace-high flop here, along with a king, putting Heath fairly comfortably in front. And the turn makes it official as the ace-queen draws dead. So a double for Ben Heath. Not the first time he's enjoyed that on the day. While back at the feature, Tim Adams in charge of Queen Jack. 30K the open. Axton, ace 10. Timothy started the hand with 19 bigs. Axton, can I give? Him a little respect. On level 60, it's be one hour game break. One hour and 55 minutes. We're gonna have a 60 minute game break. Once again, we're gonna have a couple retro 60 players remaining. Play down to the final Ace Jack. Too much to go away. Now. But also deemed not enough to three bed in this flat um, presenting Pantling with a, an opportunity right. in the big. Yeah, I think, you know, just want to tread carefully against right. 20 big blind open here with a hand like ace jack. But Pantling, of course, not somebody who again sees an opportunity and doesn't take it. He has certainly shown us that he always likes to amp up the aggression whenever he's presented with the chance to. And now Adams is going to have to fold. But what about Mario? You know, despite Pantling's image, it still ha looks pretty strong for Pantling to take this line against Timothy Adams op opening off of a 20 big blind stack. And <laughs> course a very big three bet yeah. at that the sizing obviously um, you just touch it and you can feel a big a dent in it oh that's a good bit to do with in addition just not being very good the queen jack <laughs> and the ace jack aren't interested in continuing it's gonna be a hard one to get there so while they're sent a new deck we flip it back over to where we find jason coon on his feet, and that means there will be no 10th title on the horizon here in the Invitational. Looks like he took King Jack up against Elton, jamming from the small blind over Elton's button open, and Sang had two aces, never any sweat for Kuhn, but no question, he's got 11 more events in his future to claw back 
whatever the What's that? damages were here in the Invitational. March on, absent Jason Kuhn as the field, down to just 28 players, 13 of whom will be paid five seven-figure scores. Biggest payout, 3.87 million. Min cash, 300 dimes. Mosbach, King Jack, cut off. Min raise, and <laughs> this is eerily similar to what just took place for Jason Kuhn against Elton Sang. Adams waking up in the big with aces. The thing is, the 17 big blinds is still quite a few, especially against a cutoff opening range that can consist of a lot of race folds. So I love that Timothy is going to just call here and slow play these aces from the big blind. Not a board texture that looks like it's going to be favoring Mosbach, 864. Nevertheless, Adams checking, hoping. Mosbach's got some kind of over pair and an interest in continuing. Yeah, granted, this isn't the best flop for Timothy maybe to get action, but you know, Timothy also just able to recognize pre-flop that there's just going to be so many race folds if Adams shows any aggression pre. And so was willing to take it to the streets and take his chances on perhaps his opponent able to connect in some way. But still, with that 10 rolling off on the turn, nothing much for Mario except for two overs. Did well to check back the flop. Too sharp. Not a 28, but a 27. <laughs> and now Adams delivering 60K. And that's enough of a payload to shed Mosbach. Not that he wanted Mario to click fold. Probably heard you and you reminded them. And whispers of one developing yeah, elsewhere in the room. I'm sure if we're going to be able to get over. Does everybody know how this works? No. Yeah, it's a good reminder for everyone. Okay, so from now on, all the tables are going to have And here is the aforementioned hand that brews. Mateos has jammed it in for 142,000. It looks like Danny Tang just flatted from the small blind. Now Ben Heath in the big. And Heath is going to jam over the top. This makes it awkward wow. for Tang, who was slow <gasps> playing. Pocket aces. Bates Ben into this jam with his pocket tens, it looks like. And this is an incredible spot for Tang. Mateos with just king, queen. He and Danny will play for the side. Heath in for the main. And the flop is queen, eight, six. Backdoor hearts and the queen working for Mateos. And on the turn, Ooh. we have a nine giving Heath two <sighs> paths to a straight. But the river's a queen. And Mateos will take down the side and the main. Wow. A scoop. As Ben Heath eliminated here in 28th. Three time banks well, ben did have a couple of double ups, yeah, yeah. but ultimately, Danny Tang's slow play there. 
leading to his demise as he jammed with those two tens. Well, if you're out there sweating Triton action, why not do so with a little bit of a vested interest? Poker Stake is the official staking partner of the Triton Super High Roller Series, allowing you to reap the rewards of big victories by taking a piece. All purchases are rake-free and transaction fee-free, and all winnings are guaranteed by Poker Stake. What more could you want? Head on over to PokerStake.com today and get yourself in on the action. On both tables, did they ever show both? Oh, thank you. Yes, we will go to the other table if there's a big hand. I think Dan they was can wondering because it's all produced afterwards, so time doesn't really matter. They, they cut scenes and all that stuff. It's already delayed, but I think it's happening in real time. I don't think they're going to like, slow down. Big operation for sure. Certainly been a lot of talk about just the production side of things today between commentators wondering, you know, if we're showing hands from outer tables. Yeah, you know, the players want to know. Yeah, they want to know what Ollie had for lunch today. No, they don't. They don't want to know that. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I know what you had for lunch yeah, today. Because you watched me eat it throughout the first four <laughs> hours of this broadcast while it was ice cold by the time I finished it off. Yeah, and you, you saved some bread for later as well. You know. Yeah, I'm just going to head out to the pigeons <laughs> maybe later. 7-3 <laughs> deuce, two spades, no pair anywhere. I mean, if they open the retractable roof in here, the pigeons could just simply fly right down to the bread. That's a good point. I wonder if there's a lot of seagulls out here by the by the shore. Maybe we would have some avian issues if we did pull the roof back. Weather hasn't been quite good enough for any of that. And Producer James <laughs> hungry. <laughs> we found a pigeon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Producer James promptly walking over to this bread. Is <laughs> truly a human goldfish of sorts. No, no full receptors. But, you know, second day in a row where he's eating bread without butter. So, or, you know, oil and balsamic is fine too, but I'm convinced it's serial killer behavior. Uneventful takedown here from Mosbach. I tend to agree with you, Maria. Certainly criminal profiling is needed <laughs> for producer James, who has committed what I believe is actually in the law books officially a crime in France and perhaps in Monaco as well, consuming their delightfully baked goods without their incredibly churned butter. Some of the best Some of on the, the best. planet. Oh. It just hits different, <laughs> this French butter. But of course, I do feel compelled to remind those of you who maybe are just now being introduced to the faceless wonder that is producer James, never on camera, but always in support of our outfit over here. He is British. And as such, really is of questionable culinary <laughs> provenance. Queen 10 for Mosbach. Nothing questionable about it. Suited one gapper. Big stack. Goes to work. But, of course, the ace-king will be heard from. Yeah, and just the right stack here. Four Adams. 18 big blinds. Going to go three bet, non all in sizing, but obviously committed here with this holding. One black, right? Yeah. The butter's really got chat going, by the way. They, <laughs> they know a little something about French butter. Seventy-two thousand in the face of these two red queens for boss, as this spot was mildly overshadowed by French butter briefly. And we'll see whether or not boss wants to butter this one up further. I feel like given Adam's stack size, 
This could very easily just be a shove here from Paul. He tends to agree. And you heard him say, oh, no, as Adams did find the call. Good news for Paul was always that he has the covering stack, and he's also got the best hand. 621K in the middle, and Adams needs to improve if he wants to proceed. And he's done so. An ace on the flop. Diamond works. Backdoor Broadway opportunities as well for the time being. And okay. There's that flush draw as the Queens now have company in terms of outs. Adams needs to fade. Can he do it? No. Ooh. He can't. And two running diamonds downing that ace king suited, which vaulted so far in front of those queens. And a big boost. Paul Fostak. Courtesy of the elimination of Tim Adams. Just awaiting the updated chip count on Paul. 14th overall right now, over 800,000 in front of him as we flip back once more in dizzying manner to elsewhere in the room. So this was an open from Seidel, a three bet from Murray Williams, a four bet from Seidel, a jam, and in the end, all the chips get forward with what looks like a classic pocket queens for Murray and ace king for Seidel. Doesn't this look familiar? Very same kit that led to Tim Adams' demise. Yeah, and last time there was a fun run out for the queens to win. We'll see what happens this time. No ace, no king on this board, and the queen serving as blockers to Broadway on a 9-10 jack. Flop, deuce on the turn is safe, and now Seidel, queen, king, or ace needed. Instead, it's a five. And it looks like Murray Williams has the covering stack from this vantage point. It is close. They're going to do a little accounting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's just You're like 25% of this. 8K man. more <laughs> no in front of Murray Williams. So that's going to be it for Eric Seidel. <laughs> now win, more all-ins. This it. time, the Turk, Orpen Kishichikoglu, drawing a line in the sand with 10-7 suited, up against a king-queen. Ace-10-deuce is the flop. Juan Pardo needs paint and oh. finds it. Nuts on the turn as the pair of 10s. We're in the lead ever so briefly. And that's going to do it for Kissa Chikoglu <laughs> as they are dropping like flies yeah. here midway through day two of this 200K Invitational. <laughs> Follow my master plan. Distract you. And still some short stacks out there in the midst, so certainly could still see a continuation of butts, bust outs happening. Could also see some continuations from Pantling here, who has raised Mosbach, bringing you up to speed. It was Mario who opened to 33,000. Pantling under rep these two tents in the cutoff in the form of a flat, as you see him being tricky. But on this 774 flop, Mario following through for 75,000. You saw the raise to 200, promptly called by the pocket queens. And Pantling has got himself in a bad way and is betting 180 into 500. Yeah, very dangerous for Pantling to feel like he's ahead with an overpair to the board. And again, with Pantling's image, you know, when you 
get hands like this, you want to try to extract value and you feel like you have the image to get called by worse very often. So you certainly don't want to miss out on betting these types of hands. But Mario. Check jamming. Yeah, I mean, and this is just such a tough spot for Pantling. You know, does Mario actually just have the top of his range here when he opens under the gun? Does he actually just have these big over pairs? And might be a little bit frustrating now for Pantling. Certainly hasn't been an easy day for him compared to yesterday. To his credit though, Maria, he did find the fold, which allows him to fight on, granted with far fewer chips than he had moments ago, as Mario now ascending into second on the leaderboard, where he found himself earlier north of two million in chips and nipping on the heels of Elton Sang, who continues to remain at the top of the overall leaderboard. So there is a look one last time at that grouping. The redraw is upon us. Blinds will be 10 and 15,000 with the 15K Annie when we come back from the break. Those chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak. And as we head to that break, we're going to bring you back to the desk. Yours truly, Ali Najad, alongside Maria Ho. Action packed day here in the $200,000 Triton Invitational. And for you, Maria, what were the takeaways in that frame? Just how many bust outs there were, but due to coolers, not necessarily people pushing the action, but really it seemed like a lot of setup hands, a couple of flips, and you know, at this point, stacks are getting a little bit more shallow. No question about it. We're going to shuffle the deck and handle that redraw. It's going to coincide with what was otherwise going to be a scheduled break for us, but that's going to mean we're going to part ways with you here for about 20, 25 minutes. Mark your... Uh, not calendar, but set an set alarm. Timer, it's not yeah. that long a break. And come back and see us. We've got more coverage of day two here in the 200K Triton Invitational coming your way on the backside of this break. Stay close. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song, the biggest event. poker song. Larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No <laughs> way. Jump, jump, jump. 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 Jump, Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
clear cut? Oh. I think it's clear cut against these so positions, but you know, you're only mildly afraid of Petrangelo behind you, but he did open from the hijack. Relieved to see Nikki P yep. out of the way and relieved not to be up against an over pair to the tens, but a lot to fade here. I is the covering stack ever so no slightly. Oh, really? Yeah, I cover. Yeah, I have 246. So we play for 480 and Hajiev's future. 579, ace and queen free. Ramin needs to pull the same rabbit out of the hat that Ike did here on this river by hitting one of his overcards to the tens. Yeah, no yep. magic. Year of Ike. <laughs> it never Just like that. Ike is up to 51 bigs. And on the other side of that same coin, Ramin Hajiev is... Found your watch. Oh. Apparently somebody got shot, a drug dealer got it or somehow. Holy shit. They said, we're going to send it back to you. Can you prove the serial number? He gives the proof. They send it back to him with the same watch. But now it's completely covered in diamonds. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. <laughs> but, it was like, but it was so many diamonds. I'm ready to wear that is so exciting. How lucky is that? Oh, yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> Story time oh, with Pamling there. He got, he got, he got it uh, like the band tightened, so that was like too tight. Uh, too many diamonds. At least he got some diamonds. Yeah, that's, really, that's really funny. Pamling just looks like a guy with good stories. Poker? He was playing poker. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He plays for fun. Oh, I remember every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Elton kid looking can, like uh, a guy who's got a dominant yeah. king no, in the big blind. Cool. Chooses to defend in, uh, in, uh, against the coon min raise open with king ten. Uh, yes, on the on the dot. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. They able to sell those and both players hit the king. Of course, yeah. Sang with the benefit much, like, of two pair, courtesy of that jack. Like, who, who wants that? Yeah. Has yeah. trouble on the horizon yeah. potentially yeah. for coon. Yeah, a lot of the times Kuhn is just hoping that he's going to capture some value from inferior king X's and jack X's, plus all of that flush and straight possibility too, but not going to necessarily be putting Sang on top two. But how does Sang want to proceed? Does he want to go ahead and fast play, or does he want to try to reel Jason in? But with the presence of, again, all of those draws, it does feel like the fast play is a better option here. Check raising 40 up to 140. And of course, Jason with top pair. Too much hand to go anywhere, but obviously not the stack that he wants to tussle with, Maria. Yeah, but does have the benefit of playing in position and, you know, doesn't block a lot of those draws. Has no diamonds. Blocks, you know, queen 10, 10, 9. And that's a sopping wet turn card, the 10 of diamonds. Jason making the inferior kings up, but obviously coordination and the flush texture to boot. Yeah, essentially almost every draw from the flop gets there with that turn card. So even a lot of the semi-bluffs that Sang has now gets there. So for Kuhn, not necessarily feeling too excited about turning two pair, but Sang also not feeling too excited about mm -hmm. his two pair. But once you have a check in front of you, you do feel somewhat tempted to maybe charge any of these draws that might have been picked up or deny equity? That's only if you think that Sang is checking here all of the time as, you know, having some type of hand that is ending up as a 
bluff catcher with that particular turn card. You know, does Singh ever have traps here in terms of could he be check raising the flop on a draw, getting there on the turn, and then trying to go for another check raise? But, you know, as you mentioned, just how wet that board is. Well, Jason Kuhn could inclined to go small here. He bets 80,000. He could think to himself, ace, queen, I would have heard from pre-flop out of the big. If he doesn't expect queen nine or eight nine to take a check raise line on the flop, as Elton did, then he's left with am I up against diamonds, which of course he unblocks, but he would be drawing live against that sort of kit with two pair. And how about this for a disaster river for both players? The queen of diamonds putting a four liner and a four flush out there. Yeah, this is an action killer run out for saying you know, could have gotten a lot more chips in the middle if the turn and river bricked off. And now just wondering, did he get done in by the run out? Will one of these guys feel like they need to turn their hand into a bluff? Because that's not the sort of board texture that suggests we can hunt value with kings up. Yeah, well, you see saying going ahead and checking it over, which, you know, when you have somebody as good as Jason Kuhn in position, you're not really going to be leading this river as a bluff. You're really just hoping to get a free showdown. But if Kuhn's the one that decides that he wants to perhaps try to get saying to fold out some straights or some weak flushes, this is going to put Sang in a very tough spot if Kuhn decides to go for it. My hand's too good to bluff, so I'm going to check and hope you have king seven. Check. King ten. King ten. So you heard Jason walk us exactly through his thought process. Boy, as I reflect on it, London was a pricey stop. <sighs> we had a 200K, a 250K, and a 125K in quick succession. That'll add up on the ledger. Yeah, and, you know, even here, coming in and just kicking things off immediately with the 200K buy-in, you know, it might end up feeling pretty bad for a couple of the players that, you know, perhaps were in for one entry plus a re-entry to go into the series down 400K right from jump. A jam from Badziakuski's jacks over the top of this ace nine open from Elton and Adams wakes up with two sevens in the small. 11 plus bigs on ask. Yeah, and Adams trying to figure out, you know, perhaps saying gonna be a little bit wider opening off of the big stack, which does allow Badziakuski, of course, to shove a little bit wider as well. So doesn't necessarily need a hand as strong as Jax to be shoving. So how well are sevens performing against Bads's shoving range against things open? All of that taken into consideration and ultimately leading to a fold from Adams as it gets back over to Elton. Hmm. Well, if sevens are no good, then one would imagine ace nine isn't either Maria or a different proposition with 20K already invested in a much deeper stack. Slightly different proposition, but I still think that he can find the fold here. Another ugly one. Yeah, it's <laughs> ends up making the call, but very yeah. self-aware about it as he says another yeah. ugly one. Yeah. And obviously the spot is ugly as well. Just 28% equity for saying. Baz is going to be loving this one. Do we call? Is that the four more? Yeah, I thought about it. Yeah, 32. Yeah. How much total? One more. One more. Yeah, At one point, Badziakuski was tied for most career Triton titles with Jason Kuhn. The Belarusian, 17.8 million in career. Triton earnings, 21 caches, four titles. Jason breaking away all the way up 
to nine titles, and this flop breaking the heart of the two jacks. An ace on the board, putting Tsang in front. Not the paint that Bads needs to see on the turn. Is a jack available to keep his hopes alive here in the 200K Invitational? The answer is no. I am sensing a pattern for saying, though, every time he calls when he's behind and is unsure of his decision, he ends up getting there anyways. So what does it matter? And so obviously some tables are going to be deemed a little bit more attractive than others. I haven't looked yet. Patrick Antonius, one of the shortest stacks in the room but right I think now. It's in fact, only here. Tony G is shorter. And a small blind with this Jack-9. <coughs> and he jams it. It is a calling hand. No, really? Oh, I got yeah. the ja Jack-9. <laughs> <laughs> Greenwood suited That's one scary. gapper. Oh, Enough to give Patrick oh, a spin. Ball. Stomp bubble, what's a Feature of the fin too. hanging in the balance in a 264k pot, and he finds oh. a nine, but unfortunately, Greenwood finds a ten. So, so Patrick, what is, what is a good card? I guess to find the jack red nine, nine for the time <laughs> being, but Queen's a good call, actually. Maybe there's a sweat card in his future. Yeah, we want an ace and a king. I was saying, yeah. six, not sweaty at all. Now it's five outs once for the Monaco resident. And that is a one Good game. A wrap of the rail. That was much easier As than winning the It didn't Rainbow take track. long for us to lose yeah, our first uh, player uh, oh, here in the second <laughs> frame of play. Pulled elsewhere. As Mikolai off of a shorter stack than he had moments <laughs> ago. <laughs> Given a King Jack suited. <laughs> I thought fake. I thought Jack. I thought fake too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the one to make it look Jams it in. very confused. 16 I, I, I big blind really shove from under the gun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Certainly has to be a pretty strong range, so not going to get it's looked up light. Oh. Jump, please. One hundred and ninety-three thousand. Haxton with the goods. Pocket queens in the cutoff. Doesn't feel like he needs to ISO here against a 16 big blind shove. He could just simply call most of the other players. Probably not going to get involved for that many bigs. Wow. And that does hold true as Haxton. Somebody said the king. <laughs> Not me. It's the only mm -hmm. customer. You're alive. Nikolai soliciting some intel. Trying to find out if all the kings are alive and well. As he's going to need to welcome one of them to this board for the time being. To nose in front of the queens. And not home. On a 9-4 tray board. Not available on the turn either, and that brings Mikolai to his feet. Can he hit the three-outer? No, as instead, a two-ball in the corner pocket for Haxton. Didn't need it, of course. A set of queens, officially, bringing Vice No, Because Yuri would never be caught dead oh, no. in an Arkansas Razorbacks jersey. Yuri would be here with some incredibly well-tailored pants. Maybe a, a polo with a little blazer. Yuri's the kind of guy that looks like he mixes a mean old-fashioned. You know what I mean? Like, if you walk up to him and ask for just a, a nice craft cocktail, he looks like he's got you, you know? Yeah. Like a, an heirloom caipirinha. Right. Seems like something he can get, get down with for you. you know? Yeah, and, and the type with some type of bespoke... Beard grooming kit. Producer James <laughs> stepping in to just call it football. It's not wrong. Rest of the world. 
King six suited now for Smith. Second floor. No, just a limp from the small blind. And Pantling wagging his finger at that. You can understand the desire to limp with a hand that warrants being played as opposed to raising and giving Pantling a chance to pounce on you for a three bet. Absolutely. Against a player as aggressive as Pantling, especially when you're out of position where, you know, you have a hand like Smith's, you want to see a flop. Limping is always a good play there because it ensures that you'll still get to, get to see a flop for fairly cheap. And what a flop it is yeah. as both players are all over it. Top pair for Smith. Second pair on the open ender for Pantling along with the lead in position coming together for a 27K C bet. And normally, you're not going to put too many hands in Pantling's range as the preflop aggressor that's going to connect this well with this type of board. But with Pantling, you never know. So You really don't. <laughs> Another 54,000 into the middle, courtesy of the check call from Smith. And the turn, giving him kings up. And this is where Pantling's aggression can get him into trouble, Maria, as he is reaching for chips and blasting. 63,000. Reasonable sizing. Yeah. But when Smith limps pre-flop, calls the raise, and then limp calls this flop, you do have to give some credit to what it is that he's proceeding with, and the 4-5 could maybe afford to check back. Yeah, but I think maybe Pantling is feeling like that turn card is going to be a perceived good card for him. So maybe trying to fold out some 6-Xs because at the moment his pair of fours doesn't quite beat that. Probably not necessarily going to put Smith on a lot of the king six type two pair hands unless they were suited. You know, some of the weaker king X's, Smith would have probably limp folded against a raise pre. And for Smith, you know, it's about if he wants to put in a raise here or just continue to call. And it looks like he is going to raise pretty substantial 4X here. Indeed. And this is why Pantling might be regretting not checking that turn because does he want to call this much more in order to see the river and try to realize that equity he has with the open ender? But hey, Pantling lives for a big pot. That he does. When you play poker, it's like. River card. Doesn't help the 4-5. As Pantling making the call, bringing this thing up to 626,000. And I think Smith very cozy with Kings up on this river. He is actually the covering stack. Yeah, some of the combo draws missed, you know, perhaps the straight draw with the backdoor flush draw. Smith wondering how big he could go here on the river. Welcome back to continuing coverage of the Triton Super High Roller Series. It is the $200,000 Invitational from here at Sporting Monte Carlo in the Principality of Monaco. Alina Jad alongside Maria Ho, pleased to have you with us. And midday one, we've seen, uh, midday two rather, we've seen a lot of carnage. Invitees being shown the exit at a fairly rapid clip, but... There's quite a few pros that have joined him, and we are just moments away from bringing you a couple of new feature tables with this field thoroughly combined, Maria. And obviously, not all tables are created equal. Right. I mean, we could see, you know, on the red table, 
a lot of really tough players in the mix with big stacks, you know, Sang in there, of course, the top stack of them all. But we have Barbero there, Smith, Mateos, all in the mix. 10 and 15,000 will be the blinds with the 15K big blind Annie. And as you turn your attention to that other of the two featured tables out there, the blue table, what stands out to you in that smattering? You have to say Pantling. Uh, I mean, Pantling, although now doesn't quite have the same stack that he did where we're going to maybe see him be a little less active, but Haxton off of a big stack, Holtz with over 50 big blinds as well, so always going to be a tough player. Let's not overlook Murray Williams. We kind of talked about him during one of the prior breaks, a first-timer here to Triton. He has looked steady Eddie so far, a man who kind of maybe brings a bit more experience than everybody realizes to the affair. Yeah, and just won a really big flip against Eric Seidel to eliminate him in that last frame. And so now certainly has some chips to work with. All right, so ball stack right now in the field. Belongs to Elton Sang. He's got over two million in front of him. Only other stack that deep belongs to Mario Mosbach. So we'll keep an eye toward the top of the leaderboard. And of course, as we send you out to the field for the two new feature tables, we do keep an eye on short stacks as well. Tim Busso, shortest in the field at present. Triton first timer, top 24 finish, but only 13 gonna get paid. He's got 12 bigs in front of him. So then, there are the full breakdowns from the blue and the red table, respectively. Murray Williams presiding over the blue crew, and Elton upon Redsville. Mateos and David Yan, the respective shorties. As we've already got the cards in the air and action underway. He's 10 suited for JNT. Thirty-five K. Hmm. Pantling gonna flat from the small with an ace deuce offsuit, Maria. He's sticking with the program. <laughs> Well, Yan's going to have something to say about that. What looks like potentially a good squeeze spot for Yan with the dead money, but actually has a huge hand here. Jams the two kings, predictably. You wonder what JNT thinks about how well the ace 10 suited is performing against the Kings. Yeah. Well, as he parks his forehead in his palm, you can <laughs> tell he isn't thrilled to be in this spot. Can well afford to make the call sitting on 1.3 back. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow. But it is a lot being asked for by Jan. And so JNT exercising some restraint. Far easier fold for Pantling, of course. And Stunner Shades for David Jan. At the feature, you'll see a lot of sunglasses, just a product of our production lights sometimes being a, a bit intense to contend with. So a nice pickup there for Jan, currently 21st of 24 runners. <coughs> one cold. I want to be ice. How do you say ice in French? Glass. Like glass. 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 Jack ten off suit. Not of any interest to Williams. Pantling, though. You know, Maria, oh normally uh, Jan wakes up with aces now on the heels of Kings. I was going to say, you got to visit a, an amusement park to ride roller coasters. Not when Pantling's around. His <laughs> chip stack has just been up and down like a true yo yo. You see him looking on with a wow. little bit of concern at Jan, who is thinking naughty things. Yeah, very, <laughs> very much so. Very bad, 
Slow playing from the small blinds and 6-4 suited. Certainly going to be good enough for a defend. French pronunciation is so hard, I just panic. French? Yeah. Shelokin being offered an opportunity to get into trouble from the big blind with the price, which he took, but on the King-King-9 board, both he and Pantling look like they'll be able to avoid trouble, although one never knows. Two checks in front of Andrew, and he bets 50K into this board. And I tell you what, with Yan just calling here from the small blind, it just feels to Pantling like he can pretty much easily eliminate a lot of the strong King Xs from Yan's range because he assumes that Yan would three bet those, would jam those, you know, the ace king, the king queen. Also the big pairs, of course, probably never expecting Yan to have aces in this spot, but does end up turning some showdown value. So does check back on the turn, which now the 10 appearing on the river, queen jack gets there, of course. You know, trips always a possibility. And Jan shows the aces. That's going to come as a bit of a surprise to Pantling. And, you know, I'll tell you what, in the spots in which Pantling is able to exercise some restraints, he saves chips, you know, because people are very different, looking to get him to behave in the way in which they've seen him earlier with multi-barrel aggression. And, but he just really mixes it up. You can't nail him down. You can't put a finger on exactly what he's going to be up to. He's not a one-trick pony. <clears throat> Yeah, and for Pantling, I think the most important part is patience. I think that now that he's short, maybe he's going to get a little bit bored because he can't be quite as active. But, you know, if he's able to show a little restraint and wait for some good spots, his style certainly will benefit from when he does chip up and can play post more. But now at 21 big blinds. And nine suited here for Germany's Fedor Holes. He always shows up for the big stuff, doesn't he? For a while, Thank players you. thought they weren't going to have to contend with his talents as he retired, yeah. but then came out of retirement, much to their chagrin. And I would he's say done he's well since. solidly <laughs> unretired these days. Oh, yeah. Can't keep a good man down. Fedor with almost 11 million in career Triton earnings, three titles, 12 caches. Picked up a title in London in the 25K7 max. Pocket four is for Haxton. The lone caller pre, and it's top two pair on a board where the fours should be able to easily avoid further damages. Can I order something after you have ready? Yeah. One large. Uh, last photo. White? No, no, Evian. Evian. But, but the big bottle. Uh, it's okay, okay, thank you. Fedor, action checked over to him, betting 30 into 95. Easy fold. Was that a sprite that Fedor um, just? No, it looked like a Perrier. Okay. I, I, I was going to say, because I mean, he doesn't on. strike me as the sugary, fizzy drink guy. I'm pretty sure Fader is also a vegan at this point. I'm I, pretty sure Sprite's vegan. No, but I just mean healthy living overall. Okay, sprite, you know. the amount of sugar in Sprite just doesn't really seem up his alley. Well, hang on, because it looks like we've got some sugar that's been poured into the middle in this particular pot, bringing you up to speed. It looks as though Juan Pardo from the button preflop was an opener to 30,000. Kent Stahl in the big blind of Norway defended. Ace 9-9 nine, nine flop. It went check check on the turn. Stahl then let out for 55,000. Pardo made the call. Here we are at the river. And it looks like Stahl has bet 75,000. And has Pardo acted yet? He has not. We await his instructions. A min raise just clicks it up. That's 
a little bit scary typically, but Stahl with the snap all in. Pardo snap calls. Stahl with just a queen. Maria obviously turning his hand into a bluff, feeling as though that little raise was Pardo being cute. And Pardo flicking it in, showing trip nines. 9-10. Nine, off suit. That was a pretty savage three bet bluff. There. I mean, it came in so quickly. He didn't even give it a moment. Yeah, it, you wonder if maybe there's been some history and he ran out of patience, maybe feeling like Pardo was targeting him in other pots. Yeah. You got it, right? <laughs> Deep self inflicted wound sending Stahl out of there as Haxton trying to three bet a pantling open. And then Murray Williams out of the big blind. Pushing back on the pocket threes with King Queen suited. I like what I'm seeing out of this guy. I, I, was yeah, I really that. was not familiar with Murray Williams whatsoever until yeah, yesterday. And now I like that when he's off the big stack, he's willing to get aggressive, especially against the top players in the world. Murray, now fourth in chips overall, 1.7 million. Maybe, yeah, bring back the, the sideways pony, sideways man bun. Not, not really yeah. a look you see very often. <laughs> you know, he's got a mane that he's got to contend with when he's out there playing. Lustrous in nature, should be said. Pantling. High V-pip on display again. Ace four suited. This time, Haxton. Not looking to three bet. But you see the types of adjustment that someone like Haxon is going to make in terms of, you know, wanting to play against a player like Panling in position. Yeah, wants to play pots against a stack that he thinks might be willing to get it all in and not necessarily have the best of it. But here on an ace eight six board, very much Pantling has the best of it. Fedor, the only other player with a piece. That eight of hearts. Could keep him invested in this one as the field faces a 40K follow through. And Panling might not get credit here with this bet considering he limped in, you know, how many hands containing a good ace would limp here. But wow, Fedor just able to get away. And again, I think that's a product of the type of player Pantling oh, is. You know, he's not going to give up very often oh, yeah, yeah. on later streets. So maybe not wanting to call there with second pair. Meanwhile, no problem, bro. flipping it back over as Holtz does avoid further streets against the best hand. Well, we're getting a look at perhaps part of the equation that has led to Elton saying being your overall chip leader. <laughs> Ace is in the hijack. Smith could be on the duck hunt here. River, pretty looking combo in the small blind. Jack 10 suited. On. And he deems wow. it a squeeze candidate. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate yep. because, you know, 37 big blind shove, there's not going to be a lot of hands that can call. Mm -hmm. It would work quite often, but here saying actually just taking his time trying to maybe <laughs> trap smith somehow 
feigning a little weakness without making it seem like he has an instant decision, an instant call here. Fold. And a call by Elton and an easy release for the deuces as Brewer sees that he ran into top of range. How many times you get Oasis? I didn't have them in the whole tournament. Yeah. For a barrel, green with NB over. Just how well Elton has run. And Ad Brewer deciding to jam with Jack-10 suited to the run good for Elton. Not just getting the aces, but getting people to step into the trap. Six three leaves Brewer. D-miking as he draws dead on the turn and will not be in the money in this one. What? Hello. So then, must be nice to meet Elton Sang. What a fucking life, buddy. What a fucking life. What a life. What a what fucking a life. life. Life is good. Rich, young, lucky. When they're gonna crack his aces, the motherfucker falls. What a fucking life. Do you win the biggest tournament in history? No, not in history. Oh, you get second? Well, it wasn't the biggest in history, but I didn't get second. <laughs> Oh, you want it, you want it, huh? For like 10 million. For like 20. It, it wasn't the biggest tournament. Maybe the second biggest tournament, but he, he won it. <laughs> wow, what a fucking life. I just want to be Elton Sung in one day in my life. <laughs> it's also in Monte Carlo, just to let you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Warning for this everyone. Tour, this, this venue? No, not this venue, yeah, but in Monte Carlo. No, it was in the hotel. It was, was in the main casino. Well, the final table was there, but the tournament was here. Really? The start of the tournament was here, and the final table we played at the at the casino. Oh, I totally forgot. Hundred yeah. percent. He probably only remember the win. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, was it two days or three days? Three days. It had enough players to be three days. Like one day, second day, then they stopped for the third and final, third day final table. How won. many runners did they get? Thirty. Uh, but it was intense, or... right? What's that? It was intense, I assume. No, it was pretty light. When is dinner break? It was like no dinner break. Oh, no dinner Elton break. was one of the few pretend amateurs that snuck in as a pro. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the rest are actual amateurs. <laughs> Actually, I do believe there is a dinner break. Everyone was like, but it wasn't they Google it was just like a show on the schedule originally. The, the, the 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 laying out to get this conversation <laughs> as Mateos with Pocket <laughs> Kings open from the cutoff. That's probably not true. Ilkin Garibli. The last tournament I played back then was probably flatting. like 2010 or something. 30,000. Trip eights have these two kings in an awful way. <laughs> yeah, but this board could potentially save Adrian from getting too aggressive with the Kings. You know, despite having an overpair to the board, when we talk about the big blind defending range here, certainly can have so many straights here, can have a lot of trips. No reason to bloat this pot. You considering the million this year? <laughs> Board now double pairs. Got Ibli. I mean, why would you? Because if you viewed it as fun. On the heels of the check, check, flop, and the 30K lead and call. Looks up at this 145. Feels as though you can target some ace high here, even though, as we can see, Mateos has far more than that. Yeah, and if you want to so target ace high. Either. What's what type of sizing very, are you trying to go for if you don't necessarily put your opponent on no, a hand good. as like strong small, as I kings? Like, I mean, it might be a good tournament. I don't know. I guess there's like four. That uh, feels four about that right. But, but like, a lot of discomfort for Adrian, but not much he can do, but just try to bluff catch in this situation. Happens sometimes. Yeah, in DK. Regardless Cuffs of the, on field, the Spaniard. Just playing. 
he does pay off. Yeah. Rich. Garibli, by the way, incorrectly referred to as a Triton first timer by me what, during what's the draw. Right what? What's Bicon? I was advised that he's he, actually he, he been to a Triton it's before. Thirty-five now. Thirty-four. Stand nine. corrected. Thirty-four nine. So it's gone back down a Off little, 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 little bit. No, no, no. He never breaks. Do you have a paper with the pairings here? Who's Garibli's partner in this mix? What's a break? I can pull that up for you. Five hundred is just around the corner, obviously. Buddy, I'm gonna be. Thank you, producer James. Got it. Alex Maxis. No more fucking other coins. Bit of a blaster. It's a fun pair. I learned the lesson. I learned the hard way. The hard way. The fucking hard way. <coughs> it's wearing the 20 already? Fold it around to Barbero. 8-9 offsuit. Earlier you heard Haralabos talking to Elton Sang, saying, no, this is where we played. What event was he referring to? How about 2016? The big one for one drop, a million euro buy-in that Elton actually took down for well over 11 million euros. And yet, he doesn't even remember where he played his final <laughs> table. No, but you know what else he does remember? The after party. Oh, yeah. And what a party it was. I'm guessing he picked up the tab. 8 9. Opening to 45,000. And Garibli making this a pricier affair as the tab grows to 145,000. There you go. Look, she got some tomatoes and cucumbers. How'd that happen? What? <laughs> you want some? No, I'm just curious how it happened. Nacho concedes. <laughs> and you get a sense of the breadth with which Garibli is willing to get his chips forward. Ilkin playing oh, under the I owe you a time Azerbaijani time. banner. This is a Trending in the right direction at present. Now you got some. Now you got cucumbers and tomatoes. 11th Absolutely. overall. 845k stack. Waiting for change for a time there. Yeah. Danny on the healthy side of the menu. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like Thanks. these players, you know, having to play long days, you got to keep it healthy. You got to stay Better, yeah. energized. You have to be a rabbit to be able to live off. You'd never be able to sustain that type of diet eating stuff like that. Yeah. It's become so. Oh, I don't plan to sustain this. No? I just want to try to get it to my ideal weight. And then pump it and right back up. Pump it right. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so good. Seriously, I've, I've been eating shit for what? 12, 13 years. How old are you? 31 now. So... You look like you're 50. It, I mean... <laughs> yeah, I've been fat for like 12 years, right? So... And it took me five months to cut some weight. So. Good for you, bro. Yeah. Oh, you cut it like butter, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you cut it like butter with, <laughs> with that weight you had. It's so easy. Yeah. True. Try cutting weight at my weight. That's hard. Try cutting weight at your age. It's harder as well. <laughs> <laughs> the needles are flying here. I do. As Elton, well. staying clear of the barbs, oh. delivering one of his own quietly and in the form of a 40k open under the gun with king queen suited which is running into the argentines ace king suited nacho gonna be delivering some cheese and we're going up to 130 in total how much weight are you normally at? King queen suited is the type of hand where you definitely want to no. try to see yeah. a flop. 18. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Elton asking for a count. Ooh, that looks uh, like an intense stroke there. 
I don't know which one's right. That the eight knuckle carotid pinch. <laughs> That's uh. I, well, I always pictured you to be like more of a Swedish massage type of guy. Oh, like you're you so wrong. Really? You oh, can take a lot pain. of really. Oh yeah. Elton can take a lot too, obviously, just based on what I'm seeing. Look at the uh, striations, uh, you know, vascular intensity on the therapist there. I'm not sure she's going to make it through. The, uh, ouch! Meanwhile, Queen 7 Deuce as Elton has outflopped this Ace King. I think cutting weight, I'm building muscle. It's like this. 310k in the middle. You're not trying to like. I just try to cut more weight first before I cut more fat and weight first before I. That's fair. Before I like lean up. That's fair. Yeah. Eventually, I'll try to lean up. I, I want to try to get a six. Pack. Never had one in my life. <laughs> yeah, why not? Probably be very very. Danny hard. Tang has a six pack on his vision board. Have you had all good? Habits. Have you ever had a six pack, Dan? No. Fucking hard things happen. Why is six the only? Can't you start with like a two pack? <laughs> I go to four, go to six from there. I feel like past a certain age, you have to give up on the six pack. I'm not saying 31 is that age. I'm just, I'm probably speaking from personal experience. The boy's rocking the one pack right here, happily. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Barbero, 100K C bet. Got flatted by Elton. Is this him just trying to reel in worse kit for Nacho or him being a little bit more mindful of a better hand? I think it's a little bit of both. You know, of course, if you just call here, you're going to keep Barbero's bluffs in. And also, Barbero could just have the goods here as well. And Barbero just slightly more than pot back now. You know, is this a spot where if he checks back the turn, is that essentially a give up for him trying to show down ace high? Not sure he's going to be given the opportunity in particular on this run out as the three very innocently pairs on the river. And a very dry flop, you know, that kind of lends itself to a situation where I think no matter what sizing saying goes, it's going to look pretty value heavy. Again, no flush draws possible on the flop, no straight draws really looks like top pair or perhaps, you know, a hand like nines, tens, going for value, especially when it's this milky. Twenty percent pot bet on the river. Feels like the kind of number that is properly targeting this ace king, as you can see, Nacho having a tough time releasing. Gonna use a time extension. <coughs> Has the therapist self oiled? Uh, there's a lot of grease on the bicep. We'll get back to that. Just not a lot of bluffs, I think, that Sang will have here, especially when he calls the flop and he calls that three bet pre. And so even though the price seemed so appealing to You saw it, Nacho, right? You saw it. I know. You were thinking and you wanted to say something else, but then you saw what I was seeing. Right there. There it is. A little excessive shine on the left upper arm area and the massage therapist. These are the hard-hitting questions that I ask. Maria. Well, if you're out there and you're streaming us live, get in on our exclusive Triton merch giveaway. Learn more in the chat by simply typing exclamation point giveaway and get yourself entered.
to pick up some of our new swag. We had a drop in London, the new TPS logo being revealed, and a whole new array of attire is on offer. Much of it on display throughout the course of each and every Triton Festival worn by the players. Feel free to scan the QR code on the screen as well. What? Seems like every stop, they're just coming out with new merch. But I could have used that Triton scarf that they what? seem to have revealed here at this stop, the at the London there, stop. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> chillier in London than it's been here, although the weather hasn't been terrific in Monaco. Been a little gloomy. Yeah. Feels like winter, fall, you know, kind of around the corner. Beautiful today, but we, we've basically been indoors for the last five hours. <laughs> there are worse places to it's be true. caught indoors, Maria. It's true, but you know, th it wouldn't hurt for them to just open the roof once in a while. The problem is I'm not sure how quickly that roof closes and if the skies open up, <laughs> a quick deluge is not what you want to be dealing with. Meanwhile, Smith opening. Barbero. Ace nine suited, comes along. Jack ten on the button for her all of Doesn't seem like spade. Oscar, it's the doodle, I think eight joined spades. him today. His pup, three sides sadly. I don't know which one. Probably. Was here yesterday. I mean, you know, even Oscar wants to enjoy the nice weather and today. And you should just say what it was, I think. No, like but Dad, the cards was in there already. Can I go out? No, can I say? <laughs> can I say? You, yeah. Only one, only one, the spade. I'm no, the fucked up thing is, is the, the, the bottom one. I definitely one. had an eight. Yeah, yeah, that one. But yeah, I wasn't that's, sure if it's a spade. But I wasn't sure if that, that was a spade one. Yeah, I know I have a spade, spade as well, but I wasn't okay. sure if it was. I saw eight of spades too. Okay. Pocket okay. jacks. Sorry. Three betting to two sorry, twenty. Sorry, And Singh has really shown down his fair share of big hands today. But at some point, might his opponent start thinking, could Singh just be leveraging not only his chip stack, but the idea that he's running well today and getting aces a lot. And now trying to exploit them with perhaps some light three bets. But we see that Singh still has the goods here. Okay, you know what? It's a lucky masseuse. He's got to keep her around for the rest <laughs> of the day. No takers. <clears throat> I mean, look at, you know, this lady's cut. Guess if you work you with your hands like that all the time. You didn't see her biceps bulging every time she massaged up the side of his neck earlier. It was, it's a workout to be a massage therapist. I feel like if you're on the re receiving end from her, it could also be characterized <laughs> as a workout. Working out the knots. You burn some calories getting a massage. Stop. Yeah. A hundred percent. Google it. You're laying there. No, you really do. Like, I'm not saying a lot. I'm saying, like, <laughs> I think maybe. Well, you're resting caloric or metabolic no, rate. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. You're above and beyond. Above that. So you're saying that if I need to work <laughs> out, I can just get a two-hour deep tissue? <laughs> As Danny now massaging these 45,000 chips that Herolibos put forward with this suited one gapper, a dominant ace 10. Look at Elton. You know you're running good when you give it a, a second thought with Queen Jack out of the small. <laughs> yeah, you're like, could I get away with this? With the way that I've been running today, could I? Danny. I have change, please. Takes it down uncontested. You know, from observation across day one and today, Haralobos does enter pots with a very creative array 
of holdings, not just up front as expected with top of range. You know, he'll get in there and splash a little bit. And I think it's the product of the fact that, you know, even though he comes in from the invitee side, this is a guy with a lot of poker 45. under his belt, played very seriously in his youth, mm -hmm. and was quite successful. And if you feel as though you can navigate post-flop waters, then you're more inclined to get in there with a broader range of hands. As we saw a couple right, of fives find the muck. Like in the hands of Pantling, yeah. no less, I believe. Barbero, yeah, the know. opener. And now sixes for Danny in the cutoff. So you see my card or not? I think, I mean, I don't know. You, you don't, you don't see. I, I, I mean, like, he was, I don't know what it is, but like. So fuck, you, you, what did you do? He made a he raise. Oh my God. Huh, I fold then. Just in case you see I have no idea, but like, uh, you yeah, like, there was you. one hand yeah. when you shuffled them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you telling me. Yeah, I paired up. You know? Just keep it up here. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck, it, do I call or not? If you put it down here, it's mm. hard. Just keep it on. I really I have no clue, but I, here, like, but something looked like, out here. something looked like a four side. No, 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 it's okay. It looked like a four side from here. Fuck, should have called. Could represent <laughs> the four side. Mm. <laughs> it was not a four side, okay. It was a three side, in fact. Well, that makes me want to go play Baccarat. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. There are casinos here. Do I know. Do I need to 86 you from them? And, you know, we're done in a couple hours. We have an early night. <laughs> I could see you dressing up in a nice gown, heading over to one of these posh casinos. Very James Bond gal kind of vibes, a glass of champagne. You know, parking yourself at a Baccarat table, incinerating some <laughs> of your wages from this week. Yeah, save me from myself, Ali. Respectfully, I've heard that the casinos here drive a hard bargain. Oh, like th they take a commission? I, all I know is it's not Berlin. the cheapest place to gamble. Berlin. And Berlin. it's not going to be the cheapest pot to play, thanks to Mateos. On the button, ripping. And Barbero keeps getting himself in some spots where he could potentially get involved, but ends up deciding not to, but just doesn't feel like he's had a lot of really easy decisions in his mind today, which can be frustrating and something that, you know, lends itself to players losing patience. Expecting, saying, of course, to be opening at a pretty high frequency from the cutoff, which allows Mateos, of course, to shove wider, which means that ace nine of diamonds might be playing pretty well against Mateos' shoving range. Not that concerned about saying who still has to act behind him because, again, saying with so many chips is going to be very active. But 29 bigs, when you've got nothing volunteered into this pot other than the big blind, and you have an opener to contend with who's still left to act behind you, is Nacho not making a meal out of this one as the jam comes in? Yeah, but really 18 bigs here that we're talking effective here for Mateos' mm -hmm. stack. And Barbero does ISO, which yeah. means... At the same hand as you. Yeah, oh, same that's good news. I was going to call. But it is risky business when you've got Sang behind. He's the <laughs> no. Reaper. He's the guy I that can send you I would have fully ace I wasn't sure he nine suited the warder. I had one club, one spade. I guess you Jan, I can't call, right? Nacho. I guess not. Gets it in. And he's a favorite against Mateos. Not by a lot, though. There's a concerned easy. look on Adrian's face. Gives way <laughs> never to a pair of tens. What could be fun? With a Broadway Ace. gutter. Ace. Ace would be really fun. Our barrel. Top pair. And how about this? Aces and nines. So the king will no longer work. Wow. And the six of diamonds won't yeah, either. Yeah, you took my money. Good steal. That's it yeah. for the conquistador, Maria. Took my money. 
Yeah, Adrian, of course, <laughs> a very you, tough player, like, but I mean, was pretty know. short there and wasn't able to get that shove through. <laughs> 2.7 million in career Triton earnings not going to be added to. Fucking no. I mean, I'd rather, I rather, I rather have the chips of my friend. I give it to Elton. He's already super fucking rich. I have all the fucking chips. <laughs> right? I can't comment. You're calling 100%. Yeah. I was calling. But I know you're calling. It's an easy call. He's showing all the aces. How do you know I was calling? What? I'm not sure if he's shoving all the aces. It's way, way more difficult. <laughs> <to> <laughs> He's showing now ace four suited, ace three suited against you. Suited, yeah, suited. Yeah, it's suited, obviously. Why you think he's gonna fold ace eight suited there? Never in one one. You think he's folding ace ten suited that? No, I know. Obviously, <laughs> bro. Why do I spend two time? Man? No, I I think you play good. I'm like just. So why you? It's no. super close. I think I fold ace eight and I have to call ace ten. I'm, ace 10 off I'm and extremely ace nine impressed, suited. Nacho. Don't be offended. Be confident with your with your play. Very I'm impressed. impressed. Really? What? Legit. I'm also very I'm impressed. impressed. Bro, the tournament is super tough still. Like, I mean, I have 25 lines. I have to take, I still have second life too. I have 10 lines. I'm happy for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. This feels like a couple's counseling. Right? Easy yeah, Nacho, not sure if Danny was being sincere about <laughs> what he thought about his play. <laughs> Running good anyway, call. <laughs> if I had, hey, Danny, by the way, if I had another table, I, I might fall. Probably fall. Probably, yeah. But in this table, everybody's good. Where is Get some change. He's a ticket there for Danny. If I have a softer table, I might be more lean to fold my hand there. What if you had clubs instead? It's the same. Same. back in the air. Time to put the phone away, Danny. I'm muck. Good job. Hmm? Well played, Danny. <laughs> well, well played, <laughs> done. <laughs> done. <laughs> Danny, they're giving away the money. Atletico Madrid, all in. Really? It's like the team that made the most points since the World Cup. It's insane. They're so good. They win every game by 45. Three, two, three goals. It's even money against Celtic. I really like it. I mean, I bet 10,000, but... So that's 45? I wanted to bet more and the bookie said to me, no, you're already betting... No, I bet 12,000 and the bookie said, no, you're already, you're already bet 12. You can't bet 15. I'm like, what? Opening with the Who ace eight suited. Celtic. 45. 45. Nacho gives what, us his Champions League eight. lock of the night. I'm also going to tell you what I like. You know, it's not enough that they it's pony up $200,000 to play this I tournament. Like they Paris also got to have some Paris sweats on the side. Yes. Yes, they do. Paris is fucking all of us. Defended from the I went down. Yeah, it's, it's five to one anyway. Harris is pretty shit. Should we gamble that one? It's okay. I've got it. Smith following through. I don't think they're going to win, but I just don't <laughs> like, bro, that line. That is not like a normal line. Also, I think Danny, like the line peeling here, not getting the right kind of paint. Borussia. Like, the double paired board now but rates to be, be good I, for the ace I high. And I don't know if I, I Five seventy. Yeah, Isaac is playing. I don't know if Isaac is playing. Yeah. Five seventy. What is? If Isaac five, doesn't play, I'm gonna bet for Dortmund. For what I'm seeing check now, it doesn't say from Volgaris. Check back from Dan and let's see whether or not. That sounds like a lot. Or all of us. Danny. Tries to get after it here. It doesn't feel like a good spot. Check. Yeah, King High has some showdown value as well, but 
Dan does have the best of it. I think Bob's thinking about betting your picks. Hello. Bonjour. If the, if the sharpest guy in the world says it, I'm, I'm going to be happy. Don't you think Atletico is like insane like shape now? Uh, but that's not how they look at it, is it? I don't really follow. Ah, oh, you don't follow. So. I just focus on my, my team, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I also bet, uh, by the way, it's not sharp. It's not sharp at all. I also bet Porto. I, I never thought you were I bet Porto and, uh, and Atletico. Porto small. Uh, anything. <laughs> and I'm going to bet Milan, I think. But I want to see the lineup. Paris is like a, it's a shit show. And Milan has a really I listened to your podcast with Liv. It was fun. Oh, yeah. I spent a lot of time at the track going up as well. Every Saturday, my dad would take me. Uh, thoroughbred or Or the thoroughbred or with the? Not with the carts. Carts, So, no, there was just a jockey, no carts. So, thoroughbred. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to make one bet every day that I would keep. And I was seven. I won a $100 exacta. So, every week, my $100 came with me and I'd be studying and thinking like I was a pro. Awesome. 40? Shared anecdote there between Dan Smith and Haralabos. Smith letting Haralabos know that he listened to the episode of Live Paris, his podcast. Yeah. Volgaris was a guest and realizing that the two of them shared a line item on their resume growing up of going to the same horse track back in the States. There's been more than a few poker players who've spent time at the racetrack throughout the course of their career. And off to the races is Barbero here. And this is a real problem for Danny Tang. Yeah, perhaps Barbero getting rewarded for, you know, taking that spot a little bit of a high variance line earlier to ISO shove the ace nine suited and now getting things going. Nacho, cut off open with the queen five suited, flops the flush up against top two, follows through for 35. And with top two on a board like this, Maria, are we more incentivized to activate here and now, denying equity? I think perhaps on later streets, you know, maybe some brick turns, you can think about doing that. But I also think that if you decide to check race here as Danny and there's gonna be so many bad turn cards, you're really bloating the pot quite large in a situation where you might not know how to proceed on some turns. So ends up just choosing to call and this feels like a very good card in the sense that if Nacho was just barreling with some air, some naked diamonds there, perhaps this ace is a card that he's going to barrel again at Barbero actually much stronger this is really shaping up to be a complicated spot for Tang who defended the big blind check called 35,000 now that ace on the turn and we're going to check back in on that pot momentarily as it would appear that Paul Pua Got himself involved here against Sam Greenwood. Boss is the covering stack, and it is pocket queens up against Jack Nine on the 3-3-4 board. A five on the turn. Greenwood drawing dead, collecting his belongings, and exiting the arena, leaving behind just 20 players now. Now. Back over to where we put a pin in things. Danny Tang called the 110,000 on the turn, checks this river and with the third nuts, fourth nuts rather, actually third nuts, he holds the five of diamonds, forgive me. Barbero. Now fires 320,000. 
And Danny can't love this against three barrels on this texture. You know, there's not going to be a ton of bluffs that Barbero has. You know, it's really about if he is going to be betting worse for value, you know, betting perhaps some really strong top pair hands. <clears throat> that block diamond, perhaps, you know, the strong kind of ace king, ace queen holdings with the diamond, would those yeah. be willing to go for value here on the river? Because if those are going to end up being checkbacks, then Tang's hand doesn't feel all that strong. If we're going to polarize Barbero's triple barreling range here, two hands like flushes, two sets, two better two pairs, then the eight seven not really going to be doing too well and really great fold. Yeah. <laughs> you hear Barbero <laughs> delivering a choice expletive as he fails to get paid off there, and he'll be even more upset when he realizes just how much hand Tang put into the muck, but a good discipline recognition by Danny that Barbero would not fire that third barrel at that size all that often was something that didn't have eights and sevens in trouble. Takes a lot for a player to not get curious in that spot. Yeah. You know, moments like those for me, Maria, as throughout the course of my career I've been in the observational seat are the ones that help you delineate good from great. You know, it could be very easy to just tell yourself eights and sevens, it's a good hand. This guy could have the big ace with a diamond and be trying to chase value against me, but finding the restraint, you're not going to be right every time you put it into the muck, but Danny knows he's got enough <laughs> chips to just fight on 64 big blinds, even if it was the wrong decision. And as we can see, of course, it very much was not. Good fold. It's the equivalent of in a limit game, folding on the river to a single bet yeah. and getting 20, 30 to one. See Dan Smith rocking the double up drive patch there. Maria caused 34. it. I believe he found it. Mm -hmm. And That's not sure how much you know about it, but effectively he directs all of his philanthropic and charitable efforts into the double up drive and matches, I yeah. believe, all of the but contributions that people make toward causes that they're in support of. Yeah, and he's also throughout the years gotten not really you know, sure very well known it. poker players to we'll match the donations not, I, themselves sure. as well. So we're, you were in really you know, has shape. certainly Re really got enough attention from his friends in the poker world Take who have that. also supported the cause. Fuck. I think it's a great moment to Could've just won. push back on a lot of the won. rhetoric throughout the years yeah, that has won. encircled poker. You know, marginalized yeah, it, made it win. seem like it's something that's back alley or in the right shadows or replete no. with bad actors and you know there have been moments you really? know there's bad apples in every bunch no matter what it may be but top two on the flop. especially here at triton where you have a collection of people that have what a really hero. What a hero folder, yeah. been the lucky ones let's call it even though they've earned it yeah, in terms of their successes um have recognized the, the importance of giving back not just to the poker community but to yeah, those in I need guess. And uh, sure, less, this money that, that gets thrown around, yeah, a lot of it no does one. find its way to good causes <laughs> and <laughs> bring real to help you have to people out there. Ones. Meanwhile, <laughs> real help is what JNT is going to need with 3-4 <laughs> off suit, as this may be very I much a lost more, cause. Actually. Middle pair for Elton so yeah, for hero, for in the small blind, well in front. One of the highlights of this tournament for me is your dog. <laughs> I, love, I, love, I love seeing him. He makes me, makes me happy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can't really, really blame J and T for just stabbing on with back. no showdown. Oh, he's going for a walk. Now on the turn, a four liner develops. Two quick checks after the Elton call on the flop. Brick River. By the guy, by the way, to the guys that are listening, um, if you guys want to bet, uh, bet 
betacr.eu, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, shameless plug here, knowing that he's mic'd up. We've got some viewers watching. Somebody has to pay the bill. You think I win tournaments for $10 million, bro? I don't have that life. I gotta work. Work hard. Do you think I'm done? JMT shutting it down on the river there as Elton able to shut down the jack for a W. One of many that he's enjoyed today as he has ascended to over 3 million in chips now. 155 big blinds and very much it feels like punching his ticket into the final table. But plenty of runway between here and there. And of course there'll be that oh so thick money bubble once we get down to 14 players, 300k <laughs> min cash. And then they're just like, fuck. So many people yeah, the best like, part like, about having a lot. really big stack <laughs> so many people is gonna be the soft the bubble game. is <laughs> you can really unleash some abuse. Hold. Pocket tens here for Danny. Forty. The later the open, the later the opener is. You know, the wider you can peel with some of these offsuit king X's from the big blinds. And exactly what Dan does: peeling, hitting top pair. But the problem is, he's up against middle set. 110 in the middle, a check from Smith. His hand lacks durability, but it is top pair. And with all of this coordination and texture staring these three tens in the face, one would expect Tang to barrel. And he does reach for tokens, depositing 55 of them to be exact half pot. Smith doesn't love the top pair with this type of texture, though. Again, you know, going to be some bad turns, going to be some bad runouts for top pair. But is a mandatory call here on the flop. And Danny, of course, can have all of the better king X's, can have a lot of two pair sets, of course, ace queen. A lot of hands, a lot of value that has top pair beat. You know, gonna have king, queen, queen, jack, queen, 10. Four liner develops along with two tones as Smith checks again. Now the tens, not in love with this board anymore. Plenty of Queen X that would have flatted from the big blind and peeled on this flop. But would that hand check the turn as opposed to lead out? That is the question. And it's not going to matter anymore as Danny's check back brings a pair on the board, giving him tens full and no concerns about being up against a straight. Flush comes in on the river, though, and... Smith is playing the kicker on the board with kings and nines with a jack kicker. So can't necessarily be feeling too great about the prospects of having the best hand, especially when Danny bets here. But doesn't really expect Danny to check back the turn very often if Danny had the straight himself, considering the two tone. So when Danny comes with a bet here, it's really gonna look more like two pairs or sets that fill up or potential flushes. One last check from.
from Smith. When you get the check from Smith here, it does feel like he doesn't have the clubs or the straight at this point. And so sizing wise, I think Danny's going to be a little more conservative. Is he not? Oh, I take it back. 380,000, a huge overbet. Yeah, really hoping that Smith has something stronger than what he actually has. You know, maybe Rivering trips and would feel like he's got to look him up. Maybe slow playing that straight on the this turn. One? No. no. <laughs> Really targeting some of the stronger hands with that sizing. Easy fold for King Three <laughs> by King Dan, as he's known on Twitter. And now we flip it back over to Boss's table. What is a foot? Seems that Paul raised to 40,000. Richard Young, three bet to 130K. Derek Haney had just 35,000. He's all in, boss out of the way. Young is gonna show two kings, Haney, ace king. Being told that Haney just lost most of his stack with ace king against two nines and it's looking like the rest of it is headed south as well on that flop the turn aceless and the river is as well which will bring derek haney's first ever triton experience to a close and leave us with just 19 players Back over to the feature. Six away from the money now. Ike seems pretty interested in something that's happening over at one of the outer tables. I think it had to have been the elimination yeah. of Derek Haney. <coughs> but is Haney his pairing? Don't believe no. so. No, he's paired up with Christopher Brewer. No one calls him Christopher. <laughs> what are no. you, his mother? <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Joseph David Brewer. <laughs> Queen Jack suited for KCG. A defense from Shelukin. Four or five off suit in the big, showing his willingness to fight. And he flops bottom two pair on a two heart board. And if that seven were a heart, this would be exactly the spot that Barbero and Tang just played. But instead, it's a mere flush draw. Big difference for KCG. Nonetheless, he will follow through 75K. And it looks like he's just piling here. <laughs> he being Alexander as the 375 gets ripped in there. A snap from KCG and real vulnerability for bottom two. 880K pot. And Shelukin's hopes at risk, and now even more so, as a jack on the turn pairs KCG, too many outs to list. Any jack, queen, heart, seven would do it as well, and instead a beautiful deuce of spades if your name is Alexander Shelukin, as he hauls in 880,000, taking a bite at a KCG. Doubling off the short stack in the room. That's actually going to leave Andrew Pantling as the shorty. Maria, not something that you nor I thought that we would be saying about him, given the stack that he spun up throughout the earlier course of play today. 
Yeah, but still, you know, with 25 big blinds, does have play in his stack, is going to have to be a little bit more selective with the spots that he chooses to get involved in. So we'll stay right here. See if Ike likes four or five as much as Alexander did. Oh, that one go. <laughs> Answer is no. Yeah, maybe against you know weaker opponents idea. he might defend, Learn but surprising myself even. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get involved in a speculative situation there against Fedor. <coughs> Can't blame him. Fedor's one of those guys that'll put you in the blender. He's like poker's Jamba Juice. <laughs> it's kind of amazing that Jamba Juice really had us all fooled for a long time, thinking that the smoothies were healthy when there's just a ton of sugar in those. You know, you can ask at some of these smoothie places for no sugar to be added, because some of them literally will put, like, Tropical Smoothies, this chain out in Vegas. Oh, yeah. They can just say no added sugar. But still, uh, the mix that they kind of toss in there, you know, there's, like, always a scoop of sherbet. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah. I know. It's what makes them taste so good, but it's really not as healthy as one would think. They're like, oh, I'm going to get a smoothie. Yeah. Well, King Queen, plenty healthy, although not as healthy as top pair. Fedor having open once more, this time from under the gun. Murray defending and flopping the Broadway gutty. Checking it over. Check call from Williams as he hunts a 10. Ooh, four-sider, but not the one. <gasps> Williams checking again. And Williams, of course, can have some Jack X here, you know, some hands that would be interested in perhaps continuing against another barrel, but Holtz not beating any other ace X's as he does have the weakest kicker with ace deuce. But now that Williams is willing to check on the river versus lead, I think that clarifies to Holtz the type of hands that Williams will have. Again, some containing the king queen, the king 10 combos, but also a lot of Jack X, as I mentioned, Holtz will perhaps try to pursue value from that part of the range. Knuckle back the turn, but with a third check in front of him, he will get after it, as you suspected. 115,000 and an easy release for the King Queen. You know, one of the things that often gets talked about by amateurs, businessmen, VIPs, invitees, non-regulars as we see the blinds going up when it comes to poker is how it is, if you call it a sport, the only one where provided that you have the buy-in, you can step into the arena and play against the best to ever do it. And I think for a lot of these very successful individuals who love kind of that 
challenge, mm -hmm. they're drawn to that oh. aspect of it. And, and it's, you know, very much delineates poker from anything else in that regard. Well, when you think about it, the lure, I think, for them and the appeal yeah, no, for some sorry. of these businessmen is they're so good at what they do in their day-to-day -day that they want to be challenged and they want to go up against the best. Mm -hmm. and they want to see if they're able to hold their own, and that's fun for them. You know, sometimes we have people saying, oh, well, I don't want to play against the best, but isn't it kind of an interesting proposition to see how you stack up against some of the best in the world and where else but mm -hmm. in poker do you have the opportunity to do that? All well, good points. <laughs> I mean, it's also why for auctions, for charity and whatnot, people are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to play a round of golf with Tiger Woods, right? It's just like the experience of playing with the best. Here's what I'll tell you about those hundreds of thousands to play with Tiger Woods, okay? You got no EV. You put the hundreds <laughs> right. of thousands down here. Not only do you get to play with the best to ever do it, but you could mess around and win four million and how about that it's Fedor trying to mess around and win the big blind but a sticky king 10 for KCG understandably defending Nine, eight, six board two overs backdoor spades in the gutty coming together for the Frenchman just bottom pair for Fedor, who looks on intently whilst he deliberates. <clears throat> Two quick checks and a quick <laughs> gutter coming right on in. For KCG. Board getting uglier for sixes. What I love about KCG's shirts is that they always look so comfortable. Like this man could play a day of poker and roll right into bed with that top. And It's funny. He kind of looks like French Hugh Hefner. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I feel as though if KCG were looking to diversify the portfolio, then an adult magazine brand could certainly fall nicely into Fits his investments, profile. you know? <clears throat> Next thing we know, he'll show up here playing poker in a robe. Velvet robe, slippers. And, and maybe two blondes on his arm. I was going to go with hairless cat. Mm, okay. But that's kind of more Dr. Evil. You know, <laughs> right. I, right. You see where I'm going with it, though. <laughs> Not a lot of imagination required for... Two jacks to open, as Shelukin has done. It is remarkable how much mileage we will get from those who are willing to kind of venture further into the fringes of fashion when they come to play at the featured tables. And I check in with a lot of these guys, let it be known. Hey, just want to make sure you're all good. You know it's love. We appreciate when you get out there. You wear something that you know is going to spark up conversation. Don't want to... <laughs> You know, upset anyone, of course. And there's been zero occasions on which anyone has ever been like, oh, yeah, I didn't like what you said about this. They're, they're having fun, you know? Bringing some levity. Two red kings now for first timer Murray Williams. <coughs> He likes it. Oh. 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 Oh.
interesting spot with KCG calling in between. Now, Shay Lukeen with Ace Jack of Diamonds in the big blind. It's a hand where sometimes you will see players go for the squeeze, but does end up just calling. Ooh. Ace nine four board here as not one but two players hop out in front of these kings. Rough stuff for Williams. Note that neither Shelokin nor KCG were willing to fire. Yeah, KCG checking in position and now still checked over to KCG. A little bit surprised that Shelokin doesn't decide to lead here. end up check calling the 75k as KCG obviously cannot check any longer with his ace out kicked and betting a call in front of you these two kings begin to feel like they're no good so clean yeah. procedures there from Murray doesn't lose anymore once that ace comes off And now KCG is wondering, you know, is his pair of aces good, even though he doesn't have a great kicker, but is he trying to get called by some queen X's? I don't really hate that river bet by KCG because as played, Shea Lukeen could certainly have weaker hands there that could pay off. It's just unfortunate that he had a big ace in the big blind. 150 ahead. As Shilakin took that one down. Meanwhile, here we are, Jean-Noël Torel. Three betting to 300,000 on this river. Elton saying with trip nines, bringing us up to speed. This was an open from JNT to 50,000. Both blinds flatted. Ace 10 9 board giving him middle set. He barreled through for 30. Both Danny Tang and Elton made the call. A round of checks after the nine paired on the turn. So a slow play from JNT. <laughs> leading How many times Tang to, to fire 35. No... Elton to raise yeah, to 150. And then the big three bet huh? to 300,000. <laughs> <laughs> spades come in. Maybe yeah, some King King is yeah, involved King. in the mix. Yeah, King. Whatever it is, Trip Nines didn't want to see him. Yeah, King. This may have something big, but. It's called. Uh huh. Thank you. Perderoi, no? Uh huh. My big point or first act? Your first act. Really I have you. That. Oh. 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 indeed. Big pick up there for JNT. Plus. He now marches on with 85 bigs. No interest from any of the players at the table there. It's no. going to be raise and take it. Yeah. Elkin. Uneventful one. 1025. Ah.
around and around we go. Mm. Ah. Oh. I think he was worried I was going to call and he has a shit hand. That's why he said he I saw call. my hand. Card, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. Five you did have a shit hand that hand though. You see it? Yeah. You watch on TV? Yeah. How, how can you have, no, I had ace for suited, it's not yeah. a shitty hand. Five seconds. I mean, once I call, your hand is not that good. You're under the gun. It's gonna be 50. Oh, yeah. mine's raised. Elton putting in the min raise here. with Jack Deuce suited, Queen 10-5. No pair anywhere, King of Spades working. Smith knuckling over as we've moved into the back, mid-back region, it would seem now. Head and neck have all been thoroughly kneaded out. Yeah, when you get to that area, you can really tell how much force she's putting into it by how much Singh's head just bobs, you know, up and down. There's that, like, slow upward or movement. Sometimes seismic activity on the table is well. You see some chips mm -hmm. bobbling around, you know. That's when you're really, there you go. She's, yeah. You ever seen them put the knee up into the back? I had that recently in Vegas. I feel like that's something that they should ask for your permission first, though. Oh, I told her. I was it like, look, I don't have a good chiropractor out here, so snap, crackle, and pop. Toot sweet. It feels like a bit of a violation if the massage therapist just puts their knee in your back. That's what at, I'm here for. You know, but at a poker table, you know, it's not really that, that kind of massage. Can't really what do you mean by that oh, kind of massage? No, you just you can't get in there. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. I mean... Not since I was pumping quarters into a double dragon machine had I had a knee put into me like this one. I mean, she, you know, it was uh, discount chiropractic work. I, I don't feel like chiropractic work is something that you should want to get at a discount. Feels dangerous. It's kind of like I saw an ad for lasik eye surgery and it was buy one get one exactly free. and i'm like you know what i don't want this type of deal i don't want the discount i would pay full price and then some this person's about to put a laser to my eye true story my ex took him up on that buy one get one free off and ended up with prk in one eye and lasik in the other and her eyes didn't look the same after that oh my gosh i didn't have the heart to really tell her and this is why I refuse to get LASIK. I, I don't care. People are like, oh, it's so safe. Uh, it's been around for so long. Time, I'm like, you know what? No, no, it's I'm my, okay with wearing my glasses. That's why she's my ex. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. <sighs> Meanwhile, 85,000 from Smith and Barbero somehow. Sorry. Finds yeah. the right timing Sorry. out of the big. Dominant A7. Blind beat, blind battles as the boys dig in. I mean, over there. This is it. This is it. I'm going to go. 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 係咩？我睇唔到喎。係啊，即係你講咩啊？我係咩 ？Prefab exposure。我屌，我冇睇啊。Yeah, sick。屌。How much？ 快啲。Sick。Rollabos is gonna run into it here under the gun, opening with this ace eight offsuit. Maria again showing kind of his liberalism up front. One thirty. Yeah, may just be running out of patience, but ace eight not the type of hand that he's gonna go with against the three bet. Just was hoping. To steal the blinds. 
That he was. Five back. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. Put it into the muck. Oh,我冇錯，你咁多埋。Put it <coughs> King eight suited for Smith in the cutoff. Opens. A couple of fives for Haralavos in the big. Certainly defend worthy candidate. Haralavos, 19 big blinds. I was going to say, could consider shoving, Four and he does. Piece. Which Smith cannot call with this holding. But it's good. Jam, making quick work of the open. As Volgaris works off of in the neighborhood of 20 bigs. Thank you. And we take a moment to talk about our official solver partners a GTO wizard who will help you take your game to the next level, analyze your played hands, practice by playing versus GTO, and solve any spot in the game with their GTO wizard AI. Join their exclusive membership giveaway and stand a chance to win a premium subscription, not to mention some merch. Just click on the link in our chat to enter. Scan that QR code that you just saw on your screen. I guess it's a little too late to scan the code now, but you know, when you see a QR code, you know what to do with it at this point. And to it's not think rocket science. QR codes were about to die an early death before the pandemic. I remember when it first came awesome. out and we were like, what, what are these for? Yeah. What's the point? Pointless. Mm -hmm. With 700 table? Sorry. Dan with back to back opens, yeah, this time with eight six of diamonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right, of course, yeah. Five seconds. Pocket threes, flatting. All of those surveys. Yeah, it felt a little bit jammy, didn't it? As he looked around, and it's going to be a mystery holding for the time being. Queen 10 suited. And no luck. Would have been a pretty one to play multi-way, and we're never going to know what Volgaris jammed with there. Right. I mean, I've never final table this. Uh, I never cashed this, so I don't know. What are you asking? You, you cashed a couple of times, don't you? I knew. 
Never. Actually, that's not true. What's the question? Are they are we playing, playing until, until the final table? I think final table, yeah. Yeah. Never cash this. Never cash any invitation. I mean, how many are there usually? A lot. Oh, really? Did you play the one million? Yeah. One million. So this is probably the fourth. More, I think. We had we had four this year already. Uh, there wasn't an invitational in Vietnam. There wasn't. Oh. How was Vietnam? Oh. Um, there was. My favorite ever you just weren't invited. Just <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. You ever go to Biloxi though? Oh, the, I have not been to Biloxi. No. Yeah. But there's there's this place called no. in book. the maze inside. In, yeah, I'm familiar with it. I'm not very well versed verse in the southeast. Ooh. Raising to 55,000 in Bulgaria. Are you, are you married? Now that Ace King suited anything? on the no. button, he's no. been at that okay. so, um, just jam depth, but <laughs> after having picked up a couple of pots, he now has 28 bigs coming into this one, Maria. Yeah, can go three bet, not all in, or can just shove. It looks like he is opting for the former. And this is going to be the third <clears> hand <throat> in a row where Vulgaris has gotten aggressive. Two shoves, and now oh. this three bet. How much you play more or less? But Thank this you. three bet almost feels stronger than if Heralbos were to shove. What is Barbero going to make of this? Odin. Are you all in? <laughs> Looks like he's going to ask for all of it. Bulgaris happy to oblige. And this is a disaster for Barbero as Bulgaris has spun a stack up to a meaty enough depth yeah. to cause real damage to the 1.1 that Nacho brought into this pot. This is a massive one and a half million chip pot. Oh, like 1.1. Ace King check against Ace Queen. And if Rolbos can hold here, he will be right back in it. Oh, ooh, oh, queen in the window, but Broadway rolls off. Top pair had Was hopes. The queen the window cut? Yeah. They were yeah. promptly yeah. dashed. Uh -huh. Garris with the nuts, and now the nine of spades on the turn for dessert. As Barbera drew only you to a chop. Yeah. Can't find one of the three well, the remaining the kings. I, in 2004, I did like... He'll be left like with just 361k no when the dust settles yeah, as Vulgaris, all of a sudden, Maria, up to one and a half million. Crazy. That puts him, you know, fifth or sixth in chips overall. That it does. Some people never get out. You go to a place like Biloxi. They, they used to serve uh -huh. his, um, fried. Uh -huh. like, Balls of like it's like Asian food, but it's like just pure buffalo sauce and like fried balls. It's the worst. So bad. It was kind of fun though, because you have like these old school stuff. Like, like the PLO games. Yeah. Like it was different. It was fun back then. A lot of like road hustlers, con artists and stuff. <laughs> supposed to now. Like, okay, yeah, like, uh, Subco. Professional. Subco. Mm -hmm. Characters. Okay. I can't say I know a lot about the player pool in Biloxi. Oh. Oh. Nor do I. Strikes me as a cast of characters, though. Oh. Oh. Oscar's like over it. Because I haven't oh, made Oscar's eye contact with you anymore. Down there. Uh -huh. Hey, oh. come give me a high five. Come on, give me five. Give me five. Where's he at? Give me five. Five. Atta Aww. boy. Oh. Cute. Oh, you stink. Oh, go, go, go back, go back. He's well, he's down by everyone's uh, feet yes. all day, or all day. <laughs> I mean, it's not like a you know, okay, bouquet of petunias the down there. You don't smell that bad. <laughs> oh, you got bad gas. Go, 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 go lay down. Go, go lay down. <laughs> Is Oscar go ripping away. him right. under the table? Oh, lovely. Hey, careful, you knock the camera down. Down. On the button. Jack cool. nine. How Were you cute. Ready, like a serious I really, basketball you know, better at the time? 
when you're playing. Pet, and, but so I you travel too much. To go play like a 3K and I could just be like Bob and no, bring him everywhere. Play 3K. I was playing like the 10 Ks. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, Elton came along for the ride against his buddy like Danny and stuff like that. Yeah, it's up. Yeah, I started. I was like a serious basketball. Looks like JNT joined the party as well, though not sure where his cards are. Okay. And why doesn't he get to be as big on the screen as his opponents? It's like a mini JNT avatar. Yeah. Betting on credits. Massive edge. It's pretty hard not to. Pretty hard to go broke. It's like almost impossible. Bet ninety thousand. Elton looks like he might be. Oh a much younger version of himself that has shown up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like super short, <laughs> just standing at the rail. <laughs> Whose little brother was allowed to come play in this 200K, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, note that JNT has flopped the queen along with Elton, both of them in front of Danny. Though it is the gut shot straight draw that fires this 90,000. Elton, perhaps worried about, of course. Can, can he raise? No. He, he cannot, right? OK, good. He's the got king a call. Okay. Yeah. on board otherwise here. It's pretty sick, right? Yes. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great move. Seconds. Yeah. Ninety. Now that Tang gets called in two spots without improving on the turn, most likely going to shut it down. Time to put a black next time. Another 270,000 into the middle and no magic on the turn. Although for JNT, the presence of this pair on board now leaves him chopping with Elton at a showdown. As again, they both check cautiously. Fun hand. Now the flush comes in. Yeah, after the round of knuckles on the turn, Danny clearly yep. not wanting to barrel. Scared me. Bet you're going to the nice diamond yeah. shows up. And again, Queen's up in two camps. Doesn't want to bet. Check. Sit down. Queen. Danny. Will give up and queen, queen, his queen, chips queen, queen, jack. Queens and sevens for the oh. king. will be chopped queen. by the blinds. No, no, bad hand over here. Ultimate slow roll right here. <laughs> Danny wondering if he could have maybe gotten them off that hand at some point, perhaps on the river, but just tough to bluff into two people there, you think especially with- it was likely that the maps were gonna get Luca, or is it he just- JNT overcalling that flop. Flipping it back over, we find Vador holes a pre-flop raiser to 55,000, having picked up Shilukin with the better of the two ace highs. On an 8-4-3 board, Alexander, check call the 75K C bet. Turn went check, check. Now here we are at the river where the eight has paired. An ace high has showdown value, especially when the river pairs the eight from the flop. But Holtz is wondering, you know, perhaps is he trying to target a 4x or a 3x here? Does he need to perhaps turn his hand into a bluff, decides to just check back? And that jack kicker is gonna play. 
Always nice to be able to get to those showdowns without having to make a call. <coughs> Need a ticket? Yes. Shellokin earning those difficult to obtain Fedor bucks. Oh, by the way, that decks are hand shuffled here. I think a lot of players, especially when you're at these stakes, like to keep those shuffle machines out of the equation. <coughs> Does, of course, slow things down a tad, but well worth it for the peace of mind. The only people that probably don't like it are the dealers. Oh, yeah. Well, I think our dealers are well taken care of in the end. Understood. <laughs> Take it. Yes, why not? Well, flipping it over, we find all of Richard Young's biscuits looking for a little gravy. Jammed over the top of an Andrew Pantling open for 630,000. And Tim Busso is jamming over the top of him. So yeah. Yeah. it would take a lot of hand for Pantling to wake up with, but it should be a lot of hand for Busso in turn. Richard will be relieved to find himself with two overs in the form of ace queen against these two jacks, but that is not the board that helps him, nor the turn. Six outs one time. And that's going to do it. Triton co-founder Richard Young eliminated. As we are down to just 18. <laughs> Meanwhile, we flip it back over and find Shelukin on the button attacking with queen nine. Williams sharing a nine in the big. Against the button open can certainly defend this. A lot of times you'll have two live cards instead of just one, but Williams thought about it and decided to fold. Oh. So I felt against Fedor or Norbert again. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. What the? Same feeling I had folding my big blind to Fedor or Norbert again. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. That was more than one Norbert again. But I still feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let go, huh? You still resist yeah, for no. it. Yeah. Nice hit. Well, I think the <coughs> KCG got me in trouble with dream. just 12 big blinds. It's never Torturing a me. good spot to be in as we approach the soft bubble. No, it isn't. The small blind of Williams comes with the min raise sizing with Jack Four suited. Unfortunately for him, Fedor's got a suited Jack of his own that dominates. Yeah, That's interesting that Williams is choosing to get aggressive from the small blind into Fedor's big blind. You know, even even limping in with these suited hands would be fine as well. And kind of surprised mm. to see the check because if you're going to be raising from the small blind, it feels like an ace high board is probably a decent texture for you to continue to bet. Both players did check that flop. 
despite Fedor having position and middle pair. Now a second check in front of Fedor. Starts to feel like the Jack-8 could be good, although I think based on what we've seen, namely the Pocket Kings last time from Williams, he could have the eights beat and just be tiptoeing his way through it. Yeah, definitely a possibility. And Williams has some equity with that straight draw now, but still not willing to bet himself, not trying to semi-bluff this spot. And for Holtz, wanting some protection here. One fifty. Wow, Ali comes with the check raise. Quite unexpected, <laughs> but does have that equity. This is something that I did not anticipate from Murray Williams. We thought we had him pegged. We thought we had a profile on this man. And suddenly, against the likes of Fedor Holtz, no less, he summons the courage to take this deeply unorthodox line. And if you think we feel like it's unorthodox, just imagine being in Fedor's seat. Well... The question becomes, what is he repping? You know, what type of hands does he feel comfortable check raising? You know, would top pair be willing to check raise with that type of straight possibility out there? Well, Fedor, certainly suspicious, makes the call. Williams is unimproved. You know, Holtz also blocking a set of eights. So, you know, it's nice to... Wow, just like the casual nature in which he said and he declared that bet. Yeah. And, and just the small sizing as well. It almost felt like he should have had a lasso and a six-shooter in his hand when he declared 75 there. <laughs> like a spaghetti western. And the sizing, bit of a limp noodle. Yeah, it just feels like you're getting such a good price if there's just any random bluffs in there, That's which good. we can see this is good. one of those. Bring me a bottle of water, please. Okay. It's just really hard to know what Williams is trying to rep with the line that he's taken. You know, wouldn't really be doing that with just one pair type hands. Uh, it looks like Fedor is going to go deep in the time bank looking at Williams. You know, really only able to rep sets here credibly because I don't think Holtz thinks that Williams is going to be raising pre with 7-4 here. does come with the call. Pretty sure you got it. And that is not a hand that anyone at this table expected Murray Williams to flip up as he gets creative and <laughs> it gets costly. Murray impressed at Fedor's ability to sniff it out. The turn perhaps a bit more impressing, impressive rather than the river given the sizing, but I wonder what happens if Murray actually comes three quarters or full pot. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard then at that point for Holtz to call again. You know, really only repping sets or two pair there, I think, for Williams. And Holtz blocking some of those hands, but still probably for a bigger sizing. Just going to give Williams credit because he hasn't seen Williams get too out of line so far. So would have felt like that was coming out of left field and... Usually when you see something happen, that's an anomaly, you know, something that goes against what your perception of that player is. Usually the first time you'll give them credit and then continue to develop your read. <laughs> so a nice 
Bluff catch there from Fedor with the eights. Williams slips to sub one million. Meanwhile, Holtz right up there toward the top of the leaderboard at this feature. Shalukin still with the chip lead. And the dirty diaper in the Going small blind will earn Chapegatien a walk. Good with that one. Something that he oh. dearly needs. You call if I go in? <laughs> Maybe if I show. <laughs> if I show. Uh, <laughs> 18 players <laughs> left and there will be a redraw so at 16 <laughs> as they continue to play down to the money and then to the final table. Not quite close enough to the money for it to ever get through. <laughs> I think a <laughs> configuration of money where maybe 300 million, 400 million <laughs> might be. Only. Haxton. <laughs> Into the bin. Along with the dirty diaper behind him now. Holtz, an ace on the button. Gonna jam it. It's probably better than 3 2. Right. Yeah. Pardon. Blinds. Can't dig in. What did he say? Other than dinner break, what else did he say? 60 minutes after this level. Yeah, after. Uh, but other than that, what did he say? We will not be the feature table anymore oh. unless we redraw before dinner break, right. in which case, who knows. Thanks, man. Yep. I am on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them was paying you attention. You didn't even need him to say it. You just knew it already. You're like, I know this. I think I have a good backup job as tournament director if mm. this doesn't work out. Did he, no. did he say that we're here for another hour after 50. this one? Uh, no, he said there's a one-hour dinner break. Oh, after this one-hour dinner so break. So in 11 minutes, we okay. so got him have dinner. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. Haxton opening with a couple of fours. As talk of the dinner break circulates. 300. KCG looking to head to that break with hopefully more than this short stack that he has shoved forward. His hopes pinned on a King Jack off suit. Does Haxton <coughs> want to be the man to give him a spin? Does still have fold equity with 12 big blinds. So it's really up to Haxton to gauge how well fours yeah, are going to be I'll doing. With you. And he says, I think I'll gamble. Race. Okay. And it very much is a race, Haxton. Kind of a best case scenario. Faded the over pair and now needs to fade two over cards. <coughs> Can KCG get to this dinner break and do so with more chips than he brought into this pot? Not looking that way on a 10 8 5 board. Three safe overs to the red fours the of Haxton. Brick turn. <laughs> and now, KCG needs to hit a six outer. And that's the one piece of artwork that he didn't want to hang on this wall. As he will not find his way to the end of day two here in the Invitational. And his departure leaves us with 17 players. That just wasn't KCG's day. It didn't really seem like he misplayed a big hand. <clears throat> I think it was just a matter of not really having good spots. You know, there was that one hand where he did take a high variance line by calling off with the flush draw.
against the check jam of two pair. So we flip back over to our other feature upon the departure of KCG where we find Dan Smith and JNT ready to find the river. Smith opened the 60, Garibli and JNT wasn't the big blind. Both came along. The ace 4 10 board, a round of checks. The Smith then turned Broadway with this king queen. Yeah, pretty painful. You wonder, you know, if he doesn't river to pair, him being JNT, would he be able to fold here once Smith bets? Does also block the nut flush. But up against the under the gun opening range, you know, even two pair here can easily not be good. Yeah, that 115K call on the turn by the ace three, Great. which has improved. Great. Turns into a 275K call on the river. And Smith. Turning a big one there. Almost one million. Dude. That'll be something to whet your appetite with as the dinner break does loom. Perhaps an appetite suppressant for JNT, though he still has 50 blinds. Yeah, it's been a really great day for Dan Smith. Just been trending upwards, it seems. Barbero. Well off of his high water mark with ace 10. Makes it 55,000 to go. JNT in the small blind. Sitting this one out. Well, the suited nature of this ace four in the big blind certainly makes it a prime candidate for getting in there. Even against an under the gun open, you know, if it were off suit, perhaps not. But now actually just willing <laughs> to put it in against Barbero. 18 bigs. Is Barbero willing to, to call it off, especially when it should look somewhat strong in terms of the position that Barbero opened from. And so for the value part of Smith's range, Ace-10 probably not going to be doing that well. But we've seen Barbero sniff out spots with some of the weaker Ace-Xs, where he has been willing to go with it before. Nacho being asked for all of it and finding his way into the middle, dominating Dan. Prime hands. opportunity for him to bounce back in a 937,000 chip pot. Dan's got the ace four. He's pretty easy to me. You're running good. The four of clubs has the weird letters on it. I have a, I have the four of clubs. Oh, oh my wow. god. And jack four. I was fucking saying with you. <laughs> Not in trouble. Not in trouble. I would consider this a good situation. You're getting guys. You're getting not though. Is it? Right. Actually, the only four that didn't open is the four of clubs. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I read wrong. I knew Flopping trip fours and giving crossing things crossing a villainous laugh as the I'm river comes out, Barbero. No laughter for you. on him. Yeah, yeah. terrible call, but yeah. he gets Still comes showered. Oh, wow. Jack four Clearly clubs. not Ooh. humored by that one. And his player ID was 44 as well. You were destined to win. Thank you. No mercy in the deck sometimes, Maria. You've been on both sides of it. 
Yeah, and it's just a spot where he made the right call. And of course, sometimes you get rewarded and sometimes you get punished. Left. We're 16 left right now? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says up there. 16. So, five minutes down to 16 players, draw. which means we can consolidate yeah. down to two tables, which will require a redraw. And given that we're. Right on the brink of the dinner break, how about we take care of everything all at once? So, the formalities as we head to that break. Elton Sang, your overall chip leader, shy of three million, but still very much ahead of Dan Smith, who is up and over two million after showering Nacho Barbero in savage fashion. Putting Barbero all in, ace four against ace 10, as you just shot. So, JMT, Volgaris, neck and neck, and then down to Garibli who's been largely quiet as we bring you back to the desk here, Ali and Maria with you. And it's been an entertaining half of the day so far. We are just about set to hand things off to Randy Liu and Henry Kilbane, who will take you through the end of play. But before we do, how about just your last thoughts, summing things up here before we pass the torch? A lot of tough players left as this field gets closer to that money bubble. You know, looking at the top five stacks, of course, we have Singh up top, but Smith, Mosbach, Pardo, Tang rounding out that top five. So a lot of killers left. Yeah, no doubt about it. And David Yan among those killers, but not a killer stack in front of him. You can see just 21 big blinds. In front of David Yan from New Zealand, 515,000. We will have a redraw. So these seats, as you see them on the app right now, will change when we come back from the break. That break is going to be about 40 minutes in length, 45, I'm being told. So set your alarm. Go grab a bite. Do what you need to do alongside the players. But make sure that you come back and see us as coverage of day two of this $200,000 Triton Invitational will continue in just a few moments. Good night. Across the world, more so many players. This is a crazy. It's a doozy. GG Poker broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of best Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Larger than all other GG Poker. Traffic reaches all-time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Jump, 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 jump. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
flop, 10-9 deuce, the queen's cozy for the time being. Sweat. <laughs> and there is some vulnerability as the gut shot straight draw added to the snowmen that Sang needs to hit to end Ivy's run. Oh, oh, oh my. my. Sorry, Phil. Here, Phil. <laughs> Phil brandishing a big smile there, but yeah, obviously a gut. No, I was, I, yeah, that's why I was. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Yeah, that's why I was. You have kids? I was manifesting. Trangelo now. That was my fault. Mm. Pocket yeah. fours. That's greedy. And Ramin, ace queen suited right behind him. 22 bigs certainly could just shove over this hijack open. <laughs> Haxton fresh mm. off his double up. 20? Just having Kaji have slightly covered. 217? No, those are fours. It's 250. 180, 190, jam, 205. as we saw him do with Ace King earlier. 215. 215. It's, uh, it's 215, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah We're good. Yeah. Certainly from this position, tens is looking seconds. like a good hand. Okay. okay. Is it close or is it clear cut? Oh. I think it's clear cut against these so positions, I. but... You know, you're only mildly afraid of Petrangelo behind you, but he did open from the hijack. Relieved to see Nikki P yep. out of the way and relieved not to be up against an over pair to the tens, but a lot to fade here. He's Ike is the covering yeah. stack ever so no slightly. Oh, really? Yeah, I cover. Yeah, I have 246. So we play for 480 and Hajiev's future. Five, seven, nine, ace and queen free. Ramin needs to pull the same rabbit out of the hat that Ike did here on this river by hitting one of his overcards to the tens. Yeah, no yep. magic. Year of Ike. <laughs> it never Just ends. like that, Ike is up to 51 bigs. And on the other side of that same coin, Ramin Hajiev is... Found your watch. Oh. Apparently somebody got shot, a drug dealer got it or somehow. Holy shit. They said, we're going to send it back to you. Can you prove the serial number? He gives the proof. They send it back to him with the same watch. But now it's completely covered in diamonds. Oh that is so funny. <laughs> it was like, but it was so many diamonds I'm that you everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. How lucky is that? Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Story time oh, with right. Pamling there. He got, he got, he got it uh, like the band tightened, so that was like too tight. Uh, too many diamonds. At least he had some diamonds. Yeah, that's, really, really, that's really yeah. funny. Pamling just looks like a guy with good stories. He was playing poker. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He plays for fun. I remember everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Elton. Kid Looking like a guy who's got a dominant yeah. king no, in the big blind. Oh. Chooses to defend in, uh, against the coon like Min-Rays like open with king 10. Uh, yes, on the, on the dot. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Able to sell those and both buttons. players hit the king. Of course, Good. Sang yeah, with the benefit much, like, of two pair, courtesy of that jack. Like who, who wants that? Yeah. Has yeah. trouble on the horizon, <laughs> potentially, <laughs> for coon. Yeah, a lot of the times Kuhn is just hoping that he's going to capture some value from inferior king X's and jack X's, plus all of that flush and straight possibility too, but not going to necessarily be putting Sang on top two. But how does Sang want to proceed? Does he want to go ahead and fast play, or does he want to try to reel Jason in? But with the presence of, again, all of those draws, does feel like 
the fast play is a better option here. Check raising 40 up to 140. And of course, Jason with top pair. Too much hand to go anywhere, but obviously not the stack that he wants to tussle with, Maria. Yeah, but does have the benefit of playing in position and, you know, doesn't block a lot of those draws. Has no diamonds. Blocks, you know, queen 10, 10, 9. And that's a sopping wet turn card, the 10 of diamonds. Jason making the inferior kings up, but obviously coordination and the flush texture to boot. Yeah, essentially almost every draw from the flop gets there with that turn card. So even a lot of the semi-bluffs that Sang has now gets there. So for Kuhn, not necessarily feeling too excited about turning two pair, but Sang also not feeling too excited about mm -hmm. his two pair. But once you have a check in front of you, you do feel somewhat tempted to maybe charge any of these draws that might have been picked up or deny equity? That's only if you think that Sang is checking here all of the time as, you know, having some type of hand that is ending up as a bluff catcher with that particular turn card. You know, does Sang ever have traps here in terms of could he be check raising the flop on a draw, getting there on the turn, and then <laughs> trying to go for another check raise? But, you know, as you mentioned just how wet that board is. Well, Jason Kuhn could, inclined to go small here. He bets 80,000. He could think to himself, ace, queen, I would have heard from pre-flop out of the big. If he doesn't expect queen, nine, or eight, nine to take a check raise line on the flop, as Elton did, then he's left with am I up against diamonds, which of course he unblocks, but he would be drawing live against that sort of kit with two pair. <laughs> how about this for a disaster river for both players? The queen of diamonds putting a four-liner and a four-flush out there. Yeah, this is an action killer run out for saying, you know, could have gotten a lot more chips in the middle if the turn and river bricked off. And now just wondering, did he get done in by the run out? Will one of these guys feel like they need to turn their hand into a bluff? Because that's not the sort of board texture that suggests we can hunt value with kings up. Yeah, well, you see saying going ahead and checking it over, which, you know, when you have somebody as good as Jason Kuhn in position, you're not really going to be leading this river as a bluff. You're really just hoping to get a free showdown. But if Kuhn's the one that decides that he wants to perhaps try to get Sang to fold out some straights or some weak flushes, this is going to put Sang in a very tough spot if Kuhn decides to go for it. My hand's too good to bluff, so I'm going to check and hope you have king seven. Check. King ten. So you heard Jason walk us exactly through his thought process. Boy, as I reflect on it, London was a pricey stop. <sighs> we had a 200K, a 250K, and a 125K in quick succession. That'll add up on the ledger. Yeah, and, you know, even here, coming in and just kicking things off immediately with the 200K buy-in, you know, it might end up feeling pretty bad for a couple of the players that, you know, perhaps were in for one entry plus a re-entry to go into the series down 400K right from jump. A jam from Badziakuski's Jacks over the top of this ace nine open from Elton and Adams wakes up with two sevens in the small. 11 plus bigs on ask. Yeah, and Adam's trying to figure out, you know, perhaps saying going to be a little bit wider, opening off of the big stack, 
which does allow Badzi Akuski, of course, to shove a little bit wider as well. So it doesn't necessarily need a hand as strong as Jax to be shoving. So how well are Sevens performing against Bads's shoving range against things open. All of that taken into consideration and ultimately leading to a fold from Adams as it gets back over to Elton. <sighs> well, if sevens are no good, then one would imagine ace nine isn't either Maria or a different proposition with 20K already invested in a much deeper stack. Slightly different proposition, but I still think that he can find the fold here. Another ugly one. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's... Ends up making the call, but very yeah. self-aware about it, as he says, another <laughs> ugly yeah. one. And obviously the spot is ugly as well. Just 28% equity for Sang. Baz is going to be loving this one. Do we call? Is that the four ball? Yeah, I thought about it. You got 32? Yeah. How much total? At one point, Badzi Akuski was tied for most career Triton titles with Jason Kuhn. The Belarusian, 17.8 million in career. Triton earnings, 21 caches, four titles. Jason breaking away all the way up to nine titles. And this flop breaking the heart of the two jacks. An ace on the board, putting Sang in front. Not the paint that Bads needs to see on the turn. Is a jack available to keep his hopes alive here in the 200K Invitational? The answer is no. I am sensing a pattern for saying, though, every time he calls when he's behind and is unsure of his decision, he ends up getting there anyway. So what does it matter? And so obviously some tables are going to be deemed a little bit more attractive than others. I haven't looked yet. Patrick Antonius, one of the shortest stacks in the room but right now. In fact, only on Tony G is shorter. And a small blind with this Jack-9. <coughs> and he jams it. It is a call in hand. No, really? Oh, I got yeah. the ja Jack-9. <laughs> <laughs> Greenwood suited That's one scary. gapper. Oh, Enough to give Patrick oh, a spin. Ball. The stompable, what's a Picture of the fin too. hanging in the balance in a 264k pot, and he finds oh. a nine, but unfortunately Greenwood finds a ten. So, so what Patrick, what is, what is a good card? Wants to find the jack or a nine, nine for the time <laughs> being, but Queen's a good call. Actually. Maybe there's a sweat card in his future. Yeah, we want an ace and a king. I was saying, yeah. six, not sweaty at all. Now it's five outs once for the Monaco resident. And that is a one a good game. A wrap of the rail. That was much easier than winning the It didn't Angle take side. long for us to lose yeah, our first uh, player. Long oh, Here in the second frame <laughs> of play, pulled elsewhere. As Nikolai off of a shorter stack than he had moments the ago. <laughs> Given a King Jack I suited. <laughs> I thought fake. I thought Jack. I thought fake too. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the one to make it look Jams it in. very confused. 16 I, I, I big really blind shove from under the gun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Certainly has to be a pretty strong range, so not going to get it's looked up light. Oh. Jump, please. One hundred and ninety-three thousand. Haxton with the goods. Pocket queens in the cutoff. Doesn't feel like he needs to ISO here against a 16 big blind shove. He could just simply call most of the other players. Probably not going to get involved for that many bigs. Wow. And that does hold true as Haxton. Somebody said the king. <laughs> Not me. It's the only yeah. customer. You're alive. Nikolai soliciting some intel. Trying to find out if all the kings are alive and well. 
as he's going to need to welcome one of them to this board for the time being to nose in front of the Queens. And not home on a 9-4 tray board. <laughs> not available on the turn either, and that brings Mikolai to his feet. Can he hit the three-outer? No, as instead a two-ball in the corner pocket for Haxton. Didn't need it, of course. A set of queens, officially, <laughs> bringing Vice No, Because Yuri would never be caught dead oh, no. in an Arkansas Razorbacks jersey. Yuri would be here with some incredibly well-tailored pants, maybe a, a polo with a little blazer. Yuri's the kind of guy that looks like he mixes a mean old-fashioned. You know what I mean? Like, if you walk up to him and ask for just a, a nice craft cocktail, he looks like he's got you, you know? Yeah. Like a, an heirloom caipirinha. Right. Seems like something he can get, get down with for you. you know? Yeah, and, and the type with some type of bespoke beard grooming kit. <laughs> Producer James <laughs> stepping in to just call it football. It's not wrong. Rest of the world. King six suited now for Smith. Second floor. No, just a limp from the small blind. And Pantling wagging his finger at that. You can understand the desire to limp with a hand that warrants being played as opposed to raising and giving Pantling a chance to pounce on you for a three bet. Absolutely, against a player as aggressive as Pantling, especially when you're out of position where you know, you have a hand like Smith's, you wanna see a flop, limping is always a good play there because it ensures that you'll still get to, get to see a flop for fairly cheap. And what a flop it is, yeah. as both players are all over it. Top pair for Smith, second pair on the open ender for Pantling, along with the lead in position, coming together for a 27K C bet. Normally, you're not going to put too many hands in Pantling's range as the preflop aggressor that's going to connect this well with this type of board. But with Pantling, you never know. So You really don't. <laughs> Another 54,000 into the middle, courtesy of the check call from Smith. And the turn, giving him kings up. And this is where Pantling's aggression can get him into trouble, Maria, as he is reaching for chips and blasting. 63,000. Reasonable sizing. Yeah. But when Smith limps pre-flop, calls the raise, and then limp calls this flop, you do have to give some credit to what it is that he's proceeding with, and the 4-5 could maybe afford to check back? Yeah, but I think maybe Pantling is feeling like that turn card is going to be a perceived good card for him. So maybe trying to fold out some 6-Xs because at the moment his pair of fours doesn't quite beat that. Probably not necessarily going to put Smith on a lot of the king six type two pair hands unless they were suited. You know, some of the weaker king X's, Smith would have probably limp folded against a raise pre. And for Smith, you know, it's about if he wants to put in a raise here or just continue to call. And it looks like he is gonna raise pretty substantial four X here. Indeed. And this is why Pantling might be regretting not checking that turn because does he want to call this much more in order to see the river and try to realize that equity he has with the open ender? But hey, Pantling lives for a big pot. That he does. River card. Doesn't help the 4-5. As Pantling making the call, bringing this thing up to 626,000. And I think Smith very cozy with Kings up. 
on this river. Is actually the covering stack. Yeah, and some of the combo draws missed, you know, perhaps the straight draw with the backdoor flush draw. Smith wondering how big he could go here on the river. We get our answer. 415,000, and of course, that's a lot of weight on the back of a pair of fours. It would be almost half of Pantling's remaining stack to call. And he blocks the straight, but he, you know, might not feel that comfortable considering, of course, Smith limp called here. He could have some sets here as well that he would play this way. And a huge pot going Smith's way. Yeah, as ultimately... KCG has a complicated relationship with buttons. <laughs> Maria, at each and every stop, you know... The sex symbol index goes up higher and higher <laughs> on him. Pocket jacks for Orpin. Takes us upstairs to 26,000. Another king-queen for Buso suited, and it's into the bin. And I think we've got our verdict, Maria, as you shake your head with respect to just how snug Buso is approaching things. Yeah, and you certainly have to be careful because once your opponents start picking up on that, they will find ways to exploit it. And if you're not mixing it up, then it gets to the territory where you're gonna be predictable and you never wanna be a predictable poker player. Well, that is generally a costly approach and costly is one way to describe the future for unimproved tens, as Igor Yaroshevsky of Ukraine, three betting to 90,000. And Orpin <coughs> jamming over the top. Igor covered, snap calling, and we're going to play for 726,000. And the straights are dire for Igor. He knows it. As he scoots back away from the table here. In need of help. That help is unavailable thus far, though the seven and the nine do present some backdoor straight options. Those hopes are dashed, and it is a lone 10 that will rescue Igor from elimination. And it isn't there. Good looks issued by Yaroshevsky. He is quietly done away with. Tim Adams. In charge of Queen Jack. 30K the open. Axton ace 10. Timothy started the hand with 19 bigs. Paxton, can I give him a little respect? Lost box. Uh, bad card. Ace Jack. Too much to go away. Now, but also deemed not enough to three bet in this flat, um, yep. presenting Pantling with a, an opportunity right. in the big. Yeah, I think, you know, just want to tread carefully against right. 20 big blind open here with a hand like ace jack. But Pantling, of course, 
not somebody who, again, sees an opportunity and doesn't take it. He has certainly shown us that he always likes to amp up the aggression whenever he's presented with the chance to. And now Adams is going to have to fold. But what about Mario? You know, despite Pantling's image, it still ha looks pretty strong for Pantling to take this line against Timothy Adams op opening off of a 20 big blind stack. And of course, a very big three bet yeah. at that. The, the sizing, obviously. Um, you just touch it and you can feel a big a dent in it. Oh, that's a good bit. But always in support of our outfit over here. He is British, and as such, really is of questionable culinary <laughs> provenance. Queen 10 for Mosbach. Nothing questionable about it. Suited one gapper. Big stack. Goes to work, but of course the ace-king will be heard from. Yeah, and just the right stack here for Adams. 18 big blinds, gonna go three bet, non all in sizing, but obviously committed here with this holding. One black, right? Yeah. The butters really got chat going, by the way. They, <laughs> they know a little something about French butter. Seventy-two thousand in the face of these two red queens for boss. As this spot was mildly overshadowed by French butter <laughs> briefly, and we'll see whether or not boss wants to butter this one up further. I feel like, given Adam's stack size, this could very easily just be a shove here from Paul. He tends to agree, and you heard him say, "Oh no!" As Adams. Did find the call. Good yeah, news for Paul was always that he has the covering stack, and oh. he's also got the best hand. <laughs> 600 and 21K in the middle, and Adams needs to improve if he wants to proceed. And he's done so. An ace on the flop. Diamond works. Backdoor Broadway opportunities as well for the time being. And okay. There's that flush draw as the queens now have company in terms of outs. Adams needs to fade. Can he do it? No. Ooh. He can't. And two running diamonds downing that ace-king suited, which vaulted so far in front of those queens. And a big boost. Paul Fwastak. under the gun. Courtesy of the elimination also for of Tim straight. Adams. So the Eight K more <laughs> in really front of Murray Williams. So that's going to be it for Eric Seidel. <laughs> now though, more all-ins. This that. time the Turk Orpen Kisichikoglu drawing a line in the sand with 10-7 suited up against a king queen. Ace 10 deuce is the flop. Juan Pardo. Needs paint and oh. finds it. Nuts on the turn as the pair of tens were in the lead ever so briefly. And that's going to do it for Kisser Chikoglu <laughs> as they are dropping like flies yeah. here midway through day two of this 200K Invitational. He's <laughs> gonna get paid, he's got 12 bigs in front of him. So then, there are the full breakdowns from the blue and the red table, respectively. Murray Williams presiding over the blue crew, and Elton upon Redsville. Mateos and David Yan, the respective shorties. As we've already got the cards in the air and action underway. He's 10 suited for JNT.
35K. Hmm. Pantling going to flat from the small with an ace-deuce offsuit, Maria. He's sticking with the program. <laughs> Well, Jan's going to have something to say about that. What looks like potentially a good squeeze spot for Jan with the dead money, but actually has a huge hand here. Jams the two kings, predictably. You wonder what JNT thinks about how well the ace 10 suited is performing against the Kings. Yeah. Well, as he parks his forehead in his palm, you can <laughs> tell he isn't thrilled to be in this spot. Can well afford to make the call sitting on 1.3 back. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow. But it is a lot being asked for by Jan. And so JNT exercising some restraint. Far easier fold for Pantling, of course. And stunner shades for David Jan. At the feature, you'll see a lot of sunglasses, just a product of our production lights sometimes being a bit intense to contend with. So a nice pickup there for Jan. Currently 21st of 24 runners. Excuse me. <coughs> One cold. Carl. Carl. Come on to the ice. How do you say ice in glass. French? Like glass. 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 Oh. Jack 10 off suit. Not of any interest to Williams. Pantling, though. You know, Maria, oh normally uh, Jan wakes up with aces now on the heels of Kings. I was going to say, you got to visit a, an amusement park to ride roller coasters. Not when Pantling's around. His chip stack has just been up and down like a true yo yo. You see him looking on with a wow. little bit of concern at Jan, who is thinking naughty things. Yeah, very, Flat. <laughs> very much so. Slow playing from the small blinds, and 6-4 suited. Certainly going to be good enough for a defend. French pronunciation is so hard, I just panic. French? Yeah. Shilukin being offered an opportunity to get into trouble from the big blind with the price, which he took, but on the king-king nine board, both he and Pantling look like they'll be able to avoid trouble, although one never knows. Two checks in front of Andrew, and he bets 50K into this board. And I tell you what, with Yan just calling here from the small blind, it just feels to Pantling like he can pretty much easily eliminate a lot of the strong king X's from Yan's range because he assumes that Yan would three bet those, would jam those, you know, the ace, king, the king, queen. Also the big pairs, of course, probably never expecting Yan to have aces in this spot, but does end up turning some showdown value. So does check back on the turn, which now the 10 appearing on the river, queen jack gets there, of course. You know, trips always a possibility. And Jan shows the aces. That's going to come as a bit of a surprise to Pantling. And, you know, I'll tell you what, in the spots in which Pantling is able to exercise some restraints, he saves chips, you know, because people are very different looking to get him to behave in the way in which they've seen him earlier with multi-barrel aggression. And, but he just really mixes it up. You can't nail him down. You can't put a finger on exactly what he's going to be up to. He's not a one-trick pony. Yeah, and for Pantling, I think the most important part is patience. I think that now that he's short, maybe he's going to get a little bit bored because he can't be quite as active. But, you know, if he's able to show a little restraint and wait for some good spots, his style certainly will benefit from when he does chip up and can play post more. But now at 21 big blinds. Oh. 
10 9 suited here for Germany's Fedor Holes. He always shows up for the big stuff, doesn't he? For a while. Thank Players you, thought they weren't going to have to contend with his talents as he retired, yeah. but then came out of retirement, much to their chagrin. And I would he's say done he's well since. solidly <laughs> unretired these days. Oh, yeah. Can't keep a good man down. Fedor with almost 11 million in career Triton earnings, three titles, 12 caches. Picked up a title in London in the 25K7 Max. Pocket four is for Haxton. The lone caller pre, and it's top two pair on a board where the fours should be able to easily avoid further damages. One large. No, no, Evian. But, but the big bottle. Uh, it's okay, okay, thank you. Fedor, action checked over to him, betting 30 into 95. Axton with the easy fold. Was that a sprite that Fedor uh, just... No, it looked like a Perrier. Okay. I, I, I was going to say, because I mean, it doesn't on. strike me as the sugary, fizzy drink guy. I, I'm pretty sure Fader's also a vegan at this point. I'm I, pretty sure Sprite's vegan. No, but I just mean healthy living overall. Okay, Sprite, you know. the amount of sugar in Sprite just doesn't really seem up his alley. Well, hang on, because it looks like we've got some sugar that's been poured into the middle in this particular pot, bringing you up to speed. It looks as though... Juan Pardo from the button preflop was an opener to 30,000. Kent Stahl in the big blind of Norway defended. Ace 9 9 flop. It went check check on the turn. Stahl then let out for 55,000. Pardo made the call. Here we are at the river. And it looks like Stahl has bet 75,000. And has Pardo acted yet? He has not. We await his instructions. A min raise just clicks it up. That's a little bit scary typically, but Stahl with the snap all in. Pardo snap calls. Stahl with just a queen. Maria obviously turning his hand into a bluff, feeling as though that little raise was Pardo being cute. And Pardo flicking it in, showing trip nines, 9-10. Off suit. That was a pretty savage three bet bluff. There. I mean, it came in so quickly. He didn't even give it a moment. Yeah, it, you wonder if maybe there's been some history and he ran out of patience, maybe feeling like Pardo was targeting him in other pots. Yeah. You got it, Marie. <laughs> Deep, self-inflicted wound sending Stahl out of there as Haxton trying to three-bet a pantling open. And then Murray Williams out of the big blind. Pushing back on the pocket threes with king-queen suited. I like what I'm seeing out of this guy. I, I, was yeah, I really that. was not familiar with Murray Williams whatsoever until yeah, I, yesterday. I, I, and now I like wrong. that when he's off I'll the big stack, he's willing to get <laughs> aggressive, especially against the top players in the world. Murray. Now fourth in chips overall, 1.7 million. David, yeah, bring back the the sideways pony, sideways man bun. Not, not really yeah. a look you see very often. <laughs> You know, he's got a mane that he's got to contend with when he's out there playing. Lustrous in nature, should be said. Pantling. High V-pip 
on display again. Ace four suited. This time, Axton not looking to three bet. But you see the types of adjustment that someone like Haxon is going to make in terms of, you know, wanting to play against a player like Panling in position. Yeah, wants to play pots against a stack that he thinks might be willing to get it all in and not necessarily have the best of it. But here on an ace-eight six board, very much Pantling has the best of it. Fedor, the only other player with a piece. That eight of hearts could keep him invested in this one as the field faces a 40K follow through. And Panling might not get credit here with this bet considering he limped in, you know, how many hands containing a good ace would limp here. But wow, Fedor just able to get away. And again, I think that's a product of the type of player Pantling oh, is. You know, he's not going to give up very often oh, yeah, yeah. on later streets. So maybe not wanting to call there with second pair. Meanwhile, no problem, bro. flipping it back over as Holtz does avoid further streets against the best hand. Well, we're getting a look at perhaps part of the equation that has led to Elton saying being your overall chip leader. <laughs> Ace is in the hijack. Smith could be on the duck hunt here. Brewer, pretty looking combo in the small blind. Jack 10 suited. On. And he deems wow. it a squeeze candidate. Yeah, and it's really unfortunate yep. because, you know, 37 big blind shove, there's not going to be a lot of hands that can call. Mm -hmm. It would work quite often, but here saying actually just taking his time trying to well we're getting a look at perhaps part of the equation that has led to elton saying being your overall chip leader <laughs> ace is in the hijack smith could be on the duck hunt here Brewer, pretty looking combo in the small blind. Jack 10 suited. On. And he deems wow. it a squeeze candidate. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate yep. because, you know, 37 big blind shove, there's not going to be a lot of hands that can call. Mm -hmm. It would work quite often, but here saying actually just taking his time trying to maybe <laughs> trap smith somehow feigning a little weakness without making it seem like he has an instant decision an instant call here fold and a call by elton and an easy release for the deuces as brewer sees that he ran into top of range How many times you get our aces? I didn't have them in the whole tournament. Or a barrel. Green with envy over. Just how well Elton has run. And Ad Brewer deciding to jam with Jack 10 suited to the run good for Elton. Not just getting the aces, but getting people to step into the trap. Once now. 6-3 leaves Brewer. 
demiking as he draws dead on the turn and will not be in the money in this one. Why? Hello. So then, must be nice to be in. He probably only remember the win. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, was it two days or three days? Three days. It had enough players to be three days. Like one day, second day, and they stopped for the third and final, third day final table. How won. many runners did they get? Thirty. Right. But it was intense, right? right? What's that? It was intense, I assume. No, it was pretty light. When is dinner break? It was like no almost, dinner break. No, Oh, Elton was one of the few pretend amateurs that snuck in as a pro, you know. The, <laughs> the rest are actual amateurs. <laughs> Actually, I do believe there is a dinner break. Everyone was like, but it wasn't was on the schedule originally. The, the, the Laying out to get this conversation <laughs> as Mateos <laughs> with Pocket <laughs> Kings open <laughs> from the cutoff. That's probably not true. Ilkin. Garibli, flatting, 30,000, trip eights, have these two kings in an awful way. <laughs> yeah, but this board could potentially save Adrian from getting too aggressive with the kings, you know, despite having an overpair to the board when we talk about the big blind defending range here, certainly can have so many straights here, can have a lot of trips. No reason to bloat this pot. You considering the million this year? <laughs> Board now double pairs. Got Ibli. I mean, why would you? Because if you viewed it as fun. On the heels of the check, check, flop, and the 30K lead and call. Looks up at this 145. I'm a, I'm Feels as though you can target some ace high here, even though as we can see, Mateos has far more than that. Yeah, and if you want to so target ace high, though. what What's type of size are you trying to go for? If you don't necessarily put your opponent on no, a hand good. as like strong as small, kings. Like, I mean, it might be a good tournament. I don't know. I guess there's like four. That um, feels about right. But, but like a lot of discomfort for Adrian, but not much he can do, but just try to bluff catch in this situation. Happens sometimes. Yeah, in DK. Regardless. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've been fat for like 12 years, right? So, and it took me five months to cut some weight. So. Good for you, bro. Yeah. Oh, it's good. You cut it like butter, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you cut it like butter with... <laughs> With that weight you had, it's so easy. Yeah, true. Try cutting weight at my weight. That's hard. Try cutting weight at your age. It's harder as well. <laughs> <laughs> the needles are flying here How do you as Elton. Well. Staying clear of the barbs. Oh. Delivering one of his own quietly and in the form of a 40K open under the gun with King Queen suited, which is running into the Argentine's Ace King suited. Nacho. Going to be delivering some cheese. And we're going up to 130 in total. Well, very warm welcome back to the sporting here in Monte Carlo, Monaco, Monaco rather. Good start, Henry Kilbane. <laughs> Randy Lou alongside myself as the players have returned from dinner break, Randy, and you and I have the absolute honor of calling the action, not only down to the final table, but through the most painful part of the tournament for at least three of these players. 13 paid, 16 left. There's a couple of people left in the field that are gonna go home with a very bitter taste left in their mouth after tonight. It's business time, right? It you know, really this is. This is when uh, tensions are the highest, you know, big stacks are looking to press on the shorter stacks, try to chip up, but it is all about the short stacks. They're going to try to hang in there, hopefully outlast one another, get that massive uh, pay bubble. Well, the pay bubble that Randy is alluding to, $300,000. That's what the top 13 places are going to be guaranteed. But to kind of dive into the shorter stacks that Randy's mentioning, that maybe 
going to sneak their way in. Maybe not. The likes of David Yan, who we know is very capable, took down his first event at a Triton Series in London, taking down the 200k for a career record live cash. Paul Pua, of course, boss. Record amount of cashes for a long time at a Triton Series. Up until this year, that was. Andrew Pantling as well, who we've seen in the mix getting involved. So a couple of newcomers, or relatively new, I should say, perhaps going to struggle with the pressure? Or is this they a kind of step up to the... They may, but the short stack is, what, low 20 big blinds. There's plenty of room to play. They can hang in there. They can make a move still and, you know, not be handcuffed to the hands they're dealt. I couldn't agree more. I personally think, looking at the stack depth here, we've got a lengthy bubble. So strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see who is going to lean into those shorter stacks and abuse this money bubble situation we find ourselves in. 300,000 for the top 13. Yeah, for the top 13, $300,000. Table chip leader, Alexander Shilakin over on the left, and Elton. It's good to see Elton with a lot of chips. We know that Elton is one of those players that is a big action player, willing to splash, isn't really worried about How many, uh, busting out at any moment if he thinks it's the right play. You know, Randy, typically we have to wait the better part of a week Maybe a bit more, we build up to the 200k invitation or we build up to the main event. Here in Monte Carlo, that's different. We're in Monaco, we're kicking things off with this 200k invitation. Or, and I'm all for it. High stakes, pain, day two. Day two. Biggest winners as well. Yeah, you know, like, brutal. Let's go. Elton Sang. Chip leader, 116 bigs. Dan Smith in second, Mario Mosbach in third. Some big names in the field. Juan Pardo, Danny Tang, so they, they Ike Haxton. Talking about the year Ike's on. Most earnings in 2023. Fedor Holtz, JNT, Boss Paul Poir, of course, David Yan. Oh, David yeah. Yan saying to Boss Paul, you're the boss, change the rules. That's not how it works, David. The rules are in place. Boss yeah. is a player. I know he's a boss, but he can't just snap his fingers. He's a boss, but he's, you know, he's taking a back seat. He's trusted us and the team. He just gets to enjoy battling at the highest stakes. That's hilarious. Bye. <coughs> Five, five, five. A couple five. ladies for Haxton on the button. Yeah, inquiring Service? to the amount that... Oh, hello, oh Aces. Oh, my word. The year of Ike Haxton we were just alluding to. Going to have one of the biggest road bumps for these ladies running head-on into the rockets of David Yan. 16 left. 13 places paid, $300,000 min cash. Going to be the biggest bubble of the series. As we see Yan with the three bet. And you know, there are worlds, Randy, right, where we perhaps see a, a slow play from these positions. But I assume with ICM, not going to be the case here. We don't want to be allowing Ike to, you know, see a flop with the wide range on the button. Plus, also, if you were slow play from a small blind, you let the big blind come along and snap call. Ultimate cooler. Great spot for the short stack, David Yan. <laughs> Did he say he folded decks? As long as you didn't fold like Queen 10. Boss. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, it is the shortest stack, but in prime position to double up to 40 bigs. You. Like 
five. <laughs> Looking good. One of the outs for Hagston actually brings another diamond, which is bad as it would give David Yen a redraw. But now with that seven, just two outs remaining. Holds with the aces. Tell you, that's a scary player to double up, especially when he's playing a healthy 40 <coughs> big blind stack now. Not only that, got to be feeling confident after London. And, yeah, that confidence really does go a long way. I've seen it. Just, like, do Danny so Tang, Jason play. Kuhn this year, just mm -hmm. coming into these events, and they've just got that, <laughs> that sense about them that they just show up expecting to win, expecting to run deep. And... When you have that confidence, it's really tough to play against. Huh? It's also tough to play against is this man, Dan Smith, I mean, I been cruising yeah. throughout this 200k I Invitational. Okay. I enjoy the like, the, I would enjoy a couple of hours of sleep. Yeah, yeah. Like if I slept for 25 minutes, I would like wake up and don't want to wake up. You know, uh, you Juan Pardo. Really very deep stack, 6-5 of clubs. If, if, if you do but it's hard because... If he defends this, he's making like, a statement as I'm not going to get run over. I'm going to need 15 minutes to wake up, to, to walk here, <sighs> to like... like he is getting involved. Shit, right? Okay, now I have like 40 minutes left, pretty much, right? So what if I don't fall asleep within 10 minutes? What is Danny well, rambling on about right now? I don't know what he's rambling on, but there is a key three-bit pot. Wouldn't mind him turning down that conversation for one second. <laughs> so for like, once? Are you actually asleep or not? <laughs> oh, um, or you eight, eight, five. No, couple of spades, one diamond, three-bit pot, as Randy mentioned. Smith with the pre-flop aggression. Spadeless. There's a lot of reason to kind of just throw in... Some chips, very, giving you three bed in position. Never, Your opponent didn't four bed you ace high board. <laughs> like, um, range advantage. Super fascinating. Yeah. For him, yeah, sleep I, is like 12 hours sleep. <laughs> For got that pair? No, not 12. I sleep like um, five hours a day. Oh, five? That's yeah. not a lot. Not of course, he's not going to just give credit to big aces and pocket pairs of Dan Smith. I couldn't function five hours. Danny, j sorry, Randy. He, he needs so to pipe it down just a little bit, right? You just, just say he second? sleeps five uh, hours a day. Otherwise, I can't sleep. Five hours a day. I will take yeah. the overs on that for my entire net worth. That yeah. is just the most nonsense thing I've ever heard. It's impossible. Like, you have to catch up at some point. What is he talking about? Seven on the turn, Randy. Open ender now. Yes. For Malacca style Smith. With what are those hands, though, Randy? No spade, no diamond, blocking. The strongest parts my, my, my of Juan's range, the ace queens of the world. Yeah, I'm sleeping like this. Don't think we're so going to see many ace king o's in there, there, but perhaps uh, but I'm good for you. some frequency. Yeah, this this is uh, yeah. this could be a frisky yeah. one. It gets tricky I, because if you bet the turn with this hand, you, you almost have to fire so most so rivers eight or nine, that like blanks out. A third of your life. Does just kind of give up. Yeah. That's not good. The eight improves the uh, pre-flop calling range. You know, you're, you're not expecting Dan Smith to three bet too many eight X's as well as C betting the flop at a high frequency. So for Juan, <coughs> mainly it's check and try to show down against these unpaired hands or if he's going to bet, go sizable, try to fold out some pocket pairs. Maybe some weak aces, Thank depending you. on what sizing he goes for. Do you mind grabbing this? And for him to think about it is, is it worth me turning his hand into a bluff right is. now? Thank you. Oh, have a look at this. Doesn't feel very bluffy in terms of sizing. Is this designed to fold out like... Tens, jacks, queens, kings? When you bet half pot, he's targeting precisely all of those hands. Never an ace. If he was trying to fall on ace, he'd probably go pot or bigger. Well, did not expect to see Juan turn this one into a bluff. Little does he know, actually has the best of it as Smith does make the fold and Malacca style, chipping up nicely. North of two million now as we <clears throat> close in on the $300,000 
Money bubble here. I feel in like Monte Carlo Bay. when I think of Juan Pardo, I still go back to that spot where he folded two kings pre at the final table of just 20 blinds. I guess you do a lot of like research. But you know, a pretty good he's more than just the guy who can fold the kings. He's 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 relentless. It's a pet I have. You're young as well, right? 27, yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? 27. I didn't see daylight for a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to do it when I was, oh man, uh, he's just, he's in that mood, isn't he? Didn't see daylight, yet Apparently only not. sleeps five it's, hours a day. A Tough puzzle to solve. Now if I eat something heavy, I just feel it. I cannot. So you don't eat like KFC, like on a... Mm, no, I can't. I really you like, can't. my body shuts down. Oh shit, I need to stop eating healthy. Because <laughs> one day I might, my body might not take KFC anymore. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't want that. I want my body to accept KFC. <laughs> <coughs> Not just accept shitty egg, grass, cucumber, and baby tomatoes. I mean, I like, egg, egg I like the grass. Arugula dish you had the arugula. Sad. The like. eggs. Yeah. Boiled egg white. It doesn't accept KFC? Arugula. Seriously? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't expect Mario Mosbach to be <laughs> eating buckets of KFC. No, it doesn't strike me as Pre the previous the footballer, type. I believe. Right. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's not his thing, Danny. He's he's going to defend here, base four in the big. Coming. This table is very deep stacked. Elton Singh, chip leader. Does pick up an inside straight draw. No connection for Danny. Note the flags, two of the most decorated players in the history of tournament and cash game poker from Hong Kong as Elton gets there on the turn. It's really nice too because this <coughs> board is all Danny Tang. He doesn't attack with ace four. Maybe Elton feels that his opponent's got a pair, hence why he's betting. Usually, the big blind, when they don't have this board, will still bet the turn after the, the flop check through. Yeah, there's a world in which I was thinking maybe that ace of clubs future Bluff you candidate. Cheat day, you just eat like this every day. Um, I do have cheat For those of you just joining us, we have wrapped up Visuals. dinner break. Body take the pizza or something? 16 um, players remain with that yeah. man on your screens right there, Elton Sang. Um, Chip leader. Huh? An we overwhelming one at that. 13 places paid I mean, I'm, uh, <laughs> tonight here in the I'm bay. <laughs> Ignore it, Randy. You got you don't eat, oh, you you don't gotta try and find you tune it out, man. <laughs> This is the most nonsense conversation I've had to commentate on. You cannot eat. Oh shit! Fantastic. <laughs> this has nothing to do with you being healthy, and then your body became that. You just always no. never been. Yeah, it, the body adapts. If you always eat it, even if you you just like get used to it, and you just like feel a little. Oh, sore. you stopped eating wheat for many years, and then you just couldn't eat it again. Um, yes, I ate a lot of wheat before. Fuck. But it was like, it what have you done yourself? Effect, but the what have you done to yourself? You have become too healthy. <laughs> Danny Tang feels troubled. <laughs> what huh? if me and you? If I don't drink water for a long time, do I just reject water? <laughs> Is that also the same thing? You know, I'm not a scientist, so I can't really speak on some of the <laughs> stuff that's being discussed here at the table. But I want to go out on a limb, Randy. I think I speak for the yeah, majority of people that are watching. Mm. I want to call BS on, on a few point. things that have been Four, mentioned five, here tonight, all right? 1.5 and change. Uh, I'm glad Ike... Is Ike at the table? <laughs> is he? Ike's here, right? Oh, he's not. He's at the other... Right, okay. I'm glad mm. Ike isn't at the table because Ike might have a few things to say about the discussions here as we dive back in. Blind v. Blind and... Whoa, trouble. 
ahead for Mossbach. Connecting with the piece, Randy. Limped pot, A7-5. Bottom pair going to be good. Yeah, just enough piece to pay off at least this flop bet. Mario also might be thinking, why is Danny Tang leading out on his ace high board? We're in a high tension spot. Three from the money. Well, it's going from bad to worse for Mosbok now, Randy. Uh, ace pairing on the turn, going to make it less likely for Danny Tang to have value. I'm curious to see if he bets this again or does he check to induce? Could still try to get multiple streets off of 7 and 5x. It's a tough lay down to make, given there is a flush draw present, straight draw, blind versus blind. Let's see if Mario can read into it. Looks like he's not going to get away just yet. Undercard to the board. Does complete a few straights, of course. 390 in the middle. How likely is Danny to triple off here? That's a bluff. Three off the money. And although, you know, we're not necessarily at that stack depth where our entire stack is at risk, per se, but... You lose a couple of 10, 15, 20 big blind pots around, and all of a sudden you're handcuffed at <coughs> the bottom of the chip counts, kind of on the outside looking to sneak your way in. I'll say this. the At this stack depth of 50 big blinds plus, you're definitely going to not just be playing so snug and try to sneak in. So the amount of bluffs he has increases with the higher starting big blind effective stack. Like a sizable reach here. 390 in the middle, and Danny's come out firing for 75% pot. And note the immediate discomfort in Mosbach's body language. Not something you necessarily see that often from Mary. Very stoic, very composed. But facing the bet of 290. Kind of shifting back in his seat. Can understand why. Let's nice it go. Down. That's not easy. Might look easy from here. Blind v blind against someone as competent as Danny. Four titles this year. Looking good. Quick dealer change as our official timekeeper. Our official timekeeper, Jacob and Co. Showing up once more to the Triton Super High Roller Series. I'm sure a lot of you that have been with us for this year, seen our fair share of Jacob and Co. timepieces on the wrists of players, of course, collaboration piece for the main event champions. Oh, thank you. You know, Chidwick, Hecklin, Jason Kuhn, but the second Timothy that Adams, just to name a few, that all of that custom Triton, but the Jacob and Co. piece. I wanted to bet 135, and I bet 115 or something. Very close, buddy. <laughs> same, same, no. I don't think, not to him, it's not the same. Or a 30. Smith. Curious. The Jack A gonna hit the mark. 
You know, Randy, we come in here halfway through the day. Mm -hmm. You've got your eye on the stream every now and then. But, you know, we're not as dialed in as when we are in the booth. And there always seems to be some dynamic slash storylines that we're perhaps not too familiar with. I'm going to keep an eye on this whole Dan Smith, the Juan Pardo situation. I feel like, you know, there's been a little something there, man. I'm picking up. You feel I mean, some tension? Really I'm looking forward to this. I mean, these these are two guys, Dan Smith and Juan Pardo. They don't mind going home empty-handed if they have to. Like, if they have to take a spot, they'll take it. If they think it's plus EV, they'll take the spot. I agree with you, but I do think they would mind. But right, I know what you're right. saying. They are willing to risk their stack if they feel it's worth the risk. Having them sat next to each other. I didn't want, want to be, be... It was not 50, maybe 60. Could it be fun as Malacca style out flops. Tim? Who just opted to defend from the big. Understandably so. Healthy stack. Not looking to get into murky waters. Three off the money. And that's one of the advantages of just having the bigger stack at this part of the tournament. These medium stacks, they tend to play more cautious pre. So you don't get blown off of your opens. Which Juan Pardo would have most certainly fold had he got three bet in that spot. Okay, what's going on here? Looks like Fedor has put Boss to the test for his entire stack as he's opened from plus one. Eight-handed table. Fedor with the three-bet jam, or effectively. Yeah, this is uncomfortable. Because he opened in such early position, he would more likely call if it was like button versus small blind. But here, Fedor isn't really jamming all pocket pairs. You know, like the baby ones going to the muck. He's not really reshoving like a king jack too often, I imagine. Jack 10. Yeah, boss now the short stack. This would be a big call. Theory-wise, the like, your chips are more valuable at this phase of the tournament. You kind of want to try to get in in gr great rather than just pure flipping when you can. Yeah, it's like, is Fade or ever jamming, like, King-10, Queen-Jack suited here? I would think at a very low frequency at best. Let's see if Paul wants to spin the wheel. Big he call. does, Randy. Huge flip for both. If Fedor can hold with the snowman, going to be up to over 2 million chips and we will move up to third overall. Boss Paul Part looking to convert this 48% equity somehow, but we'll need to connect. Five key cards to come as... Couple of diamonds on the flop. Make things dicey for Fedor's pocket eights. Two cards to come as it's red, but not the red that Paul was looking for. Seems so calm. Cool and collected. One wow. to come as he wow. finds <laughs> the king of spades corner pocket. Hell of a flop. Huh? You go. <laughs> you 100% <have the> call. <laughs> You're on the loose side. <laughs> Maybe open All shot. smiles now for Paul. No, no. Not so much for that man, but Fedor. He's been here <laughs> many times over yeah. throughout his career. That's going to sting also for Fedor call because AD. it call. puts him in a position where... Call. <laughs> he can't lean as much on his opponents right. off of a million stack. He's got 34 big lines, still room to maneuver, but now the bigger stacks ah. can put a lot of pressure against okay, him. <laughs> Ball, yeah. comfy. He's yeah, I mean, he, now. Fedor's now sat in 12th instead of being third in chips overall. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's like massive swing, obviously. Not to state the obvious, but... Mm -hmm. 
So on. since starting, restarting here with us in the booth, two shortest stacks have doubled up. We just have one player sub-20 blinds, currently Andrew Pantling with 15 bigs. I, mean, I think if you don't discuss it, it's pretty clearly no. Uh, <coughs> I can see that, yeah. Um, What's the deal here, right. then? You know, Randy, mm -hmm. I've become incredibly nosy since starting my commentary career. I'm always listening into people's conversations, you know, and I forget that we're actually here to commentate. Well, you're in the best seat to listen to these conversations. Oh. Text message. Oh, oh hello. JNT. Murray Williams. About to lock horns, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we were just saying that we're going to be here a while on this bubble. But the way things have been playing out might not take us that long. Queens against aces, eights against king queen, and now kings against the ace king suited of JNT. Fresh off that huge score in London as he does come over the top and we're going to see five. Yeah, Murray Williams is a first timer at the Triton stop. One of the invitees. More or less than more than that. Here we go. Just getting getting a official count from the dealer. Does make the call as cards are not good. On their backs, J and T <laughs> recognizing the dire situation he finds himself in. But dire in the form of 34% equity, Randy. I've a seen third of the time. Come. He's going to scoop a 1.8 million chip pot. Jack 7 4 rainbow. One club. So far, so good for the Triton debutant. Now needs to just fade. One of the three aces left in the deck. Does precisely that, Randy. And Murray Williams is up to 1.8 now. JNT with a huge blow. Okay, and does his shirt say thankful on it? Because what a nice pot for him, as that's going to vault him near the top of the chip counts. The other day, his shirt said grateful. <laughs> did it actually? You did it? It did. I didn't it see did. it. I didn't yeah. see. It's the first time I've ever commentated on Murray Williams. Uh, one of the ca uh, coming from California. Yeah. Does it ever get easier where you don't get so nervous? <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Actually, once you slide into the money, the nerves kind of go away a little bit as you lock up that 300k. Less than the first time I played a high stakes tournament. Yeah, I should fall. Tell you what. Lucky. The invitees <laughs> holding down the fort here in Monte Carlo. Nine left out of the 16 remaining players. Only seven on the pro bra side of the bracket. Got an ace 10 here up front. Nice to see Alexander Shilukin still in the tournament. I thought his play was very good in day one from what I observed. Very solid. Willing to make the plays at the right time. Such an annoying seat draw. Down that end of the table. For Jan, Fedor, and Ike. Suited kings are very playable in the big. Price is good. Healthy stack. Does flop best with that pair of kings for Paul Poir. One, six, five in the middle. Sounds like Bosch has found out that he should have folded the king-queen. I don't know who he texts. Perhaps Jason Kuhn or 
someone he's close with to get some info on the spot. This is a micro bet. Slightly above min. A little 20% or so on the flop. Your hand is only vulnerable to the ace coming on the turn. Plus, you don't really want to inflate pots at this stage of the tournament, hence the call. Getting a little bit scarier now, though, with the queen. Do you agree with Really fun spot for Alex. Don't hate barreling here. Taking up some additional equity. Obviously have the perceived range advantage. Opening from under the gun. 16 left, three off the money. Oh, this is uncomfortable. This is full pot. This is really grim. And the thing is, when you bet full pot here, you send a message to the big blind that I'm going to put the rest of your stack at risk on the river. So Paul, in his mind, is trying to think, what do I do on blank rivers? Am I supposed to call it off? Am I comfortable calling this pot size bet? Just check loading. I um, really need to kind of make a game plan now. Not to ask like a loaded question, as big Paul fold. does fold. Right. the best hand but what you're referring to there is this sizing from Alexander on the turn is basically asking Paul for his entire stack once we get to the river right exactly because let's just say Alexander Shalukin bets like half <coughs> probably 120k you wouldn't really expect them to put your whole stack at right. risk on the river so sometimes you can, can manipulate your opponent's decision based on the bet sizes you opt to go for. And as we flip over here, Mario Mossbox has got a monster stranglehold with this top pair nut flush draw against the middle pair of Elton Sang, our tournament chip leader. Here's a single raise pot. Early position against Big Blind. I need Mario to take me out shopping. You like his scarf game? Dude, like, have you ever seen Mozbok at a feature table not looking fresh? Yeah, I need to take it. I, I believe Vienna's his home, if I recall correctly. I believe so. The Sang going nowhere. <coughs> and oh. somehow. Somehow finds the queen on the turn to turn trips. 3-3-5 three, three, in the middle. Okay. Gonna knuckle it on over to Mosbog. Interesting spot now, of course. Kicker does play, but Zhang does retain. A lot of middle pairs on the flop. It's also nice to mix in some check backs here. Should Sang have a weaker flush draw? You know, when a third heart rolls off, you get to cooler him, flush over it's flush. A good, good point because a unpaired flush draw would just check fold the turn. Right. You can pot control against the queen oh, and hello. flush comes in. Didn't expect that flip flop flip. Flip flop flip, Randy. <laughs> I love it. Technically true. The flip flop flip. Three off the money. 300k bubble. 3-3-5 three, three, out there. Let's see what Sang goes with. I have a, I have a on jacket right, check, bet, call, on. flop, check, yeah, check, like turn. So, yes, the flush comes in, but often Elton does have best hand against Ace-X. Looks big. 300k, Randy. Close to pot. And yes, it's a paired board, but man, the nut flush feels like you, you always have to raise. I'm think, trying to think of hands he loses to. Queen nine suited. Queen nine, kind of like the big candidate. I feel like it's the only one, right? Like yeah. queen nine, queen four. Maybe some ace queen knows. A little bit. How many years you all for up to first division? Sure, it's probably a little bit hard to rep bluffs right now, too. I don't think they ever jam, though, right? Like, say we raise to 750, 800 here. 
three more years. Sang's never jamming like Queen Nine or like Queen Four. I don't think. No, I wouldn't think so either. Because Mosbok just has aces and ace queen a bunch. Let's see what he comes with here. It's a really fun spot. Yeah, I, I think Mario's realized for sure that he's got the best hand. Needs to put in a raise. 900k. Attack me in, coach. I'm ready, Randy. <laughs> it's crowdsource. Crowdsource the funds for me to burn 200k as these two collide in one of the biggest pots <laughs> of the tournament so far. Well, Elton most likely realizes it's a flush or nothing situation. A lot of full houses just keep firing on the turn, especially when the queen pairs, which would favor the big blind. They want to try to build that pot. Five seconds. It's tough to lay down trip queens, but it kind of feels right. And we talk time and time again how important it is to win flips and make big hero calls. But what about big laydowns? We know Tang is good enough to do it. Yeah, he's definitely thinking about it. See if he can get away from it. Time extensions pushed out in front of him, taking a bit of a seat back in his chair. You can see the discomfort, understandably so. Single race pot, early position open from Mosbok. Sang defended, check called flop. Turn Can went we check check. Sang them back close to pot three? on the river. Oh, no. 300 into 330. And Mosbox taking it upstairs to 875. Three off the money. The 300k bubble. Seen him make huge laydowns in cash games. Over the years, see if he can add another one to the highlight reel. Incredibly impressed. The line taken from Mosbok so strong as the Queen 10 hits the muck, Randy. And that is a world class fold from Elton Sang. And that is how you preserve the chip lead with seven figures up top and 16 remaining here in the Bay, Monte Carlo, Monaco. Clip that one for the highlight reel. What a fold, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Elton's gonna be pleased when he sees that back on the tape later. The way that hand played out as well, you said it, it's like, feels like flush or nothing, right? The full houses, they continue building the pot on the turn. Gives Mario credit for Checking back, flush draws on the turn. Yeah. What and a spot. It, it's tough, but, you know, he's one of the best invitees in the game, um, Elton saying that is, and that ham really just demonstrates the discipline needed for such a splashy player. It's hard to do. Uh, I was sneaking, but I didn't actually, actually like... Here comes Horolobos. Pocket nines in the hijack off of 40 big blinds. Let's go, Randy. <laughs> the excited? queens against the aces. <laughs> the eights against the king queen. The kings against the ace king. And then <laughs> Elton just. I'm excited. fired up, man. And, and, and the KFC conversation. Oh, no. no. Cut that one out. We need to. No, we need to take the mic off of Danny Tan. <laughs> right? He gets the four titles. A little pick up there. King 8 folded in a big. And back over to Fader Holtz, UTG. Note the fold from Yam there, four hitting the mark. Going to 
sold all the way around to the big blind. Murray Williams. <coughs> nice little pick up there for Fedor. 17 minutes left of the level. Still a bit of breathing room for the shorter stacks, but once that big blind does increase to 40k, the likes of Boss Paul, Ike Haxton, JNT, Andrew Patling really does get uncomfortable out there. Average stack currently 46 big blinds, so plenty of room to maneuver. Can't be. Can't be that comfortable though, can it? The 300k bubble. Action Haxton out with three deuces, of course. Pocket deuces for David Yan. The comfy 1.4 million stack also folding. Just <laughs> respecting this three from the money situation. Wow, Queen Jack suited lays it down for Paul. That's Under wild, plus bro. two. That, that is, is a wild. big fold. Not Pantley. Pantley's in with Queen Eight of Clubs. In the cutoff. Off of 13 bigs. Murray Williams. Ace Rag. Just got to get through one more. Nope. Fader Holtz right in there. Snap. Putting Pantley at risk. Two live cards for the Canadian business tycoon. Ace King for one of the greatest of the modern generation. Looking to just hold and the Ace of Diamonds in the river. In the river, sorry, in, in, the, in the window. Flop window, yes. But the Jack Nine behind does give Paddling hope. Form of a 10 and a 10 only after the Three of Hearts finds its way to the turn. <coughs> that was close. Four across, but not the right kind. Pantling going home empty handed, Randy. And that is going to be a tough one to swallow. Just three off the money. 300k soft bubble. The two yeah, days of play. I mean, if he was telling the Fatal truth, Holtz. Rebuilding. <laughs> yes. Slowly but surely. Yeah, we're down to 15. And, I mean, yes, the, 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 the elimination of Pantling. Kind of sad to see Pantling go. I really love the way he I'm approached sure. things, That's attacking relentlessly. <laughs> Hope to see him some future tournaments. Oh. And hello, Aces. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh, this is just so rough for Tim Busso. This is grim. I mean, Tim is currently. Sat in 11th, the very healthy 42 bigs. Does the money just always find its way into the middle here? I mean, it's even worse because you're up against Dan Smith, who's going to just lean on you. This is a pro versus invitee situation. A lot of times Ace King just says, let's push it in. You know, the worst case scenario, I've got some outs. In this case, he's got very little. That's tough. Can he find a way to just think, look, you three bet my under the gun. You have a strong range. Maybe occasionally he finds just a call and can find himself an exit on some flop turns and rivers. Wouldn't fault him, of course, if he does jam. Oh, this is... Likely the end of Tim Busso. So grim. That is as rough a shape as it gets for the Frenchman. 41 big blinds, two off the money. And like Randy mentioned, you know, someone like Dan Smith who is going to be pushing him around a decent amount of the time. We've already seen some... Like three bets from Dan Should Smith as it comes. King nine eight. There's a chance. <laughs> Who's pre-calling <laughs> the bubble? Where's that again? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Jeez. <laughs> Let the man see five cards first. Two of clubs on the turn. One to come. King 
and a king only for Tim Busso to stay alive. Doesn't find it. Four of spades completes the run out, and with that, Dan Smith has taken the chip lead, and we are now on the stone bubble of the $200,000 Triton Poker Series Invitational here in Monte Carlo. GG Timbuso, man, he had a hell of a run. Can't blame him. Made the perfect play, what he should be doing to base King for a bet jamming that one. Just ran into it. GG. Yeah, that's... Say something with the dealer. That is a rough one. Uh, whatever the hell. Okay. There we go. We were talking about how this bubble could take what a while. Event? They don't know. Main event. We find ourselves main event? Yes. Oh. on the stone bubble now. Okay. After having two eliminations, it's been a pretty cold deck so far. Mm -hmm. Ace king oh. against kings, now ace king against aces. I mean. A brief pause in action as well as what I'm being told as we're waiting for the blue feature table to catch up. One of the many perks of playing at a Triton Super High Roller Series, having the Triton Poker Plus app of course, Randy, is keeping the exact track of hands played on each table allowing it to be as fair as possible, especially when we're on a $300,000 money bubble. So I'm gonna wait for a few hands to be played out before continuing coverage here at this red feature table. Dan Smith, of course, the chip lead now to 99 bigs. Chip count's brought to you by betacr.eu. These top four stacks at this table, that is the top four of the tournament. Wow. Yeah, and the fifth place is currently Murray Williams sitting on the other table. In, in so short yes, stacks yes, yes. over on the blue feature. And then I was never like good, good. You guys were like. You, you, you were good. You were like. No, I, c I can't have a professional football, a pro former professional footballer saying that I was good at football. You know, I was not. Did we play? You're two hands behind. Did we? Never. You passed the clock in between. So how, so. so how can you say I was good? <laughs> no, you said you were good. No, uh, no. I no okay. yeah, not like, not like yeah, I mean, League One good. <laughs> you were in the. He he was in like the. the what? Belgium, right? Belgium. And then look up. We're done our hand and we're oh, waiting shit. for them yeah, to finish yeah, the hand. One. We pause or no? Never pause. Gotcha. Mario, sweet talking, daddy. Yeah, but they have a big team, right? Who? Yeah. Who's your biggest team? Salzburg. Yeah, Salzburg. Yeah. Salzburg. yeah. Salzburg. For sure they have. I wasn't just back keeps back bluffing, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, oh, you're good at football. Where are you from? I can't oh, eat, I can't eat certain <laughs> foods. I have my own um, semi-professional. <laughs> only in the VIP football. area. Not, not futsal, mini football. Yeah, nice. okay. We're full-time Azerbaijani champions. What's mini football? Six aside, but uh, on um, synthetic. Okay. Nice. It's, it's, not, it's not in the... Uh, yeah. Um, Phil Galfon would have got the drop six. Artificial. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, Tension's yeah. supposed to be high. Right. Does it make money? Know, they're just chatting away. Oh, oh man. man. It's a charity for me. Right. I just spend money. I think he opened. He opened. He, he caught. I'm just saying they would have just automatically given yeah. him the drop. It's so, like so deep. Trips, the these three. We do. I think there's Normally there is. I'm, I'm new to this. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> first, my first stop. So. We should do this with this. There we go. We need Kate to I'm help us arrange a football. football. Oh, okay. It's hard to flop a set. Serious. I think not playing anymore. You guys are having a football match. It's actually important to know. Well, I'm part of opening nah, I'd, like to, I'd like to bet on the. Inf I'd like to have a piece of the infirmary. <laughs> do, do we? Do we think we can get one this time? It's okay. I'll just message. I'm sure you can. I. I can't. Oh, Rollabos got ace huh? queen in the big. No, I can't have off of like forty to help me do this right. This is really interesting because normally this would probably just squeeze jam and 
try to take down the 180 from the three players as well as the big blind, big blind ante. But on the Stone Cold Bubble, right. you want to be risk averse as there's a 17 and 22 Ooh, big wow. blind stack out there. Like center mid, probably. But Haroldo still squeezes. I like this. Oh, okay. He's put himself in a situation where, look, <coughs> I'm going to squeeze. If you guys jam, I'll fold my I hand. But it's too yeah, often you guys enough. just don't have enough to continue. Not even that big of a squeeze, all things considered. Just north of 4x. It, it is a small squeeze given how many players it was right. up against. But yeah. then again, it still screams a lot of strength. Yeah, with ICM and the fact that we are on the stone bubble. Whoever goes home in 14th, going home empty-handed. Top 13, guaranteeing themselves at least 300,000. And Rolos is, you know, he's comfortable. Starting well. the hand with 43 bigs. Yeah, he's got a lot of poker experience under his belt. Nacho was saying about that. Let's go Madrid, they're losing. Hmm? Losing 2-1. Smith. Smith. Let's see a flop. Yeah. Just a little bit too pretty. Like you said, price was good. Had he made it, say, 300k, that King Queen <coughs> is certainly going into the muck. Maybe this invites Elton to come along as well. I mean, he's now getting a great price. 170 on a call. 6-2-5 in the middle. <coughs> playing the rest of the hand in position. In Let's position. Let's see three, you know. Yeah. Try, and, try and spike a five. And send someone home. Seven nine five in the middle, and all of a sudden, three bet pot with three players. As Smith finds a way, finds a way with the king queen of spades. Domination rotation. This is tough because this is a board that is heavily favoring the squeezer. He's got all the ace kings. You're blocking king queen a bit. You know, it. they just have to fold so often. Somehow Dan Smith actually has top pair. This is grim. Three, three, five. On the flop. To a pot of seven, nine, five. I think Smith knows that we're about to play a pretty huge one. Good news for Smith is he's been in this seat many times over. That's the king of clubs on the turn. Very good for Dan Smith, just in case he was up against pocket aces. Gives him the 100% lock on the hand. Four, six in the middle. Bob with just half pot back. Going to wave the white flag now. Mm, you got the I like to see Dan Smith mm. check this back, huh? given mm. how little is remaining in the stack of so roll of balls. Like mm. No oh, flush draws got... present. It's hard to so represent a bill. bluff. And if you check, you can kind of try to represent like a jacks, tens, nines, and maybe your opponent tries to blow you off of it. Yeah, given that it's a rainbow turn as well, I mean, you're in position. Just give Bob that little bit of rope to do something crazy on the river. Yeah, and if you're going to bet, you just have to bet so small. I mean, your opponent only has half pot remaining. Sorry. Looks like he does want to just still sprinkle something. But there's no way this would ever get paid off. A little 20%. 275. I mean, this hand has to be over at this point. Yeah, easy. Just these two tables have 10 already. Unfortunate spot for her other boss. Tomorrow? Just getting out flopped. 
called the King High Flop. Luca's Luca's not invited to this one. Doesn't hit the standard. That is clean. Good call. <laughs> yeah, I cut it. You have a holding, anyways. I had ace <laughs> Queen high. Yeah, and he cut himself. That's he hilarious. Good bet. And then had to act like he had did to leave that? early. Ooh, I, have to I go did to not. Down and just so and cry. he asked Dad Smith what he had. And Dad said I had pink with his spades. <laughs> and Ronald said I had ace queen. Good call. What's that? <laughs> so I'm needling him for uh, calling pre flop. Yeah. Oh, you're leaving uh, the day after tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, so you're only actually actually here for one event? Oh no! Wow, that's commitment. <laughs> Where are you off to? I'm going to uh, Dubai. Like I just checked the flop. Nice. Russell Heimer is close. Pretty good flop. Mini football world championship. Yeah. There, I'm going to watch it. Oh, of my it's a pretty good flop. flop. So, Kick eight three. Oh, wow. I'm there. <laughs> so do you play yourself as well? Yeah. In the team as well. Strong. Would, uh, proper he would kill me. Yeah, in like. But right. I actually yes. prefer playing on a big pitch. I used to play only on a big pitch before. Oh. Me? Probably not at your level, but I was quite good. Okay, Caribli. It's so sick, like how. From Azerbaijan. How? How many failed footballers there are? <laughs> 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 no, but like. I thought. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this. How oh, many, I know how, how to fans. describe pocket yeah. aces. Raise. Interesting that he doesn't know how to describe it. He looks down at numero uno. It's tough. It's competition. Oh, you have to have a little bit of luck also. It breaks you. Do you have any injuries? Or no? No. Troublesome a7 clubs in the big. Yeah, Pardo's aggressive. Doesn't mind taking these spots. That's just cool. The suited ace. Flops a piece as well. Queen, Jack, seven. Bottom pair, one club on board. Yeah, Juan Pardo definitely going to lose some chips on this flop, at least. A lot of reason to just try to get some value now. The DT. Firing out a C bit, half pot. Few options on the table here for Pardo, by the way. It feels like a spot where check call is the most likely play. Also, sometimes you make aces up and your opponent improves to top pair or they try to represent the ace. And uh -oh. 10 of clubs is a fun one. It's actually a bad card for Danny Tang, too, because... Some straights come in, two pairs. Yeah, king nine, eight nine, two pairs, right? The thing is, too, though, if he bets turn, he likely will never get raised, given that the big blind never has ace king. So it is kind of safe to bet the turn, and to kind of decide whether you want to value bet the river or not. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. Should never be getting raised in this spot. Yeah, and for the ace seven of clubs, it's one of those spots where check call, hope to hit your hand. Would have been really surprised had he done anything else. <laughs> well. Absolutely everything bricking here. Hearts, clubs, some of the one-liners, like King Jack. All bricking, six, seven, five in the middle. See how Danny Tang proceeds, four-time Triton champion. What a year it's been for him, says. Seems like he's gonna make a tight check back. 
It's understandable, though. Like we said, you know, he could be up against two pairs. He's also thinking that since he's got a heavy range wow. advantage, one pair might not call him on the river. I don't hate the check back there, to be honest with no, you. No, I don't either. I think it's tough. There's not many hands that we get value from, and I think there's a lot of hands that that what check happened? call that actually have us beat, you know, all of those two so pairs yeah, that we mentioned. Yeah. Even some like the 9-8 the combos, I think. You would need a lot of one pair hands to call in order for you to bet there, and he's got no guarantee that his opponent would still hear a call on that board. 100%. For those of you just joining us, <coughs> welcome back to the bay, Monte Carlo Bay here in Monaco. We'll come back up. Find ourselves on the stone money bubble of the $200,000 Triton Poker Series Monte Carlo Invitational. One of these remaining 14 going to be going home empty-handed and tomorrow we'll be crowning a champion where Seth Champion is going to be going home with $3.87 million. It's that Triton Trophy. Long ways to go, of course, before we start guessing as to who's going to be taking down that coveted Triton Trophy. Yeah, this is the short stack table. <coughs> None of these players in the top five, the chip counts. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Haxton, ace king, in the small. He's against the covering stack of David Yen in the big. You know... Limp Jam is not too bad. It's just tricky because we're on the Stone Cold Bubble. But we know Dave, We know Isaac Haxton isn't scared. He's going to try Aww. to induce. And we see Ace Nine of Hearts. Ace Nine of Hearts might just rip it in. Of course, we'd get snapped off. Ike Haxton just setting the trap to perfection. 90? Going to make yeah. it 90. Not asking for all of it, Randy. It's good for him because it gives him a chance to get away once Haxton puts in all these chips. Really has no other decision than jam for Isaac Haxton. He's expecting this 3x raise once he limped at a very high frequency oh, yeah. given that he's at a chip deficit. Can David Yen fold? I mean, this is ridiculously close for Yan. I mean, I think Ace-10 suited like the chips are already in. Mm -hmm. Ace-9 feels really close, especially against Ike. If we weren't on the Stone Cold Bubble, I think David Yan would have called already. And yeah, he's going to make, make the call. call. When you got a reputation like Isaac Haxton to make moves, you feel like you just got to defend. Oh, yeah, and accidentally exposing his hand. It did make the call. We do just have to wait for the hand that's playing out on table two to finish before we see all five. In the case, the unlikely scenario that a player busts on both tables as Luca Vivaldi comes over to call the action. Wow. 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 What a monster. Ace King for Ike Haxton. Oh, this all in is worth so much for Haxton. Hello, Juan Pardo. Ike Haxton, one of the names that often pops up. It's one of the most accomplished players in the world without a Triton trophy. As it comes, King, King, Jack, one heart on board. Some potential turn sweats. Some. Some, and that is not one of them. Ike Haxton gonna get the double in a year of his career yep. so far 2023 number one in the world for earnings in live tournaments wow. 13 million I believe 
Looking to add an additional 3.8 million here with a win. And what, you know, what a way it would be to get your first Triton trophy. Take down the 200k invitation, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Feels like it would be worth the wait almost. You All think? the pain and the bubbles <laughs> and the final table bubbles and the close calls, you know? I think so. Wrap up the year, 2023. Yeah, in Monte Carlo, like you way. said, Haxton's been having a phenomenal year. And with that double up, they kind of just flip-flop, right? Well, didn't David Yen get that big double against him right uh, from the get-go? He did indeed. Back over to this table. <laughs> or same table, sorry. Pocket fours for Murray Williams. It's actually got a really nice stack at this table and... His first Triton event ever. Yeah. Just going to stay out of the trouble. Williams is actually chip leader at this table. Yeah. 1.7. Yeah. Sixth overall. It's good for Haxton, though, if the chip leader isn't opening hands like fours. It gives him more opportunities on his button. Trying to lean on Boss's big blind. Just a 10 six of diamonds yeah. covered yeah. in yeah. chips and suit. Yeah, he's out too. You know, these are hands that can take flops, but once again, Stone Cold Bubble. You're going to play a bit tighter. Yeah, just pitching the suited 10 there. Certainly something we would expect to see defend in a different stage of the tournament, but as Randy correctly pointing out, currently a $300,000 bubble. And this is at the point of the tournament where you see the pros really shine because they're willing to kind of understand the situation and lean on the opponents who kind of want to sneak into the money. Do you mind asking the tournament director why there's a delay or why we're, why we're not playing? Well, I was going to say, can you ask the tournament director why we're not playing? Oh, because we're one off the money, so each table just plays one hand and waits for the other to finish. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Synchronize. Okay. <laughs> He's wearing a different t-shirt now. I love my smoking hot wife. I love my hot smoking wife. hot wife. Let's go. Let me get one of those. Maury Williams. What a legend. <laughs> I love this I guy. This guy is fantastic. <laughs> I wonder how many t-shirts he brought with him. <laughs> He's brought a lot. They all say something on there. Bubbling. Yeah. Uh, the, eliminate, the elimination. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, j and woke up with something. We don't know exactly what. Wait for the graphics to catch up. He's put his chips in like four different areas. <laughs> it is an all-in from j and <laughs> Oh, you're right, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is... Uh, I don't know what... Oh, man. It's like Stonehenge or something. Oh, hang on. Oh, did... He did. We have a big confrontation. Murray mm -hmm. Williams going to put JNT at risk. Well, we know who is smoking <coughs> hot wife's room for. Hang on a minute. We're going <laughs> to. We'll get back to that one. going to flip, flip flop over to <coughs> our table was. Wow. Zang, just power poker. Okay. We've wrapped up there. Back Not over to the blue feature table. He's fast, he's JNT looks sad. I can't tell who's happier about <laughs> this spot. JNT looks so happy, oh, yet he might be out on a stone cold one? bubble. Yeah. You're the short you stack, JNT. Do you have I, any worries? Hand, do you call that? Oh, hang on. Williams asking or Ike, and Ike not giving him the snap. Yes, so maybe a marginal spot. It sounded like it. Murray, like maybe a ace 10, a king queen, perhaps. Maybe like a pocket fives, pocket sixes. Let's see. Lucas, come over. <laughs> Are you 
Hold on. Ace. It looks like five. Ace five. Wow. That is a huge call. Putting JNT at risk. And JNT had paint, I saw. King Queen. Murray Williams is correct. Makes a massive call. That's why Ike didn't answer because he is surprised. Well, oh, out of nowhere, Randy. We're now two cards away from being in the money. Needs to fade a king or a queen. That's the king oh, of diamonds. Oh, JNT is still in it. If he can fade the ace. Rolls off on the turn. Saw a smirk from Juan Pardo there as the Deuce of Hearts completes the run out and JNT lets out a big sigh of relief. So he doubles up. 1.7 million. Oh, come on, give him a fist bomb. There we go. Murray Williams hanging. For a second there. He did the head explosions <laughs> thing, JNT. Fingers to temples. Well, somewhere out there in the world, Randy, there's a smoking hot wife. And that's saying, Just why, Murray? Why couldn't you hold? Not happy about that run out. Well, he doesn't fe seem phased at all. Next <coughs> Yeah. Stay composed. Did you notice that every time there's an all-in over there, Juan Pardo just shows up? You guys bust yet? Hey, hello? Yeah, sort of the short stacks are out there. <coughs> King five suited. For Mario. What? I'm not just letting him know. Yeah. Did that come across aggressive? Very much so. No? Very aggressive. Did you take it as aggressive? <laughs> why do you think he threw his cards yeah. away afterwards? That's why I wouldn't do it to you. you I see. Yeah. Against you, I'd be like... <laughs> so, Horala Boss is the new shortest <laughs> stack. <laughs> off of 21 bigs. Elton's tank here with the 10-7, like he, he wants to push him around on the bubble. <laughs> it's got to have some restraint. Okay, so, you know, I'm second in chips, I can send you home. Danny Tang, comfy stack. Just a 6-5 offsuit. Yeah, I should be pitching I mean, this do you, one. Do you make this face and call ever? Yeah, apparently you do. Okay. <laughs> this is almost a giveaway that you've got some marginal type holding, but isn't still uh -oh. gonna take the shot at it. Uh oh. Open ended versus the King High flush draw. Hold on. Oh, boss. Flopping the nut flush draw. DT with the open ender. Does not want to see the Nine of Hearts. Well, the four of hearts on the turn. We will be doubling Rallaboss up. Me and the guy who's never heard of a, what a nap is before. Never heard of a what? Nap. You never had heard of the idea of a nap. The concept <laughs> of a nap had escaped uh, you. Yeah. Danny Tang is just lost as he's trying to focus on his hand. Okay. A little bit of comfort. For Herolobos on the river, of course. The Six of Hearts completes the run out. He has the Stone Cold Nuts. 285 in the middle, and the turn did go check, check. Daddy Tag rivering some showdown. Now opting to try and just show down this fourth pair. And Herolobos going to sprinkle some chips in. Most likely feels he can get value from Ace X. Danny Tang just has <coughs> a pair of sixes, no kicker. Danny in this spot shouldn't really be calling too much. If he wants to continue, would likely have to be a raise, although we know that would never work. It's also not really the ideal hand to bluff raise with. It would depend on what kind of value would take this bet check bet line. Hmm. Very curious about that one. Nuts. 
nuts probably, yeah? What else could I bet one time? Very curious about that. Couldn't have been that curious, dude. Hold it. True. Like, getting hold, involved. Please. Discipline lay down. Don't verbal jousta for old boss? Yes. Thank you, Randy. This guy is too sharp, and you're going to get pieced up on TV. I can't believe you've never heard of a nap before, though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just sleep in the daytime sometimes for like 30, 40 minutes? Never. Never? Never. 30, like 40 minutes? Never. You're like a machine over there. <laughs> no. Like a well-oiled machine. What if you have get, like a boozy brunch? I just don't get very busy and I end up sleeping three, four hours instead. Ah, I see. Yeah. So you've, sleep, you've slept in the day, just never... Oh, I've like slept, slept multiple mornings, afternoons and just, yeah. I got it, I got it. Yeah. I've never been busy enough where I can only nap for 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So. <laughs> Must be nice. You're like, a, you're like my dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All day nap. like my dog yeah. daddy thing. That's why I don't like the idea of 30 minute naps because why not have longer ones? <laughs> it actually fucks with your sleep. The longer you, you nap more than 30 minutes, you, it fucks with your sleep. But 30 minutes is like about the right amount where you can sleep and not impact your sleep. Well, meanwhile, Dan Smith attacking Jack Adolf so in the hijack. Tournament chip leader is just playing phenomenal. He's always pretending like he's aggrieved. Oscar's like legit playing into my mind when playing a hand against you. He was playing in your mind? Yeah, I could have checked raised the flop against you just now. Good luck. <laughs> but because of Oscar. That seems like a losing battle, but I tell you what isn't. Getting some action down on your favorite players. Exclusive live action with prediction options on Triton events over on betacr.eu. Elevate your live sports engagement experience with 15% free play. Up to $250. Your interest and in the hand to Is there a time? I think. Get involved, bet ACL. I think goes my speech Maybe for the final table the... tomorrow of this very event, or perhaps the upcoming main event. Good luck to all Dan of you. Let us know. You got any Never sweats? Worried. Of course. Real hand here for Dan Smith. Alton definitely hasn't heard. Smith Alton has definitely has more than two heard. times tournament average. Overwhelming chip leader on the stone bubble. He's happy for us to be on the bubble for as long as possible. Just push people around. Oh, you're getting raised, man. Wow. Oh, hello. 170? Able to push Ilkin around. Maybe a million back? A million back? Uh, I like what he's doing, though. He knows that Dan Smith is going to open yeah, wide. Like, you. he just opened Jack 8 offsuit. Cheers. King Jack's got... The best Playability the you in case he gets called pre. He is representing a strong range just given he's in the middle of the pack with 40 blinds. Lots of fold equity. Hey. I will call. You sad? What's up? Come here. Give me a hug. Come on. Still doing okay. Oh, you're too tired. Come on. Pre-flop aggressor. Position. And a gut shot. Check. 8 10 6 rainbow. Oscar's getting some attention. Does the cameraman finally give some attention to Ilkin, <laughs> who's <laughs> I know, right? in like the we hand? It's like Oscar's Oscar. stealing the show. It's curly, but it's a We've got a three bet pot going on here. What is that? He's like a quarter. He's a, his mom's this a poodle. That and should be enough to get it done. Water. And his dad is under Labrador, pair. La Labrador and yeah. a poodle. So he's like a quarter poodle. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. That's oh. But do you cut him? Roughly quarter pot. Do you cut him or does he stay like when he's when he's home he gets like he gets groomed once a week, but okay. I think he's on like ten days right now. <laughs> this board is just he's all on open. Without being yeah, well played sir. Great oh, awareness. Uh, how often does he like from Grubly? Great hand selection as well. Bath, cut, trim, <laughs> nails. Oh, a, a week is quite. These dogs, if you don't comb their hair every day, they get knots. 
because it gets curly. So you don't oh. comb it out. Or I don't want to comb out his hair every day, so I get him groomed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bro. Come on. Hey, let's not, let's not take it too far here. Let's keep the love over here. Go lay down. Go. Go lay down. Go on. He's, he's loving it. Hey, go right now. Lay down. Little turn coat. See, he's got more chips than me. Doesn't mean you got to go over there and hang out with him. <laughs> Jeez. Harsh. You don't right? like it when we pet him? Huh? You don't like it when we pet him? I mean, not now. It's a competition. <laughs> dog eat dog right now. My dog's over here hanging out with this guy in the Arkham side. <laughs> Got a king queen right here with Dan Smith under the gun. Right now, it's war. Mm. Chip that You don't want his good charm to go on the other. On the, on he's a pretty other lucky team. dog. I'm not going to lie. I have a, I mean, he's... Definitely had a pretty charmed life. Smith with the open. Imagine Learning this guy some. like on a farm in Canada somewhere. And now he's in Monte Carlo playing. Tricks a of the trade him. when it comes to dog <laughs> grooming, Randy. What a come up. Yeah, came it's in a jet. Not really my expertise. <laughs> no, mine neither. It's Dan Smith. <laughs> Just cruise control, up to 3.8 million. Sick, like. Maybe. Yeah, we just got some. Eighty percent of my friends has never been home on game vibes at this table. This dog has. <laughs> this dog's never seen. <laughs> he's never seen a commercial airport. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! That's a proper flex. <laughs> oh yeah. Os Oscar has a flex. He, he'd free, I don't know what he would do if he showed up and had to go through TSA. He'd be like, <laughs> that's big strong. Oh, that's not true. Strong. Well, we know who flies private. I pass. Pass, pass, pass. I'm right. more pass than I got my button here to just jam, open jam. Okay. Hmm. I shouldn't even look, really. <coughs> I'm gonna look. I don't wanna fold. I'll talk. Juan Pardo, small blind versus big blind. Chip leader. To his left. Got a 45 big blind stack. Juan currently comfy in fifth place. Trying to get a free flop. Dancing just jack five offsuit. It's a type of hand where you often take a free flop, but he might lean, given he's got the 2x stack on him, but does check. Lampardo making mid pair. Does have range advantage when it checks through pre. The small blind has more aces in their range, given that the big blind would never check back big aces. Gonna sprinkle in 40k. <coughs> Dan just has jack high. Looks like he's done with that one. Oh, a flop up there. I'm telling you, Randy. Juan Pardo, Dan Smith. At some point, you're gonna play a big part. Yeah, you can even see in that last pot, even though Dan Smith just has Jack High, he was thinking. He just, he just feels like Juan Pardo is always up to no good. That's the vibe I'm getting. Dan Smith with $13.9 million in Triton earnings. Oh. 13 caches, but still remains titleless. Yeah, it's quite shocking to be titleless with that much in earnings, but... Dan Smith just consistently cashes the biggest tournaments at our Triton stop. Not yeah. winning, but still winning quite a lot of money. Juan Pardo, ace, king suited on the cutoff. Sorry, button. Playing a very comfy 50 big blind stack. Smith going to get out of there. Elton Sang, I believe, has him covered. Oh, ace, queen. In the big. Uh oh. This is button v big blind, Randy. 
And Elton has gone big. Which is it's like 400k. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. City? It's scary, right? Because you got you're currently sitting in fifth. No. You got 50 big oh, blinds, and your yeah. opponent is three ah, bet in a okay. way yeah. where um, chips could easily go in. Fuck. We've got multiple stacks in the six to seven hundred k range. Then again, your ace king suited your button versus big blind. As long as your opponent is three bet bluffing at a decent frequency, there's a lot of dead money in the middle. Uh, do you mean the money can go in the middle because Elton sized it in a way? that he expects Juan to play aggressive against mm -hmm. with Should like weaker ace X. Is it going to be some ace yes. four, race five yes. in there, some I, king queen? I think Elton yeah. has a lot of three bet bluffs um, in his range, just given he's got the chip advantage. Oh my, it's a not all in. So what's interesting here is that Juan Pardo hasn't four bet jam. He's actually willing to try and induce a five bet jam and risk How all the chips like on the Stone Cold bubble, the, despite yeah, this being number five versus number two in chips. I'm not sure. No. No way. <clears throat> oh no, Elton, Elton falls has for taken big, big the bait hands. as top, Pardo top, top. flicks in the one chip call. And this could just be the demise of Elton Sang after <laughs> holding the chip lead. From the end of day one throughout day two, make that world class fold against Mario. And now just five cards away from being down to five bigs. Unless he can convert this 22%. This is hands down the biggest spot of Juan Pardo's career in terms of equity if he can hold here. Will be the overwhelming chip leader. Yeah, if Elton can't get there, he'll be down to crumbs. Ace, five, five. Some chop opportunities now. Ace or a five will chop it. Oof, behave. Oh. No. Behave, Randy. The three outer on the turn. And a kingless river means that Juan Pardo, who started the hand with 65 big blinds, fifth in chips, goes home <laughs> empty handed. And we find ourselves in the money on the table that we didn't expect to find ourselves in the money on. Also, not these. And this I'm, player, as your friend, good, good friend. I'm very happy being out. Well. So it's good in both ways. <laughs> what a brutal oh, turn card. It's okay. <laughs> you gotta feel for Juan Pardo. Of course. Like, you know, he's just put himself in a situation. Heavy favorite. Out, because Elton Sang decides to five bet jam ace queen into ace king. Yeah, I guess that was wrong. <laughs> no, I, I think I guess. What, uh, you make it well, 95, you make it 400. What do you do, fold after he goes all in? It's like dynamic. Fold, <laughs> like, I don't know, everything. But I guess not. <laughs> the way it played not. out. No? We're giving this How many people care about the bubble as much as you do? Like, huh? I don't think it's like, I mean, it's 300 in first place is 3.6 million. You know, it's like, what's he going to do? Just fold? No, he, people still, like, I mean, I think people care. I'm but the button. Yeah, but you care, it just but the, it's a, not, you're not going to fold that hand. He's just not, I don't know. His range is just very narrow there. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> New tournament chip uh -huh. leader. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like Daniel saying, like, as your friend, <laughs> I'm happy you won, but... Uh, from a professional point of view, saying like, okay. Juan's got a very narrow range there. You kind of, no, what else? yeah, butchered the hand, but got rewarded by the poker gods, as we all have throughout our careers. Look, it happens it's, to the best of us. When you 
four bet and not four bet jam oh, that the hand. Bubble's over now, huh? Mm -hmm. You have to embrace the variance Three, when you us, ask for it. Some of us are right. just trying to ladder up the 315k though, Elton. But also on the flip side, you've induced to perfection. You've got the exact type of hand to put money in the middle, 22%. With a casual, you know, seven figures worth of equity in that one hand alone, I mean. I don't know how comfortable I am embracing that variance for anybody. I guess that's why I'm in here and they're out there. And keep in mind that Juan, if he won that pot, would be the tournament chip right. Right. Had you lost that? Well, he did Yeah, you see, daddy tag. Dude, that's why I'm happy for him. I'm saying it's pretty dangerous. Bob is so sharp, bro. Oh, my word. I would love to get in. He was not concerned he was not making the money. He was more concerned. Like a verbal jousting fight with him. I would just lose. a chance to win. Like a pretty special event, you know. Not the 300k concern. Yeah. You know, yeah. But now he's in a driver's seat for the 300. <laughs> he's, a, he's in the driver's seat again, so it's okay. Yeah. I mean, 30% <laughs> anyway. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not that hard. What am I supposed to do? Fold there? Probably. No. Huh? No. Oh? You could just call. He made it 95. Um, hmm. I think no. the hand would have ended the same No, way. I think it would have, have ended four. when it goes four back. Now big blind against button. Well, they, they'll discuss that hand a bit more. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. The post-mortem between yeah. everyone at that table okay. as the short stacks over here get to relish yeah. in the 300k. Yeah, that. They have locked up courtesy of that queen of spades on the turn for Elton Tang. As we now find ourselves in the money here. The opening event Probably, but not of the Triton Super High Roller Series in Monte Carlo. Henry Kilbane alongside Randy Liu in the booth for this one. Plan is to play down to the final table today. And the final nine will bag and tag and come back tomorrow to battle it out for $3.87 million. Is that a casual one? That's oh, J and D. How does he do it? The king queen against the ace five and now great shape against Yan. <laughs> Did you like that reveal to get up two-handed, two queens face up? It was inevitable. 13th place is, has, has your name on it. You even didn't wear your, your cap, yeah? I mean, I'm not superstitious, but this one, this one disqualified you. Hearts covered. Hearts live. Some read no. from Fedor. No, no, no. On the inevitable 13th place finish for Jan. The good news is it comes with a 300k payday. And he's not going to be going home empty-handed if he can't convert on this river, which he doesn't. <laughs> Ace of Hearts completing the run out. J and T up to 1.6 million, and David Yan adding another 300,000 to his already impressive Triton earnings. Up to 4.6 million in Triton earnings now. Yeah. Nine caches, one title, go on, Randy. Yeah, David, yeah, and just a tough competitor out. But you know, when you're sitting on that 600k stack and you slid into the money, you're not going to feel too bad because it was definitely a high tension spot. Yeah, especially when it was like, what, a 50 big blind stack that got showered? 56 yeah. big blind stack? He didn't have to worry about, oh, how can I just get in there? But yeah, I think he'll be happy with that score. Played well. We know David Yan's going to play all of the Nolan events here at this Monte Carlo stop. Only because David reminded me to remain calm. We're down to 12. 12 left. And the biggest buy in tournament of the series. Suited King here for Shell Keen. Mari Williams folds the jack nine. Discipline. Garbage times. What's the worst that you follow? 
<laughs> Can't spit all the secrets. <laughs> when you had the Ace Five? <laughs> oh, just <laughs> here. That's uh. What's the worst I can call it? Against the min rays? I don't know. I mean, a lot of stuff. I love hearing post mortems from Mike. Go either way. <laughs> this is getting awkward. They don't want to share information with Murray Williams. Well, I mean, the guy wants to learn. So what's going on? Just agreeing with the rail all I think Murray Williams needs to ask the questions over the other side of the table. Fedor and Axon not giving information away. Swingy day for JNT. Speaking to his rail, of course. The ace king against kings and then. King Queen against the Ace Five. <laughs> JNT is too excited. Chat with his rail <laughs> needs to be sat at the table. I mean, what are your thoughts on not giving away information at the table? I mean, at the end of the day, this is a two hundred thousand buy-in. You're doing it for a living, as Fedor and Ike. You know, I wouldn't be giving away too much free information. I think they've been pretty generous with what they've said. Yeah, I understand where they're coming from is, look, this is the biggest buy-in of this series. Right. There's 12 remaining. Do I really want to give you information that might, you know, bite me later when it's important? You know, maybe after the tournament, much more happy to divulge information. Um, but it's a little unusual because we do, we have seen spots where invitees have asked questions and they were given feedback instantly. Right. But perhaps maybe Murray Williams isn't, this is his very first stop at a try and stop and you don't really know him that well. So it, it's, it's just a bit different as you frequent these stops a bit more. Yeah, I agree. I think it's up to the player at the end of the day. Of course. You know, they're the ones that have in the work to study and whatnot. It's something they do for a living. There's Ike Haxton. He's going to clash with Fedor. He's 4-0, taking it upstairs. A little three and a half X. Blind V blind. And how about this for an entanglement on the Jack 9-8. Two-tone ball texture. Holtz flopping best. Top pair and a gut shot. This board texture really favors the small blind limp calling range. You know, Haxton, when he raises from the big, often has, you know, those big, really big cards, pocket pairs, not too much of this middling stuff. His hand is not great either. Kind of annoying card here for Fader Holtz with one over. King X is definitely in the big blind raising range. Game plan should be Fedor trying to pot control this bet. Pot control and try to induce some bets here and there. He's done precisely that, Randy. Checking it on over to Ike. Does this Ace of Hearts come into consideration here as a future not flush blocker? Maybe a little bit, but if you think about their stack sizes off of 35 blinds and at this phase of the tournament, it's, it'd be a bit ambitious to kind of just bet and hopes, you know, some kind of heart I can lean on on the river. The, although the hearts do come in. As played, Fedor should be able to find some value with Queen Jack. He likely, likely would have heard from a better hand by the turn. 
especially with this board texture, two flush draws, straight draws existing. Haxton could easily have some random 9 or 8x. Yeah, and Fedor knows where he's at at this point. <laughs> I mean, he knows where he's at, but... I'm seeing the nut flush blocker. Ike <laughs> Look, has other plans. You can't just mandatory jam every single nut flush blocker you've got. You need to think about the line before, and with all that passivity, it's just... Why can't he have Ace Four of Hearts there? Yeah, he could, but you have to be Ace Four Hearts mm -hmm. that didn't bet the turn with a chip advantage on an overcarded board. I mean, it's possible, but not all the time. That's true, actually. Yeah. Three out of four opportunities. What do we think, chat? Type one in the chat if you're all in with the Ace of Hearts there. Type two if you're a net like Randy. <laughs> 300,000 guaranteed for these final 12. First pay jump yeah. coming after one more elimination. A small one at that, 15,000. So difference between 12th yeah, and 11th. Yeah, Playing down to nine space. today here in Monte Carlo so Bay. Spanish football is a little bit different than English football. Like Opening it's, it's event. Really a little bit different than La Liga Off the try yeah. super high roller series here. Virtual champion will be going home with 3.87 million. There are a few big names left in the field still without a title. Dan Smith, Ike Haxton looking like to clutch their first. For me personally, like something close Potentially to Potentially a fun pot like brewing that. here as so, nice Danny tane has got open and straight I, I draw. Do like Italy or any other. It was basically Spain. Basically. Ilkin. So close to the beach. And then there are seven, good one over. Good fans. Yeah. We have good fans, 100 years club, so. Yeah, seems like a good spot. Mm. Yeah, uh, a lot of fans in the stadium I've seen in the... Yeah, we, we get like 13,000, 12, 13, Actually, 000. a really bad nice. car for Ilkin is... Still think, loses to the jack, of course, but Spades comes in. Parifies would have improved the trips. Really well. I mean, I haven't gotten any negative... I mean, there's like and also, the, hands he would want to pick off are straight draws, six, seven, seven, eight. Him holding the seven uh, discounts that a bit. Like, I've never had so it's like it's kind of just a trouble spot for that. him yeah. if a turn that's, bet comes in really from it. Danny Tang. So it's been good. Yeah, I think like such a downtrodden club that oh, yeah, like we didn't come in and try to like, oh, we're so smart, we're gonna do this. Like we basically just like did simple things, like paid off the debt, built like a training facility. You know, refurbished the locker room, things like hire nutritionists, hire performance coaches, like all the stuff you would do that made people think like, oh, these guys are serious. They're not just here to fuck around. Half so pot from Danny Tang. I think people appreciate that. Yeah. The spade's helpful though because okay. yeah. have a place you do have backup. Game. Soccer players lift in case you don't have the best yeah. hand. Yeah, have a I asked how much uh, weightlifting soccer players do. Yeah, they do training, weight training for sure. Like they're not, you know, doing fucking one rep max. Yeah, they're not like just Whoa. banging out bench presses every. It's <laughs> one way lots to get of, there. Lots of, lots of, lots of core stuff. Lots of. Uh, of forcing the fall on the turn or just converting. Explosive. The equity stuff. is the six of diamonds break. does give Daddy a straight. Hmm. So hard for three to suited to beat pocket sevens. It's like Fred League, right? What's that? Fred Fred Division. Found a way. Yeah, for now we. In the Most likely down, hand that Danny Tang is going to get value yeah, from like is Jack like X as played. I would have heard from 5X and Spades um, on the turn a lot. Learn some things too. And then this year was like, I think we were like our first two years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we seem to be, I think we're, you know, in a good spot. Pretty good chance to get promoted. Yeah, I think. It's so nice if you come yeah. arrive okay. in Barcelona and. Wow, I don't know. Over like, people took that. I thought like, I wanted to play Danny. and compete against them. I just not like play. Sevens with lead, a spade. Like, I mean, it's such a, it's such a disadvantage. Not the worst the bluff Liga catcher structure. in the world. What you can, currently, what you can spend is based on how much your revenue is, and we're just not a big market. So we have a lot of revenue. So you cannot even like. Yeah, we can't outspend them. I mean, so like, I think this year it's Real also hard to imagine bluffs that Danny Tang would have here. Just some kind of like. 
between some teams King X that has, has one spade to float yeah, the flop. Right. And and everyone in the world from Spain wants to play for Real Madrid. So it's like good fucking luck. With some that. of these semi bluffs uh, you know, on the flop for their money, yeah. would have a pair or better yeah. by the river. That the, would be uh, two sevens. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. We have the Copa del Rey. Maybe we'll get a chance to play against one of them. We're in Copa del Rey right now. Oh, yeah. Hmm. That starts in, uh, on the, we, our first game is the 31st. How big is the town? Like, I think around uh, around 170,000 people. Okay, so it would support the growth or the area. Is it like an area club or like a town club? It's. You it might be like thinking. Sevilla Real is 30 kilometers away. Jack X okay. would so slow down with this run out. Of, uh, there's a lot of people that have went to go. So watch maybe his hand is yeah, good. Yeah, makes the incorrect yeah. call. I don't know. Or, or I'm not sure oh, surprised. Okay. Such a polarizing bet on the river from Danny. Mm -hmm. Makes the call and Ilkin <laughs> down to sub 20, oh, but wow. three. Again, with a chance, of course. Really 12 <laughs> left as Danny Tang. What a year it has been for this young man. Four titles the Triton. Series so far in 2023. Obviously you. overshadowed you. by Jason Kuhn with five. Some titles that the viewers at home can perhaps pick up. Qualifying into WSOP Paradise bracelets in the Bahamas, satellites running now. Qualifiers receive 10 to 11 days accommodation and a free daily lunch buffet. 5K main event, so satellites into other events. How about flipping just and going your way to a million? Like five, five, three. <laughs> pretty pretty insane, three. man. It's pretty pretty tough awesome. to do so, but uh, it's quite, quite hey, a lot Watson, of flips you need to win, watching. Yes. Father time <laughs> catching up to you. Someone it was to always there, coming right? king high, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Press, press. Your show. Press. Guys, <laughs> eyes are wide open. <laughs> Think how much. <laughs> Who's funny? This is the first time. <laughs> oh. oh! Sounds like a pair. There's a two, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> two diamonds together. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> this is your one. Oh. Mario had this nines like getting a walk in the big. <sighs> My big one. Animals are going to take, these professionals are taking advantage of me. Am I the only wreck left? Just Elton and me? <laughs> How's it feel, Elton? Come in here and take these pros' money all the time for all these tournaments. It's got to feel pretty good, right? I feel pretty bad, to be honest. <laughs> really? You I mean, I, I mean, giving him a bad beat like that, like, you know, I, I feel pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm loving life, but I'm feeling pretty bad, <laughs> you know? I believe yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I saw Elton's His reaction was like... Tony G. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 was Tony G? Yeah. Oh. What did Mike Watson say about <laughs> Elton? <laughs> I, did not, I didn't say that. You did. You know? <laughs> I don't even really, really know him right. that well. I mean, that I was, was just good. giving him some information. That's probably a bad joke to make on the stream. Really <clears> without knowing the person. <laughs> <laughs> That's Once hilarious. somebody raises, it's 20 seconds. Dan's got it down. Dan, you should just take a walk. Just run the, run the time clock. I'm op if I'm You're right cool next there anyway. So I'm on. cool with it if everyone else is. You should just run it. Give me the mic, too. I'll commentate the action. <laughs> okay. Feel free, Smith. Yeah. Come to yeah. the booth. You commentate about your hand while you're playing it. That'll be, that'll be great for everyone. So, Elton. And Cowboys. What's the feedback right away from the hand? A lot of hand here for Harla <laughs> Balls. Great the combo. big. Sometimes players squeeze this one, but good thing he didn't, as he would be in big trouble against two kings. Going to take this one three ways. Vantage Elton. But now, open into straight draw for Danny Tang. Two overs. Gut shot. The thing is, Back one of balls. those straight draws, the 10 actually gives her all the balls. Right. Uh, the bigger straight. Yeah. Yeah, Danny not thrilled with this open ender, of course. Actually, not a great board for Elton saying. 
I believe with this bet here, Elton is hoping to get action more from the big blind rather than the button flat. With the price Danny Tang's been laid, though, it's just a bit too strong. Yeah, I don't know, to man. To lay down. Yeah, Herolobos in the big blind. It's crossing his mind that, oh man, does Herolobos check raise and then I just waste this 85k if I just call? Wow, big, big lay down there. No club on board. <coughs> That was when I called the flop action. <laughs> Graphics are trolling me. Or I'm just seeing things late in the day. Uh, uh, you got me confused there, buddy. Yeah, I think without a club on board, this Queen Jack. Parole Goes boss. all in. Jams. Oh, what a misstep. Not loving life. How much? Wow. I mean, I don't blame Elton asking for a count because this board hits the big blind. Would Herolobos Usually Herolobos has value. a hand better than Queen Jack in this spot, though. Um, How much more? Can you put this in? 4-9-5 to call, again, 2-1 on a call with Kings. 400 more. Love the jam in theory. He's got the range advantage on his board. It does indeed. It's all the straights, all the two pairs. Decent amount of sets. Would they jam though? Would straights just jam? I think this is like two pair or nothing. Or like two pair or like a hand like this. I mean like a jack nine, nine ten. Elton probably thinks the worst hand I'm usually up against is an open and straight draw. Not in this instance. So yes, it's those two pair plus or if I'm up against a one pair hand it's coupled with a straight draw where they've got a lot of equity. Hence why he's taking so long. We can see the card, so we we know he needs to make this call. Does find it. Does indeed, oh, yeah. and he's gonna get wow. shown. Yeah, he's surprised. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> you said you uh, scared me. I should. I, I call wasn't you, posturing you, from you, Elton. I don't know what you do. What do you have? Good hand. Pocket tens. Good, no. good. Pocket <laughs> <laughs> I was just hoping he blocks a couple of tens. <laughs> 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 good oh hand. man! Wow. Well, two cards to come. Elton still shocked. Oh, oh my. My. how instant delivery for her all of us. That's why you check jam I with deserve. equity. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I just feel like I'm winning the tournament, so I didn't really matter. Up to oh, 1.5. Let's, Let's go, go man. Calls I get there. Straight away. <laughs> on the turn. Oh man, Murray Williams is in trouble. Oh no. Full house versus full house. Blind if you blind. JNT. Dynamite. And him raising the turn looks bluffy. Wow, JNT just snap jamming River. Oh man, can Murray Williams get away? He can't fold, he says. He calls and he's going to get shown the bad news. He did indeed. And with that, Murray Williams going home to his smoking hot wife. In 12th, with 300,000 being added to his Triton track record in his first Triton yeah, event. Right. Blind v. Blind. Yeah, Can't yeah. fold houses. <laughs> Handshakes between Fedor, Ike, <laughs> and Williams. Love to see the sportsmanship, of course. Even if I go on before, can make fold. me for yeah. the blacks. No. Nah, didn't matter. Gonna be seeing more of this, man. A funny uh, feeling. Look, I'm just happy right. to see Murray Williams cashing his first mm -hmm. event. It's a super tough field, right? You know, one of the players of less experience, but really just held his own, played his game. No final table. Happy to see mm -hmm. these new newcomers hang out at the Triton stops.
in yeah. our biggest buy-ins. Just running into the brick wall of JNT. I mean, had him on the ropes, those kings holding against the ace king of JNT, of course. And then correctly calling with the ace five on the bubble, no less, against JNT's king queen. Couldn't hold. Had he held there, who knows how things would have played out. I mean, like, he was a heavy favorite. Jack 4-4, Jack. He could have easily got a full double himself right. had that Jack not rolled off on right. the turn. Yeah, blind v. Blindness. Uh, it's as rough as it gets. GG's Murray Williams with that first ladder in the money. 315,000 guaranteed for these final 11 players. Is Dan Smith still out in front? Elton Sang taking a bit of a hit to his stack there. Courtesy of Harola Boss's Queen Jack Jam on the 987. Ten of clubs on the turn. And Bob the nut straight. He's nothing, right? Oh, did he? 50 big hey, lines, Randy. <laughs> yeah, super deep. He's so tired. We're going to be tired. here a while. Oh, oh. This is where it gets really fun because these players are willing to we... fight yeah, for every out. single chip, tooth and nail. He's like, na he looks knackered. He looks knackered. Like, tired. Really tired. Hello, Queen 7 tired. off. Super tired. Let's bump it up. He's busy day laying down all day. I don't know why. The chip leader, actually. No, he's been for like two hour long walks. So. Hey, come give me some love. Come on, what are you doing over there? He's tired. Oh, come here. Come here. You want to sit up here? You want to sit in the chair for a bit? Dan Smith laying down Jack 8 offsuit. Elton so Singh. Know, just a that. scary player. <laughs> no, because then he might fall. Give him some chips. We got Oscar you getting it. He might play him better than I do. <laughs> He's folding Queen Jack there. Come on up. Up, up, up. up, up, up. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Can I hold it? He's tired. Come on. Up, up, up. No, all right. I'm sorry. Go back. You can. Can you imagine? Away from, away from. You're trying to nap, and then every like, twenty minutes. Yo, wake up, wake up. Or what? Nothing. Come give me a hug. Danny's gonna lose this fight, bro. Yeah. Like he's trying to verbal joust. Might as well get some. Against her olive oil, he's gonna get pieced up. Right. He left it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to get some attention if I was a dog. <laughs> oh, that's why I got the wrong signal from him. It's currently 4 0 to Herolaboss. And Danny Tang's still swinging. He needs Herolaboss to leave this table if he wants to improve his record. <laughs> oh. Volgaris got ace 10 off suit in the cutoff. And just using these chips immediately in an aggressive manner. He called his shot. Wasn't phased. He's a tough player. About being all in with the gut shot. He's like, look, I know I'm winning this tournament. Like, I wasn't even sweating it. Even look at the sizing he went for, too. It's so small. Perfection. And when you see Mario quickly fold there, if that just means that your three bit bluffs. At this price, just so weird. just that hand so good. But the queen jack, I didn't even. I thought there was like zero chance. Of, and I got it in the big blind. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> Hands unimpressed. He's too busy getting strat strategic text messages from his whole crew. Just mad dog. My what? Does he still does he still bark like a dog every now and then? Mm. If the occasion comes around. Yeah, that's all right. I like that. He's a kid now, so. Oh wow. How about you? Kid? No? no. Not married? Nothing? Me neither, man. I should be there, but I'm not. Yes. Tough to be with. Apparently. I'm curious. I have to ask producer James. Yes. Yes, he's a Is that reference yeah. to the right. mad dog that that we know? Mike Watson. Ah, uh, okay. Alright. We even can say yes. King Nine. You're doing fine. Few mad uh, dogs in the world. Like a, a ten. That's a ten. And then I'm just dream, dreaming when he has a ten. Great spot. When he has a ten. Ilkin in the small A6 of hearts. Five seconds. Oh, 
I really need to know how Sir Watts got the nickname Mad Dog. I mean, oh, you've never heard of it before. I know, I've heard of it. Oh. I, I know, I know that's the nickname, like the slime. Yeah, like just know, the we know all like, the nicknames yeah. of that Canadian crew, but it just feels. Oh, first one is very good. Ooh. Hello, hello. What's the second one? Ooh. Second one's good. Uh, huh. Aye. Normally against these people, it's a snap. Uh, I need to think about this. Oh, what's oh, that? Yeah. What are you, seven? What are you trying to insinuate no, 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 I'm no. using this one, right? Don't say no, it that way. Yeah, yeah really? Shit, I'm using this Normally one. Normally against oh. these people, it's a snap. 30 seconds. Yeah, that's kind of an odd way, but to be fair, I think Ilkin's been playing great. Really solid. I mm. agree. I mean, he knows what to do. Three bet that King Jack earlier. Don't disrespect the man. They're just cruising over there. It's very steady. Look at this, look at this chart here. by the way. Honestly, I just yeah. flash Daddy. If Daddy folds, I just flash in the six and be like, yeah, you normally just it's snap weird. call it against. Making open, right? Crazy, crazy fold. Crazy. Crazy fold. Crazy fold. You have like A6 or something? Just because you guessed it exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, what do you call A5? No. no. I have pictures. Oh. That was you? Good I'm going to start saying that about you, Randy. <laughs> like, yeah, normally when I'm commentating with Maria or Ali, Randy, you know, because I'm commentating with you, doesn't sound too nice, does it? Fatal, 2.6 million now after taking that big blow. Against Paul Pua on the bubble. Been cruising along up to third in chips. Talking of Paul, money might find its way into the middle here. Oh, he's definitely shoving these chips in, especially inside the money bubble. City on 11 and a half blinds. Fedor should be priced in when this gets back to him, knowing that Paul's going to jam all the pocket pairs, some worse broadways. You can see he's already grabbed the calling chips, getting an exact count in case he's calculated it wrong. Does make the call. Well, roles reversed here. Earlier on, it was Fedor. Only with the pocket pair against Paul Poor's King Queen. <laughs> Gonna need to convert. Remember last time they had a confrontation, Paul had the King Queen. That's what I just said, Randy. Sorry, I just. That's all right. Thanks for listening. Like, no worries, dude. <laughs> what King about this flop? King flop. Queen <laughs> Top two for Fedor, set of tens for Boss. Fedor looking for four outs once to do the dirty on Paul. Doesn't manage to do so as well, he gets <laughs> the double. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did he just fist bump J and T's not in the hand? Just enjoying the moment. <laughs> but what my favorite part was how fast his hand went up. Like, fist bump me, please. Ping on the window. <laughs> King in the window. Next time. <laughs> so still 11 remain here. In the $200,000 Triton no, Invitational in Monte Carlo. <laughs> Those of you watching on YouTube <laughs> and Twitch, Triton Poker Plus app. Wherever abouts in the world you're joining us from, hands, let us know, firstly, in the chat. Secondly, thank you for keeping us company, as always. If you haven't already, click that like button. Help Triton on their journey, continued efforts to broadcast the highest stakes and highest quality <laughs> poker production. 
to the poker world free of charge across the board all we're asking for is click of a button and I know Randy in between festivals has been jumping in the cash game post-production streets as well as a lot of high stakes cash games released between London and now so make sure if you aren't already subscribed as well to be notified as and when those exclusive cash game sessions get released. If I'm not mistaken, a few big milestones for the Triton team. I mean, across the 200,000 mark on YouTube and the 100,000 follow mark on Twitch. So again, massive thank you to all of you that have helped support the Triton team. Go on, Randy. I was just going to say, just to, to add to that, in the most recent one we released right before <laughs> this uh, stop, multiple million dollar pots. That's all you got to know. Go find it over at the Triton Poker YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I remember my jaw being on the floor for... Uh, Literally. Yeah, that was some... I had to get some surgery to kind of get that jaw back up there. I was Googling, you know, what can one buy with $1.5 million in 2023? And, you know, you can buy a lot of stuff. You can buy <laughs> and those, seven and a half buy-ins into this tournament. Yeah. And there was just there was money going in left, right, and center. It was pretty absurd. About as absurd as this leftover bread that Ali Najad has just... <laughs> You know that man. It's got like salt and pepper packets man in there too. Never ceases to amaze me. You know, he could call me up and say, "Henry, I'm in South Africa in prison. <laughs> I need you to call my lawyer and bail me out." And it wouldn't surprise me. He could also call me to say, "Henry, I'm with Elon Musk, and they're about to put me in a spaceship, you know, and launch me into space." And it wouldn't surprise me. And it, Stuff like this, it doesn't surprise me. You're right. really going off on his rant. Here we got the nut flush draw for Isaac Haxon. Great texture, but he just puts any amount of chips. His hand is over. 45. Snappy, snappy. Tangent over. <laughs> Tangent's over. I mean, come on. I know toddlers. Now, sh shall we take a bite of it, though? No. No? Bad no, idea? You will catch we, some we stuff that you do not want to catch, Randy. <laughs> okay. Uh, <hit. laughs> Five-handed <laughs> on this table. <laughs> Six-handed <laughs> over on the red feature. $315,000 guaranteed for these <laughs> remaining 11. Tomorrow, we'll be crowning our first champion of the series and said champion going home with $3,870,000 for their efforts. Some potential storylines emerging here, of course. Danny Tang looking to tie Jason Kuhn with five titles in a year. JNT after coming so close in the main event. Came second in London behind Timothy Adams, Dan Smith without a title, Mario Mosbach, Ike Haxton looking to add to his insane year. Let's not forget Fedor. Three titles looking to join the four time champion club. Well, he ain't going to be adding chips to his pot as Shelo King's going to see bet this King 10. Unless Haxton wants to get really out of line, but no backdoor spades in hand. He's out. Nice one for Shelo Coon. He's got an interesting bio in the Triumph Poker Plus app. Visit us in Cyprus 2023. Played a 25K and a 30K. Got a final table in ninth for 54000 his third event is this very event, the 200,000. He's just like, all right, got my feet wet. Let me just go into the 200K. You know, you say that about getting the feet wet, and it's a story that we hear time and time again where people come and they dabble in Triton, and they're like, 
They're hooked, Randy. They got Kate, Carla, Maya, Tiana, the team just looking after them when it comes to the VIP side of things and everything just taken care of. Yeah. The timing is just perfect for him as he's already in the money in this massive buy-in. Swingy day for Isaac Haxton. Wants to know the chip count of Paul and the big who is short, but not too short. Currently sitting on 870,000 with the King-9 off. King-9 off, generally speaking, is a check back hand off of this stack size. But you know what? Paul says no. Let's raise it up. The reason, though, generally why you don't raise King-9 is because it has strong pit playability post-flop, and it kind of sucks to get limp jammed off of it. But if your opponent's just limp folding Queen-7, why not take those free chips? It's good to see Paul making the money in this event. Yeah, it's been a not the best year. Yeah, it feels Paul, like I haven't I seen him make like a big Fucking score in a while. I think he'd be the first to admit that as well, of course, taking out his first event in Madrid of last year. Had the pleasure of calling the action on that. And then it was a, a dry spell in Madrid. Kicked things off in Cyprus with three caches in a row. But again, nothing really materializing there. Vietnam was brutal. Went 0 for 10, managed to cash the 100k short deck main. And then London was a similar affair as well as Cyprus, just a couple of caches, but again. JNT opening for Limp in the hijack, suited connector. Fedor's just like, I don't know what to make, make of it. Yeah. Let me just stay out of the way and try to hopefully see some showdown where I can. I create I, a new game plan. Are you plan. surprised to see Fatal fold there and not try and like over limp play in position against JNT with the Jack 10? Problem of over limping is that someone might attack you and you just waste the big blind behind you. It was the way JNT kind of called almost made it seem like it might have been a mistake, so he just wasn't sure about it. Regardless, this is just a monster flop for JNT. Middle pair, flush draw. Drop those in, collect the pot <laughs> immediately. Make it sound so easy, Randy. <laughs> it is. He could have bet a small life he could have and would have got a fold. I'm actually really impressed with J&T lately. I mean, like, in London main event, second place with 2.8 million. I feel like he should have won that tournament. He I was mean, <laughs> going with nines against eights. <laughs> for 95% of the chips, I mean. And then here he is, doing extremely well in the $200,000 buy-in, and just has his own style, but really doesn't seem like the pros have figured out how to navigate against him, as he's very tricky. You know, there's most players spending their time playing against how others play, and that allows JNT to find a way to accumulate chips that no one else can. Last time Paul opened the button, he got instantly 3-bit by JNT, <laughs> but it's this time Alexander Shalukin who wakes up with kings. It's going to feel like he's getting picked on a bit. But then again, he is opening some marginal hands on the button. I love you, Randy. You love me? Why do you love me? You just, you know, just love it. Okay, Love thanks. calling the action with you, man. Well, I think he loves two kings. As he should. Ace Deuce hitting the mark, no nonsense from JNT. Little pick up there for Alexander. As we work our way down to the final table here in the bay. <laughs> what a day of poker it has been. Kicked off by none other than Arlene Jard and Maria Ho. Took us all the way through till the dinner break. Then Randy and myself jumped in with 16 left. 
the threats of a lengthy bubble, but I tell you what's not too lengthy. The URL of our exclusive staking partner, pokerstake.com. Check it out. QR code on your screens where you can buy action from some of your favorite players. And I know we've had some pretty awesome stories from some of the viewers around the world. Buy an action from Michael Zhang in Vietnam, Michael Soizer in Vietnam, as well as Cyprus. Some huge scores. Both of them had action on Poker Stake. We had viewers in the chat not only getting to sweat the action, but just bask in the. Can I buy your action on Poker Stake? You can. Really? I was joking because that's not what I want to do. Jesus Christ, Randy, that was completely uncalled for. I'm just saying. All right, mate. Good. You know, don't buy from producer James Dempsey, though, I mean. <laughs> oh, oh for 30? I like my money. I'm not going to buy from either of you. Oh for 30, I believe? Uh, send them oh for 30 is pretty bad. That's... All right, over ace five versus six five, and look at this flop. Fader Holtz, open ended top pair. Paul, open ended as well with the shorter stack. If Paul plays this aggressively and, and Fedor reacts with a check raise, we could see chips just fly in. And it's actually Fedor that's leading from the big. Must feel that Paul's not seabed in a high frequency and doesn't want this to just check through. Paul with a really interesting one. Ace of clubs in hand. Expect him to proceed with a call, but never know. Does just flat 350 in the middle. All in rough shape, and now chop it up, gentlemen. Deuce of hearts on the turn as both players turn the six high straight. Yeah, how lucky is this for Paul? Fedor's supposed to have more five X's from the big blind. What do you like to call it, Randy? The old flip, flop, flip? <laughs> it's, no, it's not a flip, flop, flip if How is the other not? person not take the lead. That Never mind. <laughs> Paul had the lead pre-flop. Fatal then took the lead on the flop, and now they've both got it together. Uh, Yeah, but that's, flip, a flop, flip. that's a flip, flop, chop. It's different. There we go. Ah, flip, flop, right, chop. right. Flip, flop, chop. My bad, my bad. My yeah, bad. okay. And that's called a flip-flop, chop-chop. <laughs> <laughs> it is spades on the river, of course, changing nothing. The inevitable chop. I always love when we get to see, you know, how the hand plays out, knowing what's going to happen. And both are just like... <laughs> they're both trying to feign, uh, just trying to pretend they're weak, Exactly. Right? You know exactly what I mean, yeah. 550 in the middle. Snap. Okay. Shall we move on to the next hand? Well, no, Paul's never fought in this. All in, is it? Uh, Big chop. Chop it up is what he says, and chop it up they will. And with that, frame. Don't be that We're done part. with two <laughs> levels played. We've gone from 16 down to 11, perhaps at a quicker pace than we anticipated. Randy, average stack, 40 big blinds. It is none other than Dan Smith leading the field after winning that huge pot with aces against the ace king of Tim Abuso with 15 left. and. And since then, just cruise control for Smith. Elton Sang currently in second after doing the dirty on Juan Pardo, Malacca style on the stone bubble, his ace queen.
getting there against the Spaniards' ace king. Really exciting frame there, Randy. I really enjoyed not only calling the action, but the collisions. I mean, we were expecting that bubble to last for a long time, and these players just fearless, regardless of the fact that we're playing a $200,000 buy-in. Yeah, it's kind of been the theme at these Triton stops. In the biggest buy-ins, you know, we're expecting a really long right? and slow bubble, yeah. but then it just... Guns blazing, players going out there, trying to win every single chip in big collisions. And it did come it down to Elton saying, making a read that ace-queen was enough to attack Juan Pardo, who had ace-king and got that queen on the turn. And really, though, play has still been pretty fast. Even um, as we slide into the money, players have been trying to accumulate chips and attack. And, you know, we're down to the final 11, and we're playing down to the final table here today. We are indeed. All guaranteed $315,000 for their, for their efforts. A lot of potential storylines emerging here. We'll discuss them more when we return from this short break. Don't go too far. Playing down to the FT. See you very shortly. GG Poker. Why? Why? More so many players. This is a crazy. It's a doozy. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. Main the biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of the GG Poker. Traffic reaches all time five. Jump, 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 jump. No Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Big one. Okay, what's going on here? Looks like Fedor has put Boss to the test for his entire stack as he's opened from plus one. Eight-handed table. Fedor with the three-bet jam, or effectively. Yeah, this is uncomfortable. Because he opened in such early position, he would more likely call if it was like button versus small blind. 
But here, Fedor isn't really jamming all pocket pairs. You know, like the baby ones going to the muck. He's not really reshoving like a King Jack too often, I imagine. Jack 10. Yeah, boss now. The short stack. This would be a big call. Theory wise, the like, your chips are more valuable at this phase of the tournament. You kind of want to try to get it in. in Great, rather than just pure flipping when you can. Yeah, it's like, is Fedor ever jamming, like, King-10, Queen-Jack suited here? I would think at a very low frequency at best. Let's see if Paul wants to spin the wheel. Big he call. does, Randy. Huge flip for both. If Fedor can hold with the snowman going to be up to over 2 million chips and we'll move up to third overall boss Paul part looking to convert this 48% equity somehow but we'll need to connect five key cards to come as a couple of diamonds on the flop make things Dicey for Fedor's pocket eights. Two cards to come as it's red, but not the red that Paul was looking for. Seems so calm. Cool and collected. One wow. to come as he wow. finds <laughs> the king of spades, corner <laughs> pocket. Good <laughs> career. I'm always listening into people's conversations, you know, and I forget that we're actually here to commentate. Well, you're in the best seat to listen to these conversations. Oh. Text message. Oh, oh hello. JNT. Murray Williams. About to lock horns, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we were just saying that we're going to be here a while on this bubble. But the way things have been playing out. Might not take us that long. Queens against aces. Eights against king queen. And now kings against the ace king suited of JNT. Fresh off that huge score in London as he does come over the top. And we're going to see five. Yeah, Murray Williams is a first timer at the Triton stop. One of the invitees. More less than more than right? Here we go. Just getting... Getting a official count from the dealer does make the call as cards are on their backs. J and T <laughs> recognizing the dire situation he finds himself in, but dire in the form of 34% equity, Randy. I've a seen third of the time. Come. He's going to scoop a 1.8 million chip pot. Jack 7-4 rainbow. One club. So far, so good for the Triton debutant. Now needs to just fade one of the three aces left in the deck. Does precisely that, Randy. And Murray Williams is up to 1.8 now. Half probably 120k. You wouldn't really expect them to put your whole stack at right. risk on the river. So sometimes you can, can manipulate your opponent's decision based on the bet sizes you opt to go for. And as we flip over here, Mario Mosbox has got a monster stranglehold with this top pair nut flush draw against the middle pair of Elton Sang, our tournament chip leader. Is a single raise pot early position against Big Blind. I need Mario to take me out shopping. You like his scarf game? Dude, like, have you ever seen Mozbok at a feature table not looking fresh? I need to Five seconds. take oh, yeah. a, a I believe out. Vienna's his home, if I recall correctly. I believe so. Because Sang going nowhere. <clears throat> and oh. somehow. Somehow. 
finds the queen on the turn to turn trips. 3-3-5 three, three, in the middle. Okay. Kind of knuckle it on over to Mosbach. Interesting spot now, of course. The kicker does play, but Zhang does retain. A lot of middle pairs on the flop. It's also nice to mix in some checkbacks here. Should Sang have a weaker flush draw? You know, when a third heart rolls off, you get to cooler him, flush over flush. A good point because a unpaired flush draw would just check fold the turn. Right. You can pot control against the queen oh, and hello. flush comes in. Didn't expect that flip flop flip. Flip flop flip, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Technically true. The flip flop flip. Three off the money. 300k bubble. 3-3-5 three, three, out there. Let's see what Zhang goes with. I have a, I have a jacket right, check, bag, bet, call, on. flop, check, yeah, check, turn. Well, very warm welcome back to the Sporting here in Monte Carlo Bay in Monaco. We're down to the final 11, Randy, in the $200,000 Triton Invitational. And, well, this time of the night, we kind of expected to be on the bubble still. We're actually in the money. We've already had our first ladder. Everyone guaranteed 315000 And now our eyes are set on reaching the final table of nine with just 11 left. Look. If I was to predict, normally I would say this is going to take a while. We have so much up at stake at the top. You want to get into the final table. But these players, no, they're willing to get the chips in. Um, all of the big stacks are attacking each other and trying to make plays. So it could be quick, um, really hard to predict, but that's what makes it so fun to watch, especially at these stakes. Yeah, 100%. And I even recall the conversation with like Elton and Danny when Juan Pardo busted in 14th that you know, a lot of these players, they're playing a 200k buy-in. They're not money scared. You know, These guys are going to take the spots. They're going to put themselves in a position to make decisions that are plus EV. And if that means going home in Juan Pardo's shoes without any cash, then he's going to take the spot. And it was a profitable one at that, right? Exactly. And that's what's really fun about this Invitational Tournament. We've got this mix of invitees and pros. And a clash of styles really just makes a, a perfect viewing spectacle for us. It really does. It is Dan Smith leading the final 11. 73 entries in this one with the champion going home with 3.87 million. That's obviously... Going to be going to the champion tomorrow. There's a couple of storylines. Ike Haxton, Dan Smith without a Triton title, looking to wrap up the year with a big one as we look to throw it down to the main floor once more. As <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we can't not laugh at that, right? Let's just throw it down to the floor. Why Randy. did I get cut off of that frame? That's I mean, what I'm asking. You know, did, I, did, the did the cameraman needs wrong? a raise. He yeah, needs a raise. What did I do wrong? He knows what to focus on, all right? <laughs> just got you straight in the center. <laughs> JNT leading the pack on the blue table. And Dan Smith, Elton Sang leading the pack on the red table. Let's go. Final table bubble. You know, sometimes we take that little bit of break. It's when people start to realize what's at stake. That's a great point. That little 15 minutes to kind of stretch the legs, hit the restroom, grab some water, and then you're like, kind of take in the moment. I mean, look at where we are. Look at the arena. Like, look at this production value and quality you walk into this room and you realize that there's 10 people between you and 3.8 million dollars in a triton trophy it's a pretty big moment and there's a few people in the mix who are here for the first time you know or relative newcomers mm -hmm. so let's see how they get on with the pressure of the big lights the big stage and the eyes of the poker world watching from around the globe. Depending on how Isaac Haxton approaches this one, this could be some trouble for him. 
Nick Flew just calls. Don't feel that Alexander Shelukin would have ever folded to a jam. Oh, uh -oh. but that's still trouble. Uh-oh. Ike with top pair. Little does he know he has kicker issues. Ace 10 4. 2 7 5 in the middle and this SPR. Let's see if Alexander can get all of it across three streets. It's a relatively small continuation bet 75 into 275. Against this type 20 big blind and lower stack sizes, you definitely going to see a lot of downsized flop C bets, especially on ace high boards. 175. Uh oh. That is not expected. I was just about to say the small bet from Alexander perhaps going to save Ike from losing his entire stack, but now opting to check raise. And is this check raise like a byproduct of? The broadways that he doesn't want to just give a free turn card to or a 75k turn card to charge it, some of those hands like king queen queen jack it must be that reason also nice to have some top pairs in his check raising range right i believe so for him his check raise this on the flop means that he's check raise bluffing as well which he's certainly going to be doing right some diamonds some straight draws now, how does Shelu King react with position? Because they're playing off a shallower stack. Once he gets check raised, there's a quite a bit in there. Does make the call. He might feel like he's oh, up against. Behave, oh, did he just Randy. hit the six? Six of spades on the turn, and the year of Ike Haxton potentially continuing here in this two hundred thousand dollar. Triton Invitational, 11 left with 3.8 million up top. This just doesn't feel fair. 6.25 out there. 7.30 back for Mike. I like small. You're going to get the rest of the chips in against ASEX anyways. You can get some crying calls out of some 10 X's, maybe some diamonds. And I wouldn't blame Alexander Shelukin for just putting the rest, of the rest of the chips in on the turn right. here. There's so much in the middle. It's unfortunate that he got sucked out on the turn. Just to deny against some of those draws. Makes visibility on the river. Could be an incredible lay down. I mean, very hard. I just don't really see a world where he can do it. Against Ike, it just feels like an impossible fold, right? Especially for the amount of chips they're asking for. Yeah, I'm not too sure if he's thinking about Jam. It looks like he is. Call. All in announced and a snap call from Ike. Sees that... He was up against the legit hand on the flop, the six of spades on the turn, the money card for the Prince of Darkness. Shadowkin looking for a jack or a ten to eliminate. Oh, the ten my of spades. gosh. Pairs the board and Ike Haxon's two pair counterfeited. Shadowkin's jack kicker now playing, and with that, Ike going home in 11th. The Russian. Thank you. Thank you. Relative newcomer to the Triton series. You never know. Getting there the dirty know. way. You never Is know. Is that the flip flop flip you were talking about uh, earlier on, my man? I mean, that was a flip flop flip for sure. Is the year of Haxton over now? I know you were mentioned that a few times. We it's got, we it's got 11 officially more over. We got 11 more events. No, he's on a 200k downswing at this stop. <laughs> Ouch. He just cashed for 315,000. Oh. Red, red, red. Sorry, I just felt so <laughs> brutal. That I just felt like he walked away with nothing. Thank you for correcting me. All right. I want to bet money on Ike winning a trophy this trip. What do you say? 
I mean, that seems like... No. Head over to betacl.eu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there we go. Hey. There we go. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Ten left. <laughs> Final <laughs> table bubble. <laughs> and... Now I have a little a 90, bit of... A 90,000 ladder. Between 10th and 9th. Told you it might be fast. Is Dan Smith and Elton Tang tied at the top? Danny Tang looking for his fifth title of the year. What a year it has been for DT. JNT again running deep in a big buy-in event. Came second in the main in London to Timothy Adams. Dan Smith, 13.9 million in Triton earnings. Elton Sang, 2.3 million in Triton earnings. 11 caches, one of the Triton OGs. Responsible for some of the most entertaining cash game highlights. Let's not sleep on the newcomers, Herola Boss and Ilkin. Or Boss. Yeah, we currently have six invitees versus four pros of these remaining ten. Fedor Holtz limping the button, 10-7 offsuit. Come on then, Randy. Humorous. No small blind. Yeah. Wants to just play in position against Ilkin. He doesn't feel that Ilkin is going to play aggressively against that button limp. Right. So he can just see free flops with just a wider stack to pot ratio. Yeah. Oh. I like the Jack of Spades personally in this spot. This could get exciting out of nowhere. I mean, let's I not sleep on the 10 7. 10 of Spades, 7 of Diamonds wrapped around that 8 5, you know. 150 out there. The out of position player in these spots tends to check. I do like that Ilkin realizes that as he can either play check hard, check raise. Especially against the bigger stack. The bigger stack will stab a lot on these boards with wide ranges, which Fedor is going to do right now. Would it mind if Ilkin just check raises this? Lots of fold equity. Even if you're up against an 8x, you've got two overs and spades. Calling certainly fine as well. Two thirty. Like this check race. I tell you what, and you mentioned him on day one, and you mentioned it earlier on about how impressive this man has been. Came here with a purpose, by the way, if you recall. Good friends, very good friends with Ramin Hajiev, who took down the Invitational in Cyprus, specifically joined us here in Monte Carlo, and I quote, to one-up my friend and show him that if he can do it, I can do it. Now finds himself with chips, with 10 left. Would be quite the story, Randy. Bearing in mind, if you look at the all-time money list of the country of Azerbaijan, Ramin Hajiev is way out in front. Big part of that, of course, coming from the fact that he took down the Invitational. But even before that, Biggest cash, I believe, was like 300k. And if you look at the list, only a few people with more than six figures in lifetime earnings. And now Ilkin's come here and he's like, hang on, guys. All right, we're going we're gonna to show the Azerbaijanis we know how to play poker, all right? I sure knows how to play and has been impressing us. But yeah, I agree with everything you said, Henry. First ever event. Paul, in there, 7 6 offsuit. 
the sport texture, all J and T. The big blind just completely whiffs. Just got to sneeze at this pot and it comes your way. JNT grinding, currently sitting in third with this 2.7 million chip stack. And just to kind of further iterate these invitees, and, you know, we've got Paul, we've got Ilkin, Peralaba has been very impressive as well. Alexander Shilukin, we've seen making a lot of great plays. You know, and JNT with his unorthodox, crafty style really allows him to always be at the top of the chip counts. <laughs> this is and the of guy. Course, just, he's moved insane. away from me now. <laughs> Currently in second. Over here, I feel a little uh, <laughs> yeah, wobble over there. Oh, They're happy just, over like, here. Because <laughs> I uh, also came over. Like you now, you have to set the boundaries. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Just open a little tighter and you'll get more respect. Oh, I'm so, like <laughs> so sick tight already. <laughs> it's hard to get even tighter. But you, yeah. Then again. Look at Harold boss's stack. 1.8 million. He was down to 650k when he made that Queen Jack of Clubs all in play on Elton. Couple fives here for Dan in position. Enough stack to try and set mine, it seems. Hmm. Now, the chip leader is involved in this pot, Dan Smith, that is. It's never going to phase out, and he's not afraid of big pots and really just wants to take this down pre. So impressed with the timing. Just not afraid. And that's what makes people like Elton so tough to play against. Yeah. You think Corolla Boss has got an inkling that Elton saying is just messing around a little bit? No? On you know, Dan now in position, closing the action. This is first. He's second in chips. He's closing the action, but the price isn't that Four great million. given how big Elton made it. That's true. And he's also playing in the middle with a more capped range. How do we fold? How <laughs> fold announced? Elton. Elton's playing a way where he's thinking, I want yeah. that top. Prize. I want that trophy. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't insane. really care that he's kind of tangling with the chip leaders, does he? The <coughs> dry spell in London for Elton. Chip counts brought to you by Poker State. We're kicking things off here in Monte Carlo with a guaranteed cash of 315,000. Of course, things looking to be much better than that for the Triton OG. First joined us back in Jeju 2018. Multiple final tables in Cyprus of last year. Crossbar in Madrid. So there's a couple of final tables there. It's Elton's time. Right here, right now. Perhaps. It's been a rough year for him. He did you to out of it at that time. Cyprus, Vietnam. He was about to. Just I two caches across the three festivals. Your reads are just off a smidge, Elton. You see that? He showed a six. Hmm? <laughs> I would say, hmm? What's he been paying attention? Over to our other table. Which holds the shortest stack, Paul. Paul, 14 big blinds. No, 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 no. I need a bottle of water, not, not hot water. Elkin, it's got 19 big blinds. I don't need this sauce. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Save it. 
Well, Randy, you know, something I didn't actually consider earlier on, I was saying how tomorrow we're going to be crowning our first champion. It's actually factually incorrect. We will be crowning the champion of our first event of the series. And which event is this? That'd be the 200k invitation that we're commentating on right now, tomorrow. Yes. But there's an ace king v pocket nine situation going on right now. I'll dive back into because at this stack depth and these positions, cut off v button. Chips could be going in the middle as I look like. Raising chips from Alexander, 250 to boot. Yeah, once he three bets against the against Paul's stack, he's never looking to three bet fold. Nine performs pretty well, is actually a favorite against Ace King. And I foresee an all in confrontation here with Paul at risk. What is this? 17 bigs, button, V cutoff. If this money doesn't go in the middle. Why you didn't say five seconds? <laughs> Paul making the dealer sweat. Alexander asking for a count, perhaps. Just kind of make sure he's up against the right price, but really can't be three bet folding this one. Paul's happy to not see a snap. Let's play a 1.8 million chip pot. Now we are. Just pausing briefly. Make sure that the hand over on table two does wrap up <laughs> before cards are exposed. Obviously, just protecting the integrity of the game as much as possible. We're going to be flipping and potentially down to the final table, Randy. If Alex's nines can hold here, equity favorite we can see, 55% of the equity. Five cards to come. You can see, looking over in the background, there there's another Mosspot. table. Yeah, scoop it in the pot over there. So, right. got to wait for our tournament director, Luca Vivaldi, to come over and call the action on this one. Five very important cards to come for Boss Paul Poit, number one on Malaysia's all-time money list, founder of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Loves the game, Randy. Not many people that love it as much as he does. I mean, he loved enough to create the Triton Super right. High Roller Series. Loves it enough to... Give me a job. Here we go. 1.8 million in the middle. Don't forget, average stack still 44 big blinds. Incredibly deep here. 3.8 million going to the eventual champion. Five cards to come. Lucky King. There you go. He's calling it. Lucky King. King, huh? King. Well, the five, three deuce, adding four additional outs. Ace, king, or a four needed. Doesn't come into fruition on the turn with one card to come. Can Paul convert this 23% equity? To stay alive in the hunt for his second Triton title. He can't, Randy. The deuce of hearts completing the run out as Malaysia's number one ranked player loses a key flip on the final table bubble of the $200,000 Triton Invitational. Some handshakes. Elton Tseng. In a row, you know, without good friends, they've battled Hopefully, uh, countless hours. The same time. Randy <laughs> in the high stakes cash game street. They both know Anything's possible. Anything is possible. all too well about the variance in tournament poker. But with that, 
the final table has been set, Randy. It is Elton Sang going to be coming into tomorrow <laughs> as the tournament chip leader. And a couple of names in the mix, you know. Ilkin, first timer, Herolobos, joining us for the first time since London 2019. Fadal looking for his fourth. Mario looking for his first. Danny Tang looking for his fifth title of the year. JNT came second in the main in London, now making the final table of the 200k Invitational here in Monte Carlo. Alexander Shelukin, who you alluded to earlier on, dabbled in some of the lower stakes buy-ins in Cyprus. Joining us here in Monaco for the 200k, let's not sleep on Dan Smith, of course. Over 10 million in Triton earnings as we welcome you back to the break desk once more here at the Sporting. Uh, Randy, just gone midnight and we've got ourselves to the final table. Surprised at the pace of play? Yeah, uh, certainly surprised. Uh, you know, it, it did come rather quickly to the final table. We've got a, a really stacked lineup. Elton Singh um, at the top there with Dan Smith. You know, these are just two phenomenal players. Uh, one of the invitees, one of the best pros in the game. You know, we've got uh, JNT also making a deep run. That's always fun to see. Danny Tang, like you mentioned, looking for that extra title. And we've got Federer, Holtz, and Mario Mosbach, players who are very familiar with each other's game, making uh, a deep run here in this biggest buy-in opening event. Yeah, Bosbock, one of those guys that has been threatening to take down a Triton event, joined us in Vietnam earlier this year. And so consistent, so stoic, always composed. So looking forward to seeing him at the final table tomorrow. Uh, all players guaranteed 406,000. Battling it out tomorrow for 3.87 million. Of course, they get the chance to rest. But no rest for the wicked, Randy. Is Why? The fact that we've finished earlier than expected means that we actually get to finish event number two, which we weren't expecting. We were expecting to join tomorrow and just say, hey, guys crown our first champion but no we're going to be calling the action 501,000 going to the eventual champion we're down to the final table in that one so don't go too far because we're going to be stepping away for a short 10-15 minute break getting the stage set the players are going to be jumping onto the main feature table and well the show goes on we're going to be crowning a champion very shortly we'll see you all in about 10-15 minutes time <laughs> Across the world, so many players. This is a crazy. It's a new one. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. Poker the biggest event. poker site. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Jumper is good. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Holds with the aces. Tell you, that's a scary player to double up, especially when he's playing a healthy 40 big blind. Okay, what's going on here? Looks like Fedor has put Boss to the test for his entire stack as he's opened from plus one. Eight-handed table. Fedor with the three-bet jam, or effectively. Yeah, this is uncomfortable. Because he opened in such early position, he would more likely call if it was like button versus small blind. But here, Fedor isn't really jamming all pocket pairs. You know, like the baby ones going to the muck. He's not really reshoving like a king jack too often, I imagine. Jack 10. Yeah, boss now the short stack. This would be a big call. Theory wise, the like your chips are more valuable at this phase of the tournament. You kind of want to try to get it in, in great rather than just pure flipping when you can. Yeah, it's like, is Fedor ever jamming like King 10, Queen Jack suited here? I would think at a very low frequency at best. Let's see if Paul wants to spin the wheel. Big he call. does, Randy. Huge flip for both. If Fedor can hold with the snowman, going to be up to over 2 million chips and will move up to third overall. Boss Paul Part looking to convert this 48% equity somehow, but we'll need to connect. Five key cards to come as a couple of diamonds on the flop make things dicey for Fedor's pocket eights. Two cards to come as it's red, but not the red that Paul was looking for. Seems so calm. Cool and collected. One wow. to come as he wow. finds <laughs> the king of spades, <laughs> corner <laughs> pocket. Good <laughs> career. I'm always listening into people's conversations, you know, and I forget that we're actually here to commentate. Well, you're in the best seat to listen to these conversations. Oh. Text message. Oh, oh hello. JNT. Murray Williams about to lock horns, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we were just saying that we're going to be here a while on this bubble. But the way things have been playing out might not take us that long. Queens against aces. Eights against king queen. And now kings against the ace king suited of JNT. Fresh off that huge score in London as he does come over the top. And we're going to see five. Yeah, Murray Williams is a first timer at the Triton stop. One of the invitees. More or less than more than me, right? Here we go. Just getting... Getting a official count from the dealer does make the call as cards are on their backs. J and T <laughs> recognizing the dire situation he finds himself in, but dire in the form of 34% equity, Randy. I've a seen third of the time. Come. He's going to scoop a 1.8 million chip pot. Jack 7-4 rainbow. One club. So far, so good for the Triton debutant. Now needs to just fade one of the three aces left in the deck. Does precisely that, Randy. And Murray Williams is up to 1.8 now. Half probably 120k. You wouldn't really expect them to put your whole stack at right. risk on the river. So sometimes you can, can manipulate your opponent's decision based on the bet sizes you opt to go for. And as we flip over here, Mario Mosbox has got a monster stranglehold with this top pair nut flush draw against the middle pair of Elton Sang, our tournament chip leader. Is a single raise pot early position against Big Blind.
I need Mario to take me out shopping. Me like his scarf game? Dude, like, have you ever seen Mozbok at a feature table not looking fresh? I need to Five seconds. take oh, yeah. it. I believe Vienna's is home, oh. if I recall correctly. I believe so. It's saying, going nowhere. <coughs> and oh. somehow. Somehow. Finds the queen on the turn to turn trips. 3-3-5 three, three, in the middle. Okay. Gonna knuckle it on over to Mosbok. Interesting spot now, of course. Kicker does play, but Zang does retain. A lot of middle pairs on the flop. It's also nice to mix in some checkbacks here. Should Sang have a weaker flush draw? You know, when a third heart rolls off, you get to cooler him, flush over flush. That's a good, good point because a unpaired flush draw would just check fold the turn. Right. You can pot control against the queen oh, and hello. flush comes in. Didn't expect that flip, flop, flip. Flip, flop, flip, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Technically true. The flip, flop, flip. Three off the money. 300k bubble. 335 out there. Let's see what Zang goes with. Right, check, bet, call, flop, check, check, turn. So, yes, the flush comes in, but often Elton does have best hand against Ace X. Looks big. 300k, Randy. Close to pot. And yes, it's a paired board, but man, the nut flush feels like you, you always have to raise. I'm think, trying to think of hands he loses to. Queen nine suited. Queen nine, kind of like the big candidate. I feel like it's the only one, right? Like yeah. queen nine, queen four. Maybe some ace queen knows. A little bit. How many years you all for up to first division? Sure, it's probably a little bit hard <laughs> to rep bluffs right now, too. I don't think they ever jam, though, right? Like, say we raise to 750, 800 here. Sang's never jamming, like, queen nine or, like, queen four. I don't think. No, I wouldn't think so, either. Because Mozbok just has aces and ace queen a bunch. Let's see what he comes with here. It's a really fun spot. Yeah, I, I think Mario's realized for sure that he's got the best hand. Needs yeah. to put in a raise. 900k. <laughs> hey, attack me in, coach. I'm ready, Randy. <laughs> it's crowdsource. Crowdsource the funds for me to burn 200k as these two collide in one of the biggest pots <laughs> of the tournament so far. Well, Elton most likely realizes it's a flush or nothing situation a lot of full houses just keep firing on the turn especially when the queen pairs which would favor the big blind they want to try to build that pot Five seconds. it's tough to lay down trip queens but it kind of feels right and we talk time and time again how important it is to win flips and make big hero calls. What about big <laughs> laydowns? We know Tang is good enough to do it. Yeah, he's definitely thinking about it. Five See if he can get away from it. Time extensions. Pushed out in front of him, taking a bit of a seat back in his chair. You can see the discomfort, understandably so. Single race pot, early position open from Mosbok. Sang defended, check called flop. Turn when check check. Sang them back oh. close to pot on the river, 300 into 330. And Mosbox taking it upstairs to 875. Three off the money. 
the 300k bubble. Seen him make huge laydowns in cash games over the years. See if he can add another one to the highlight reel. Incredibly impressed. The line taken from Mosbok so strong as the Queen 10 hits the muck, Randy. And that is a world class fold from Elton Sang. And that is how you preserve the chip lead with seven figures up top and 16 remaining here. Action Haxton out with three deuces, of course. Pocket deuces for David Yan. The comfy 1.4 million stack also folding. <laughs> Just respecting this three from the money situation. Wow, Queen Jack suited lays it down for Paul. That's wild, plus bro. two. That, that is, is a wild. big fold. Not Pant Lane. Pant Lane's in with Queen Eight of Clubs. In the cutoff. Off of 13 bigs. Murray Williams. Ace Rag. Just got to get through one more. Nope. Fader Holtz right in there. Snap. Putting Pantley at risk. Two live cards for the Canadian business tycoon. Ace King. For one of the greatest of the modern generation. Looking to just hold. And the Ace of Diamonds in the river. In the river, sorry, in, in, the, in the window. Flop window, yes. But the Jack-9 behind does give Pantling hope. Form of a 10, <laughs> and a 10 only. After the three of hearts finds its way to the turn. <coughs> that was close. Four across, but not the right kind. Pat Tournaments oh. and hello, Aces. Oh, my yeah, word. oh, this is just so rough for Tim Buso. This is grim. I mean, Tim is currently sat in 11th with a very healthy 42 bigs. Does the money just always find its way into the middle here? I mean, it's even worse because you're up against Dan Smith, who's going to just lean on you. This is a pro versus invitee situation. A lot of times Ace King just says, let's push it in. You know, the worst case scenario, I've got some outs. In this case, he's got very little. That's tough. Can he find a way to just think, look, you threw that my under the gun. You have a strong range. Maybe occasionally he finds just a call and can find himself an exit on some flop turns and rivers. Just re-watching that highlight reel, Randy, that ace king against the aces of Dan Smith for Tim So It's, look man, you ventured out for a 200K Invitational, you get down to the final 15, you run top of range into someone like Dan Smith. It's just, it's always going in there, right? It's always going in there. And, you know, someone so has painful. to go home with right. nothing. Um, but we do set that final table. We do have another final table here. We playing do. for, what, half a million? A little bonus stream for the fans around the world. Six left in event number two, the 50K Turbo Bounty with a 20K Bounty and some juice up top. 500 to 1,000 going to the eventual cha champion as I jump into the Triton Poker Plus app. Have our payouts. Everyone guaranteed 106,000 for their efforts. And it is Jonathan Jaffe way out in front, Randy. Overwhelming chip lead, 5.2 million. Leonard Maui in second with 19, and then everyone else below average. So this could be a lightning-paced final table, similar to the bubble that we just experienced in the Invitational. Yeah, but the difference there is just one player who's going to be doing the leaning as everyone tries to ladder up at this point. Um, with six remaining, pay jumps obviously going to get bigger of each elimination. So all eyes on the short stack, Michael Soiza. 
Yeah, Soizer on five, Brian Kim on six, Vyacheslav on eight. Given that we have three sub-10 big blind stacks, is there anything from a theory point of view that you think we could just we're going to expect straight off the bat? We should expect Leonard to kind of just sit back and try to okay. get some pay jumps. Um, chip leader raising relentlessly, uh, most likely just open jamming quite a bit to force some folds. And so is in Brian Kim just trying to hope the other guy goes in first. All right. Well, without further ado, let's throw it down for our first crowning of a champion here in Monte Carlo. Event number two, the 50K Turbo Bounty. 501,000. Go into the eventual champion, plus the bounties, of course. Nine places paid in this one. Mikolai Vaskoboynakal was the min cash. Came ninth for 50,000. Lucas Green was 65k. Ferdinand Putra, seventh, 84k. All eyes on the top prize. 501,000. It was Ivinga. Yeah, when, when he came as the yeah, bubble boy, Soiza, in, <laughs> in the cutoff, this <laughs> is going to do it, Randy, surely. Hand number one, if you're the, nine. Yeah, if you're the shortest, you got to make your play. Yeah, then I'm glad, it then goes. I'm oh, two nines. Jay trouble. And an ace hitting the muck, by the way. Ponikov's ace deuce on the button. It's JJ. In great shape to extend his lead at the top. And can collect that bounty given he's got the covering right. stack. There we go. How good? Nines? Nines very is good. very <laughs> good. Strong, According to Soiza. All in brought to you by BetACR.eu. I haven't seen one hit. I haven't seen one hit. One hit? I haven't seen an ace hit yet. There have been a lot of guys in with an ace. Mm, true. It's I've done this before. <laughs> I feel like no okay. okay, let's just take that flop. <laughs> That's fantastic. He's trying to reverse jinxes. He's like, look, man. Yeah, ace is having the trouble. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Soiza would happily take a chop. The APT co owner. Jack One card away from elimination. Jack for a chop, ace for the win. Doesn't find it, the 3-3 run out clean for JJ's Red Nines as Soiza adds another cash to his Triton track record. Asian Poker Tour co-owner going home with... To be fair, Danny, no rebate. him a 9 one hand and afterwards he goes, did you have 10-8? 106,000. <laughs> so. You know. <laughs> for his efforts, plus a couple of bounties, so perhaps. <laughs> We're seeing work. plenty more, and worth mentioning, zero. loads yeah, of Soyza action available on <laughs> PokerStake.com. So congrats to everyone at home that had a piece of this 50K. Everyone now guaranteed 136,000 for their efforts, and it is a one-way affair. JJ with half the chips in play now more than half the chips in play with five left all eyes on Vyacheslav Volodin and Brian Kim with six big blinds apiece Jonathan Jaffe first joined us Back to the in job. Cyprus of last out. year only played four events then four. Vietnam a couple of final oh. tables I got a question for you go on my man those yellow that. chips yeah. Great what, question. what are they those are bounties. Oh, because I saw Soiza playing with his bounty chip and he threw it over to Jaffe after he busted. Precisely. And they're Precisely. worth how much? Casual 20k. Just 20k? Just, so just 20k. Look how many chips Jaffe is just riffling. All yellows. Yeah, about 200k in bounties. <laughs> yeah. see Looking good. Yeah, no big deal. Vyacheslav's got a few of his own. Brian Kim gets a gets a walk. <laughs> loves that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. loves that. Brian Kim, of course, great friends with Jonathan Jaffe. Got to be careful with these two at a feature table, Randy. I mean, we've heard some uh, some out of line stuff. <laughs> Do you remember in Vietnam? Yeah, Jaffe was saying some five-letter words yeah. inappropriately. Yes, I remember now. 
Brian as well. Let's not give all the What's heat Brian? to JJ. No, but JJ it, was doing it more, so. I mean, Brian was egging him on. <laughs> he was egging him <laughs> on. He's like, do it now, do it. Say it, say it to the microphone. No one's look, the cameras aren't on you. Well, Jaffe's got 6-4 diamonds in the cutoff. Not looking to play. What about for VBV here on the button? <coughs> it's got 700k. He's got a king nine. Maybe a little tricky given that people have incentive to call him wider given it's a bounty format. Oh, he's going for the half stack open. It's actually really interesting on what size you need to go for as technically more blinds gives them more equity. But, you know, A6 good enough. Here we go. I mean, that's not going to be folding an ace for six bigs. <laughs> it's like we're playing a home game, man. Well, like, what I is mean, this reveal? What is going on? <laughs> this is a $50,000 buy-in with half a million up top. These guys treated it like a ten dollar sit and go. I mean, yeah, I thought he was gonna put that six of hearts on his forehead for a second. Fantastic. Yep. You know, join us for the first time in London. Was a rough trip, by the way. O for ten. Seven. Did not cash. Jack. Chop, chop, chop. Real German. <laughs> chop, chop, seven. Guaranteed one hundred and thirty k here. Looking for a seven or an ace. Rise VBV. It's got a double. GG. <laughs> I love it when they've got this kind of energy. They're not coming back. Gets the double. So actually, that should send Vlasislav to second in chips. That's how tight it is down there. From last to second, just like that. There was an old time pro who um, he got trolled in the main event one year. This uh, this kid called his room, pretending to be the floor, saying he needs to come back down after his bust or whatnot. He lost like <laughs> queen versus ace king, and he said, "We just discovered the deck is missing an ace, and we have to redo it or whatnot." That like you were cheated essentially. And he goes down and asks to talk to the floor, and they're just like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> what a cruel joke. That's pretty grim. The main event of all tournaments, oh too, right? No. Where you're thinking a Don't. glimmer of hope. Don't. Some of us only really dream of winning the main. <coughs> well, Jaffe's got pocket deuces. Yeah. Easy Anything all else. in hand. Covering stack. Bounty collecting. He knows the drill. Out to Ponikov's base nine, oh. close. It's fourth in chips, and he knows. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a randomizer, but he waits for the number he wants. <laughs> oh man, I want these guys to just be on the feature table at all times. It's actually a tricky spot here because yes. Ace Nine performs pretty well against the chip leader Jam, and he's waiting. How often he's got the diamond dominating the Ace cards on their backs. Big pot, flip. Even with the knowledge that they've never come, <laughs> that I say to three of them. Mm -hmm. brought to you by BetACR.eu. JJ confident. Reasonably. As they never come. Not with, the, not with an ace. <laughs> yeah, not with an ace. 3.3 <laughs> <laughs> million chip pot. I mean, if JJ holds nice. here, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard <laughs> for him to hold. Now that the nine arrives from Ponikovs. Deuce needed. Little red duck. To send Ponikovs home. In fifth. Black. Red duck! <laughs> quack quack. <laughs> Corner pocket. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> JJ's confidence just 
knows. These ace nines. Ace X not getting there against him. Why has Ponikov got the biggest smile on his face? Does he not realize how <laughs> dirty that was? <laughs> <laughs> They're just laughing away. Yeah. Just having good fun here in this event number oh. two. Deal. You get one? Ah, it's like, yeah. There we go. We have four. <laughs> we do, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're saying uh, we got the old bonus stream for the viewers around the world. I mean, it might be a short one at this pace. JJ getting to work. Yeah, collecting two bounties, so an extra 40k plus to his prizes. Yeah, plus the pay ladder money. Everyone now guaranteed 176,000. Brian and Kim, currently the new short again, stack of six to... big blinds. Such a gracious chip leader. Very nice. <laughs> two bigs in play. <laughs> gracious Glad chip leader. Noticed. JJ has two thirds of the chips. Four left. Well, well, well. A couple of. Bombay hoodies. VBV rocking some of the Bombay merch. One of our proud sponsors here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Looks like Lennon's rocking a Bombay hoodie as well. Did you pick one up? I did not. Did you? I did. Okay. Gonna have to I don't know where. You'll need to show me later. I'll have to snag you on. Don't worry, it's not as far away as the mini fridges. <laughs> with our, uh, that was a maze. The water and everything. Yeah. Kim so with an ace. Surprised it got back. And it goes four-handed. Obviously, more than happy to run this as the immediate short stack. This is close. Feels close. It's closer because of the bounty aspect as well. And also, Kim is going to be in the big blind in the next hand. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to put in a third of his chips. Keep in mind, if you don't collect the bounty, you let someone else have it, and that's a prize pool that never comes back in. So he's going to take his shot at it. King four hitting the mark. Out of the big blind. <laughs> you see Brian Kim go for the prepay. The prepay bounty. <coughs> That's the I new meta. I tried beating it off suit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was thinking this. Phase three. Oh. Wow. Oh. Okay. I off suit aces. Now we know the trick, Randy. Yeah, you Jeffy's prepay, tonight. prepay with the bounty. Just flopping the boat. Eight. Ryan Kim up to 1.9, moves up to second in chips. That is just how snug things are for the shorter stacks. Would be a nice little rebate for Brian, of course, after a pretty rough start to the series. Yeah, Brian was the only uh, one of these four who played the 200k Invitational. That's right. <coughs> Two bullets in that one. In pretty rough fashion. Kings Hello. against the ace king of Jason Kuhn. For a monster pot. It was a similar story as well. If you think back to London, there was a nut flush against full house situation that he got involved in. Yeah, but if Brian Kim can just get like a top two finish here, we'll be back as he's got a bunch of bounties yep. to go along with that prize. Yeah, he's a uh, consummate professional, of course. Shall we risk it all with this ace five? On the button, chip leader, ace, in it goes. I think that is what we can expect for the foreseeable future until either the short stacks double up to the point where J 
JJ can no longer just open jam. Or Jonathan just eliminates everyone and we call it a night. Come back tomorrow for the uh, mm -hmm. 200k Invitational final table. There really is a big advantage having this massive chip lead, more so in this format, because when there's bounties involved, the chip leader has even more reason to jam. So he's got a higher frequency of jamming, which allows him to chip up even more or have the opportunity to win that $20,000 bounty per player. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak. Payouts brought to you by GG Poker. And you're guaranteed $176,000 for their efforts. A bonus stream as we did reach the final table of the $200,000 Triton Invitational earlier than expected with Elton Tang leading the final nine in that one. Obviously, we'll be playing down to a champion tomorrow. So the champion will be going home with 3.87 million. Now our attention on event number two, 50K Turbo Bounty. You know how much you have? Um, 1.5. Total. With a blind, it's 1.6. Okay. Cool. Well, Jaffe opening Queen 5 off in the cutoff. Cool. Quick lay down from his opponents. Thoughts on the min open? Is that just <laughs> mixing it up now that he doubled up Brian Kim and the shortest stack now is now 10 bigs. It's fine if everyone is just going to fold anyways. Now you're <laughs> risking less. And also, the other three stacks sitting on 10, 13, 14 blinds is a little bit different than when they were sitting on 6, 5, and 12. But yeah, if you can just min raise and just collect the chips, why not? Because the other three are so tightly clustered that they can't just re-jam light, given there's the pay jump aspect of this tournament. He's four here and a button. Perfect. Here he goes. All you can eat. Mm -hmm. Want to pick up the blinds and antes as Brian Kim moves up into second, and as mentioned, this is what we can expect to see until something gives. Shout out to the Kim family. Always joining the streams whenever Brian is in the mix. Support is always important. We've been mentioned in the Kim family chat on WhatsApp. We have? We have. Okay, I was going to say. Big fans. Did not know. Hello, Kim family. Hello, Brian Kim. Hello, King Queen. Lives over in Sydney, Australia now. Hasn't come to Melbourne to say hi to me. I'm a little bit disappointed. For context, for the ignorant Brit that I am, how far away is Sydney from Melbourne? Like a two-hour flight, I think. It's not too far at all. That's not too far? No, it's not. Because you know how many hours it took me to get here? 25 hours or so. Yeah, I would say it's not too far. I mean, you've clearly got some great friends, Randy, if, if you're just hopping on flights to go and see each other, I mean. I would do that for you if I was closer vicinity. You, you're pretty close to Phuket. Am I? I think so. I don't know. Someone in the chat can let us know. <laughs> How <laughs> close is Phuket? Have you Melbourne? ever looked at a globe in your life? I'm just curious because you seem to have no idea. Says the guy that didn't know how long three hours was past 6 p.m. That's oh, just it's learning. It's okay. sorry, sorry. I also don't know how to read a watch. But anyways, King 8 offsuit in the small. What's and Jaffe's actually taking his sweet time. What's he thinking of it? Wow. I suppose what he's thinking is why didn't Brian Kim just open rip it? Why all of a sudden he's just putting in a raise? Might he think this is a weaker hand that can get blown off of? And maybe he puts in the three bet? 
Because he's playing all the small, and there's still the big blind to act. Yeah, this feels pretty out of line. I understand it, though. Chip leader can just put tons of pressure on. Does let it go. Well, I think this ace 10 is going in. Question is, is Brian Kim then priced in? VBV with a million back. Brian Kim with 275 in the middle already. Call. So actually just calling here. Do you think he might have been spooked a little bit from this small blind tank, perhaps? I know it's interesting, right? A peculiar hand occurring here as Brian drills the King Jack 10 flop. Top pair of an open ender. BBV connecting himself, bottom pair and a gut shot. There's just so few chips behind. Brian Kim should bet some chips to try to get paid off by some Jack and 10 X's. It's nice that he's holding the open ended as well, so he doesn't necessarily need to just rip it in. Since there's not really bad rivers for him, I mean, bad turns. It's quite scary that the cutoff is still betting this board texture, but then again, you've got draw to clean nuts. Trip tens, of course, as well. Comes with the call. <laughs> All of a sudden, we're playing post flop and heading to a turn, Randy. Unexpected. This stack depth, over a million in the middle now. BBV, the effective stack, SPR of around 0.66. And with how many chips is behind, Brian Kim's most likely play is just push all in now. Don't want to give a free card off to the, the ace 10. If it was up against two pair, he would have heard from it on a flop, given how shallow they were. I imagine this one's over. Ace 10, not enough to really continue. You would have to think that Brian Kim is so out of line from the cutoff. Yeah, I mean, all of the smaller pairs are just jamming. So it would have to be... Yeah, an ace. X of spades. Right. Yeah, that's exactly where my head was at. But again, it feels like those ones just jam pre the smaller ace X, the smaller pocket pairs. Yeah, it does. Let it go. <laughs> just folded them face up on accident. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think he wanted to show there, by the way. And no, that, there's no reason to show there. That information... Yeah. And it's not actually the fold post that's important for that hand. It's actually him flat calling the right, big precisely. Uh, with ace 10. Precisely. Yeah, that money not going in the middle pre. So blinds are up. 150 big. I must faster. I don't know. It's going to make things shallow. VBV with the old mutter to oneself after things not going his way, something he's known for. I do love the VBV tangents. It's can be fun. Very, you know, expressive and he's colorful. He's a very animated character. It really is. Yeah, that's a fantastic word to use to describe him so much fun like he's one of those players that can make facial expressions and then say raise post flop you know or call you know like usually people they show emotions they're never going to have further street actions whereas he's like yeah i want to throw that in there a little pick up there for leonard the solver special. Two 
Stimme ein. Well, last time Jaffe was in the cutoff, he opened queen five off. However, the blinds were a little bit smaller. Fold. Not this time. The jack three. Ace knight suited here. In it goes, Randy. Yeah, he's so short. 625k. He's got four blinds. I think it's a little bit important to note that he's actually open ripping it rather than putting the half stack situation he did earlier with king nine off. Brian Kim with king queen. We're going to see five, Randy. Yeah. I can't ever see Brian Kim fold this. Bounty potential, range, doing pretty well. It's going to have the best hand a lot of the time, right? Like best hand. And actually not performing too bad against these eggs unders. Plus, he's in second place. And if he moves in, it really dissuades Leonard from calling. Shrinks his calling range by quite a wide margin. Think, yeah. Wow, is he laying it down, King Queen? I don't know about that. But two oh, deuce is going to get opportunity to collect that bounty now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Insane is fold. Also, right? What did I we just witness nice there, Randy? <laughs> An opportunity. Yeah, I think it's going to hit and hold. We've seen this deuces versus ace nine, by the way. We have. Have yeah, I'm just lucky. flabbergasted at that king queen fold. I mean, I'm curious to. <laughs> oh, he read the deck. Hear the insights from Brian Kim as and then flops a set and VBV dead on the turn. Bounty collected from Leonard. Three remain here in event number two. 50k turbo bounty and with that elimination all three now guaranteed 233,000 for their efforts. Go on Randy. No he played well as uh, Vash to Slav and the thing is like imagine Brian Kim goes in with King Queen Leonard folds pocket deuces most likely not wanting to have a three way all in and Vash to Slav is still in the tournament as ace high would have held. Yeah. Yeah. Butterfly effects. In full effect, chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu. Things not quite a crapshoot now, Randy, with a few eliminations. The short stack belonging to Brian Kim. 14 bigs, though, does give us room for some potential post-flop play. Some you know, battle of the wits, blind v blind. Let's see. Yeah, I'm curious to see what he wants to do with eight, seven of clubs on the bottom. Certainly a hand that is playable, but just lays it down because Jonathan Jaffe's got all of the chips. <coughs> it seems that Brian Kim's approach to this final table is look at all the stack sizes of everyone, try to maybe get involved with not against the chip leader, ideally. Stack preservation to allow him to have ammo for future hands seems yeah. to be a thought in his I mean, mind. Let's be honest. Here in the booth, perhaps, maybe I should speak more specifically from this side of the booth, not as ICM aware as these elite pros, but you know, there's edges to be gained. Edges to be found over on GTO Wizard. Bang, bang, Mr. Randy Lou, there is indeed, and it's something that they're talking about. Not just this series, back in London as well. You can really take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Scan the QR code to get involved in the giveaway quizzes. You can analyze your played hands, practice by playing first GTO, and solve any spot in the game with GTO Wizard AI. And you get the exclusive membership giveaway and stand a chance to win premium subscription and merch giveaway by just clicking the link, scanning that QR code. I saw... Mm -hmm. Espen Jorstad, who is a GTO Wizard ambassador, did a full recap of that epic final table with Ivy and Chidwick, where they were just battling oh, back yes, and forth, yeah. back and forth. There were so many spots to review. Um, and I believe that video was released on GTOWizard.com as well. Breakdowns from him in person using the app. So a lot of really cool content being released by GTO Wizard as well as obviously the software itself.
no, it's good to see the the pros, you know, realizing how strong the software is in terms of helping your game and yeah, give it a shot. Why not? Ace three. Let's also give this a shot. All in. Seems like a waiting game between two short stacks as Jaffe just continually chipping up. Those yellow chips, by the way. Worth 20k a pop. He's been bounty hunting. As our <laughs> man Jonathan Jaffe. It looks like he's got about eight there. Yeah, that's my read. Brian Kim <laughs> just got one. <laughs> no, I don't even know if he that's has his. one. Is that his that's own? his own bounty. Come on. He must have eliminated don't someone like in this that. tournament, don't right? Don't do him like that. Come on, man. All right. Do we trap with two kings? I like trap. Yeah, we're at that stack depth now, you know, Leonard with 14 bigs. They do say first one's never a trap, Brandy. Trap him. Trap the chip leader, come on, do it. Oh, I think he grabbed raising chips, though. Started with just over 2.1. Scratch. Scratch. 10-5. No dice. I was hoping for like a 9-7 suited or something, you know? Little piece. Looks like Leonard's caught a few bounties. So he just saw VBV eliminated in fourth. Look at this setup here, man. I actually really like this new graphic in the background. The card's kind of like spinning. It feels like I can just walk in between into like some portal. I feel like you're in the metaverse. <laughs> yes. You get you get in this vibe of two words coming soon, all in the triangle, the plaque. No, it ain't suited. It's all in type of hand when you've got the big snack. So oh, much fold you. equity. Well, Brian K, I'm not going to roll the dice this time round. Yeah, I can't imagine King Six offsuit being enough. Only a slight favorite pre against nine out of clubs. Let's think about it though, don't it? Utilize a time extension. Okay, so now he wants to know the chips of Leonard Mao to see how tight the race is between them. The closer they are in chip counts, the more he'd want to fold. Wow. wow, makes the call. What do we know, Randy? I mean, I'm surprised by some Put of these decisions mouth. lately. Yeah. Brian Kim, just aware that JJ is going to be jamming incredibly wide. Blind v. Blind, of course, as the chip leader. Yeah, well, how about the King King jackpot for Brian Kim? We actually have JJ dead. an interesting decision here now because Brian Kim's not calling off with just some random cards that are just going to fold for 375 now, right? Like, we're not expecting, like, a 10 high to call pre and all of a sudden fold. So I like that Jaffe's actually checking this flop. Well, it's official. Jeff is drawing dead on the turn. Question is, Brian Kim going to get the additional 375 at any point, looking unlikely unless he gives Jaffe another chance to catch a piece on the river. Would like to see Brian check this one. Stranglehold with trip, but looks like he will bet. 
300, right? Wow, what an interesting pot, Fold. right? Like, Jaffe folding. Hmm. What a fascinating yeah, hand right that now. That was the, not the entire hand. What seemed like it was going to be a simple all in and call or all in and fold turns out to be a completely new well, new hand in game tree. Was indeed. Folding on the turn. Everyone Looking at the Triton Poker Plus app. See what the situation is. Big pickup there for Brian, obviously. And this actually makes it a little bit uncomfortable for Jaffe as he's sitting on about 40 blinds or so. And 300. Brian Kim and Leonard has 20 and 16 blinds. So, ooh, nice one. Two sevens. Nice reshub spot. Perhaps one of those almost all in plays. No, nah, we'll just go all in. All of a sudden. He's a threat. Uh, yeah, the runaway chip leader, Jonathan Jaffe, now. He's to really be careful of the immediate threat to his left. Thank you. Brian Kim. We can do some serious, serious damage. Yeah, Jaffe's got to be careful right now. We got a 9-7 suited for Leonard. Keep in mind, last time he was folded to him the small by we had two kings. He opened Ray's small. Now open ripping it. Oh, you can eat. This is This is a tough slow. call to make. It would be correct and clearly dominating, but can you really just call the suited queen off of this many blinds? No. It was pretty though. I had a the most beautiful end. I kind of do well for against really one. beautiful for hands. Oh, beautiful or good? Beautiful. Okay. I might be doing really well. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Don't tell me 9-10 suited. 9-7 suited. 9-7 suited? Fuck. Got through. <clears throat> Got an ace hit X on the button. Currently the shorter stack, but not that short. Still got playability, hence the min raise. BK in the big. Gonna pitch it. BK. When you say BK, think of Burger King for some reason. Am I, not, am I the only one? Someone else in the chat must be hungry as well. <laughs> I would love for that to be a piece of a technology invented. Oh, we could just get a little glimpse into Randy Lou's mind, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. Just like, you know, 30 seconds of inner dialogue. We both played, we were battling. Yeah. Keeps going. <clears throat> Actually, I played like five orbits of the 300. Yeah. Tough, tough. You know. Something. 300. 300 yeah. Holy smoke, symmetry. <laughs> Synchronized. All of a sudden, it's. Go on serious out there. 
It's a lot of banter when we first joined this final table. Down to the business there end. Three left. Title on the line as well as the 501,000 that comes with it. All looking for their first Triton trophy. A couple of close calls for Brian Kim and Jonathan Jaffe in 2023. Got a decent ace here on the button for Brian Kim. 21 big blinds. Average stack currently 25 BBs. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't think it was that deep. I guess we did have three pretty quick bust outs. Mm. Blinds going up. Well, I mean, average stack must have shrunk now. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Useless commentary. <laughs> 50k turbo bounty event number two in Monte Carlo. So, Leonard, well, let's just open jam. JJ going to get out of there. Ace nine seems to be the hand of this final table. I did a lot. Some wins, <laughs> some losses. Has it won yet? I, I mean, it just what? wins the pre-flop. In folds, you know. Ah, okay, <laughs> but in the in the all-in confrontations, it hasn't been in good shape. No. No. BBV losses. Two point eight is right. Panikovs yeah, losing to the Ducks. Minus BBV right. losing to the yeah. Ducks as well. Oh, it was to the Ducks. Deuce is making a set twice. Roasted. Two seven. Uh, Roasted seven Ducks. Little. That's right. So let's see if Jaffe open rips this still into these reasonable stacks. Looks like he will. Ace four by Kim. Nine eight lines. Nice little pickup. Every time he gets that through, picks up 500k. Gets to chip away at the short stacks. Difference between third and second. A hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars. <coughs> Sizable pay jump. Two and a half buy-ins. Kim and Maui so close. King Jack, fifteen bigs on the bottom. Yeah, and the important decision is do you open rip or do you min raise? That's where it gets a bit tricky at these final tables. Looking to try to close out his opponents, increase fold equity with that jam, gets it done. It's always a sigh of relief to get two folds in front of you. When you're all in for your tournament life, half a million up top, you got a marginal holding, and you're all in. Pay jump's big. It's 233k guaranteed up to 359 with those 20k bounties lingering. There we go. Little glimpse of the hardware these three gentlemen are battling it out for. Bit trashy, 5-3 off. And it goes. Yeah, I mean, it's not unreasonable, just given he's got the chip lead. Fold. Just going to fold. Kim will take the walk. All three players 
looking for the first Triton title. This is Leonard Maui's second festival. First Triton cash. Brian Kim, of course, joined us for the first time earlier this year in Vietnam. Had a couple of close calls there, a third place finish and a fourth place finish. And Jonathan Jaffe. Five caches. All in. Joined us in Cyprus of last year. Had a crossbar finish there in the 50k turbo. Gonna jam the king six. Brian Kim gonna fold the queen jack and Leonard. Oh. With fives for ten bigs. What are we thinking, Randy? He's thinking that he's just getting leaned on right now, and does he really want to bleed down before taking a spot? But he knows this is always a flip, right? It's not actually always a flip, as Jeff, he's probably jamming some ace rags lowered into five. It's usually a flip. He does find a call. Oh, it's and flipped in. as good as it gets for king six once you get called. He threw his bounty chip in, prepay. Brought to you by betacr.eu. By the way, Jonathan comes up short in this hand. He's no longer chip leader. And we have ourselves a true three-way battle until a 6-3 deuce board rolls off. Jonathan with top pair but does have to fade Additional outs in the form of a four. Oh, Leonard's just sitting back down. He's feeling it. Trying everything. Five or a four needed. Doesn't come on the river as Jonathan improves to kings and sixes. Eliminates Leonard in third, who's got the monkey off his back. First cash at a Triton series in this 50k turbo bounty. 233,000 for his efforts and well that now means two good friends Jonathan Jaffe and Brian Kim about to lock horns Randy battle it out for the title here in event number two the 50k turbo bounty we often say no friends in poker both looking for their maiden title, I mean. Do you think uh, whoever wins this is going to be picking up the dinner bill for the foreseeable future? By so using, kind of also using that bounty chip to pay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we still got a pretty big match here, right? 140,000 heads up match with the two bounties. You collect your own as well. So that's another 40k in play as well. And uh, yeah, it's a big match. We've got a legit heads-up match on our hands here. It was looking like it might be one of those runaway affairs where we get to heads-up and we have an overwhelming chip leader who just, you know, we're just seeing all-ins every hand. Mm -hmm. uh, 39 picks plays 18. I think, you know, these guys, they've already shown how competent they are at these stack depths. We could have ourselves a bit of a heads-up battle for the first title of the series. And what... You see 20 blinds, you might think it's short, but in heads up, there's a lot of playability. There's a lot of limping, uh, especially with a big blind anti-format. So you're going to see a lot of wide ranges in them attacking. Surely, yes, we can get in a spot where it's like limp jam and we do have an all-in confrontation. But this could be a, a lengthy match depending on how this one kind of just gets dealt. Plays out, yeah. As we mentioned, Brian Kim first joined us. In Vietnam earlier this year, a couple of close calls there, a third place and a fourth place finish, looking over on the Triton Poker Plus app. And then Jonathan Jaffe joined us for the first time in Cyprus of last year. Again, five caches joined us in 2022. Kick things off with a near miss, second place in the 50k turbo in Cyprus, 375,000. That is his closest attempt at taking down a Triton title. Now looking to beat his good friend, heads up to get that first piece of golden hardware. Again, a 50K turbo, by the way. Maybe there's a trick there for Jonathan Jaffe if he could convert 
$180,000 heads up match, as Randy alluded to, those 20k bounties. Obviously, if you win the tournament, you get to keep your own as well. May the best man win. Yeah, two Americans. Well, we're looking to throw it down to the floor for the final time this evening. Event number two, the 50k turbo bounty. Brian Kim squaring off against Jonathan Jaffe, 41 bigs. Plays 18 as we look to crown our first champion of the Triton Poker Series. And for those of you who perhaps are only just joining us in the last hour or so, I mean, where's that 200k invitational? Well, the final table's been set. Elton Sang is going to be coming back tomorrow, Randy. Would you believe chip leader with 3.87 million up top in that one? Some huge storylines potentially emerging in that Triton Invitational, but for now, our attention on event number two. Well, Brian Kim going to bet on the button here. This is a limp pot. Is it just over in hand number one, Randy? I mean, he's just three on the turn, ten. and Brian. He just has ten. And Brian high. just How goes for it. How can he possibly lose his chips? It's not possible. Okay. Three on the turn, okay. Randy. But we he just a has a gutter ball. Okay. I mean, listen. Just a gutter ball. We're not betting ten high on the flop to then not barrel off here. We unblock spades. We unblock diamonds. And he can put a lot of pressure on two X, right? Um, 6x as well. Some overcards would drop off from river. Maybe he hit his hand. He is going to reach for more chips. As it stands now, Jaffe, of course, will be uncomfortable with just mid pair. But there is a lot of draws that you mentioned that do exist that he wants to try to pick off and keep him honest. It's a sizable turn barrel from Kim. 70%. SPR going to the river would be cool. bang on one should JJ call, which he does. 2.4 in the middle. 2.4 back. I wonder if Kim continues on a non-spade, non-diamond river. Well, the front door flush does get there. It's actually one of the best cars to consider barreling again. Really? Why is that, Randy? Because you have more ace X's in your range right. when you limp. You also have the spades to multi-barrel, you know, the turn. Your opponent's hand range is weak. They don't have that many ace X. Six X's would be quite scared. Yeah, I wouldn't fault him if he follows through. And also, when your opponent check calls flop and turn... You reduce their spade combos a little bit, right? Because if it's like a weak spade draw, they might not call the turn with just high card. Wow, <laughs> Brian he's Kim. Going for yeah, it. trying for it. Hand number one of this heads up match. And Brian Kim has come out all guns blazing. Stabbed flop, picked up a gut shot on the turn. Call. Wow, oh. calls re so fast. We have a champion. Hand number one, Randy. Jonathan Jaffe puts on the cape with fourth, uh, sorry, third pair by the river. Yeah. <laughs> really took no time at all there, really. All things considered, just calling Brian Kim down correctly. And takes it down. 501,000 plus bounties at first. I mean, I'm at, I'm at a loss for words, to be honest with you. Yeah, supreme domination here at this final table. Played one hand of heads up. Made a tremendous hero call. Nasty board run out. He just felt like, Brian Kim, you don't got it. I know how you play. Deserving okay. champion. Half a million dollars. His plus, what, 10 bounties or so? That's another 200k. That's a great start of the series for Jonathan Jaffe. Wow. I would love to grab a word with both Brian Kim and Jonathan just to get some insights. That final hand, I mean, 
It happened so quickly. Yeah. I, I was I was joking as well about Brian Kim emptying the clip, <laughs> and then he he picks up a gut shot on the turn, follows through, and then on the river, he's just like, yeah, you know, like you said, I have more races, more spades, all in, and JJ didn't even waste the time bank. I don't think. Just no. Thought about it. It's like, okay, cool, well done. You're the winner. You take down your first try at trophy, <laughs> five hundred thousand plus the bounties. Insane. There is a reason he came out to these Triton stops, and you can see him uh, just exercising his talent and just really crushing so hard. That was a very impressive for Jonathan Jaff. He held the chip leader, uh, chip lead throughout this final table, and just uh, finished, never relinquished that lead. Yeah, always entertaining to watch as is Brian Kim coming second there for 359,000. So a good start. To the series for Good Brian for getting a too. bit of a rebate on that 200k and obviously Jonathan Jaffe off to a great start after threatening on several occasions throughout the year to take down that title wrapping up 2023 with a win here in Monte Carlo. Randy that's our first champion of the series tomorrow we've got ourselves a big one the 200,000 Triton Invitational Elton Sang is the chip leader of the final nine. Some big names in that one. Back tomorrow, same time, same place, 2 p.m. local time, with the eventual champion. It's going to be going home with $3.87 million for their efforts. Set your alarms, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to miss that one. From Randy and myself, good night. We'll see you tomorrow for the 200K Invitational.